What's up guys? It's your boy on the Sensei back with Reborn at Sire Shiba in DXD Part 8. If you enjoy my content, subscribe to the channel, like the video, share, and leave a comment. Remember to check out the author of this fantastic fanfic. Link in the description. With all that out of the way, let's get into it. Later that day the rest of the residents of the Shiba house came back along with Asami, who immediately got shocked on seeing the members of Cal's brigade in bandages, and immediately got on alert. But before she could do anything the rest of them immediately stopped her, and explained the situation to her making her stop. She just looked at the bandaged people with a suspicious look, after which all of them went inside to change into more comfortable clothing. Soon after that Loki came back with a satisfied look on his face, and covered in dirt and blood. There were two teenagers along with him whose faces were totally unrecognizable and their bodies covered in blood. Ah, I never thought that using magic could give me so much satisfaction. Loki then looked at the two beaten up teenagers and said, Know your place trash Vali and Cow Cow who heard that wanted to attack him, but their bodies didn't even move a bit. Tetsaya who saw their state looked at Loki and said, you did quite a number on them, huh? Anyway, Asia take care of these two. Asia got up from her seat and walked towards the two of them, grabbed their legs, and started dragging them to their room, while a trail of blood was left behind by the corpses she was dragging. Vali and Cal Cal groaned in pain as their injuries were hurting because of being dragged by Asia. Hearing the groan, Asia turned around with a small smile on her face. She tilted her head slightly and said in a sweet voice, if you both don't want me to bury both of you six feet under the ground, then stop that groaning, and then raised her fist and showed it to them. Both Cal Cal and Vali trembled a bit once they heard that, and immediately the male members of the Vali team and hero faction came and carefully carried the two of them. Don't worry, Asia Sama we will take them to their room, you need not bother about this. Just please help us in healing them. Asia just nodded her head with a smile and led them to the room. Once they were gone Tetsaya cleaned the blood on the floor with his magic, and looked at Loki and said, go and get treated by her as well, and I am sealing your powers once again. Loki his powers were once again sealed by Tetsaya's side and said, fine, and then went to where Asia and the others were. Tetsaya then got up from his seat as well, and decided to check whether Kaneko was fine or not. In another room in Tetsaya's house, Kuroka was looking intently at her sister who sitting cross-legged, while her body was releasing a white aura which was fluctuating a lot. Shirin, focus once again, your aura is getting unstable. Kaneko who already had a frown on her forehead, furrowed her brows even more, trying to concentrate on stabilizing her aura, and soon the fluctuating aura oozing out from her calmed down a bit. Kuroka who saw her sister focusing so hard, smiled a bit and decided to help her. She then placed her hand on Kaneko's back, and then helped her stabilize her aura. Once the aura was totally stabilized, Kuroka nodded her head and said, now spread it evenly in your body, and do it slowly, no need to rush at all, one chan is here to help you. Kaneko nodded her head and tried to do just as her sister instructed her. Her cat ears and tails soon came out as well, once she started to distribute her aura. Tetsaya who decided to check on Kaneko, went to her room and knocked on the door, but received no reply in return. He then entered the room without knocking again, and was a bit surprised to see Kaneko who ears and tails were out sleeping on the bed. The thing that surprised her was that she was now looking a bit older and more mature compared to how she looked earlier. Tetsaya looked at Kuroka who had a playful smile on her face and asked, So do you like how Shirin is looking now? Tetsaya stared at her with a deadpan look on his face and said, Instead of calming her down, you decided to do this asterisk s i g h asterisk she is underage you know, and she still have to go to school as well. Kuroka chuckled at that and jumped on Tetsaya's back and said, Don't worry Tetsaya Naya, Shirin is not underage Naya. We spent a lot of time in the time chamber, so she is perfectly fine, also this form is only temporary. Since she herself is not yet able to stabilize her senjutsu in her body, so we're all aware of in a week Naya. Tetsaya silently caressed her ears and looked at Kaneko, who was sleeping peacefully with her now barely covering anything clothes. He then used his magic to adjust the clothes to her size, and then tucked her in and let her rest. Kuroka who saw Tetsaya taking care of her sister smiled and then hugged him. She then started thanking him for taking care of her relationship with her sister, to which Tetsaya just flicked her forehead and told her to not think much about it. Soon both of them left the room leaving behind Kaneko who was sleeping. Once they were back in the drawing room both of them met Kao Kao and Vali who were standing along with their male teammates behind them. Kuroka and Tetsaya stared at them who were looking at Tetsaya intently. Tetsaya looked at Kuroka who nodded her head and got off him and went to the others, after giving her a peck on the lips. Tetsaya looked at them, and before he was able to say anything Vali and Kao Kao said in unison, please train US, and bowed their heads seeing which the other four bowed as well. Tetsaya who already knew what they were going to ask, didn't look that surprised and said, follow me then, and started walking the others immediately looked up and started following him. Tetsaya brought all of them in a separate space and asked, what is the food that you guys like the most? Hearing his question all of them got confused and wanted to ask what did it have to do with their training, but still told him what Tetsaya what they liked. Tetsaya nodded his head and then snapped his finger and immediately six figures appeared in front of them. All of them were shocked once they saw who the six people were, but before they could ask Tetsaya clapped his hands in order to gain their attention and said, these are your clones, who are identical to you and each and every aspect. You need to defeat them in three hours or else no dinner for you tonight oh before that he read it, and gave each of them a small black pill. 
All of them looked at the pill suspiciously, but still decided to do as he asked. But as soon as they gulped the pill down their stomachs started grumbling, and all of them immediately felt hungry. Titsaya looked at them with a satisfied smile on his face and said, Good now let's begin, remember three hours or no dinner for any of you. And snapped his fingers once again. And immediately all of them appeared at different locations, with their Depelgan just standing in front of them. After three hours were up Titsaya went back to the dimension where he left the others, and saw all of them lying on the ground, with various injuries on their bodies and their counterparts sitting on top of them. Tetsaya snapped his fingers, and once again all of them appeared in Tetsaya's home, and he healed all of them, though only to the point that they don't die, but still suffer pain. Tetsaya crouched down too and looked at them with a menacing experience on his face, so how was the training? And tilted his head a bit. All of them looked at him with their half-opened eyes and thought at the same time, I want to kill this fucker. Tetsaya who heard their thoughts, gave a satisfied smile and said, So you really enjoyed it, huh? Well then dinner is prepared as well. And used his telekinesis to bring all of them to the table, and made them take their seats. All of them thought that Tetsaya would not give them food, since they were unable to defeat their opponent in the given time. It's their surprise. Not only there was a plate in front of them, but the dinner composed of all the dishes they mentioned earlier. All of them started to drool a bit, and their stomach were literally rotating for food. But before they could even thank him they noticed that they couldn't move their bodies, no matter how much they tried. All of them turned their eyes to look at Tetsaya, who still had an amused smile on his face, while he was giving them a thumbs up. Tetsaya then called the others as well, and all of them sat on a different table from the six immovable males. Kuroka and Loki who saw their conditions laughed out loud and Loki to add more fuel to the fire, went towards them and held their plates in front of their faces and said, what happened white dragon? Don't you want to eat this? It looks very delicious to me. He then took a deep breath and said, ahh such a tempting smell. You sure you don't want to eat it? Bali and took a spoonful of the food and moved it in front of its mouth and said, Ah, Vali who saw that was totally red from anger. He never imagined that he would be embarrassed by anyone in his life like that. He tried to avert his eyes, but the aroma coming from the food which Loki was purposely holding in front of his mouth made him unconsciously drool up. But since his stomach was totally empty, he wanted to glare at Loki, but couldn't. The only thing he was capable of doing was to avert his eyes which was very difficult, since the aroma was totally intoxicating for him. I promise once I'm out of this paralysis, I will kill this shit of a god. Just you wait, Loki. Loki who was done with Vali. Now look towards Cao Cao, who on seeing his gaze, immediately started cursing him, knowing what was going through Loki's mind. Loki brought a chair and sat beside Cao Cao, and asked quote, What happened Cao Cao? Are you not going to rat this? And did the same thing he did with Vali, by bringing a spoonful of food near his mouth and said, Ah Cao Cao, knowing that this was going to happen, was somehow able to control himself from getting red in anger, but the roars that were coming out of his stomach made him feel so embarrassed that he wanted to just run away. Seeing that Cao Cao was not showing much of a reaction, Loki clicked his tongue and looked at the plate for a while. Suddenly an evil smoke appeared on his face, and he said, Oh well if you are not going to eat it, maybe I will eat it myself, after all. It would just be a waste if you don't. And immediately Cao Cao's eyes widened, and he tried to glare at Loki. Loki seeing that smoked and slowly brought the food to his mouth and ate it, making Cao Cao feel a bit enraged by that. Hey, not being able to eat your favorite food when you are hungry and it is right in front of you. How does it feel Cao Cao? Feeling miserable yet ha ha, and ate another bite, making no effort in trying to hide it from Cao Cao's gaze. Seeing what was happening the other five people looked at Cao Cao with pity, while being grateful that it was not them who were in his place. But then all of a sudden a small girl with black hair came towards them with three pups in her hands, and looked at the boys. The boys who noticed the girl turned their eyes towards her while trying to gesture for help. Officer Sama, please help us. Offa stared at them for a while and nodded her head, making all of them feel happy. But then the three pups that were in her hands got on top of the table and stared at the boys. The boys stared back at them thinking what were they doing. All of the pups then went towards each of them making them think that they had way to help them. But the pups just grabbed the dessert that they had in front of them and brought it to Office, who just placed a seat and started eating the sweets which the pups brought. The boys looked at Office with a shocked expression on their faces. They looked back in front of them and saw that their dessert was gone. All of them cursed Office in their minds, who on the other hand was now back in Tetsaya's lap, eating her sweets with a blissful expression on her face. All of them glared at her seeing which Tetsaya whispered something in her ears. Office nodded her head and looked at the paralyzed boys and said, Thank you for the sweets and once again started eating. All of them blinked in surprise, but soon came back to reality, and started thinking whatever nonsense possible either heads. They glared at Tetsaya who was reason for their misery, who just smiled at them and pointed at something. All of them were confused by that, and followed where he was pointing, and just as they looked at that an unimaginable rage took over their body. What they saw was the three god killer pups eating the food which was present on their table with a joyous expression on their faces. Once they noticed their gazes all of them looked back at them and stared in their bloodshot eyes that were glaring at them. But suddenly all three of them snorted with a smirk on their faces which sounded like fuck off, losers, and once again started eating the food, making the paralyzed group even more enraged at that. A few days passed by and the boys of the hero faction and Vali group were getting better at dealing with their depelgangers made by Tetsaya, though they still were unable to have dinner at all for all these days. 
Kaneko, whose conditions were now stabilized by Kuroka's and the other Nekishu's help was now back to normal, in fact she was now feeling better, as she was now able to turn to her more mature form for a couple of hours a day, and even her natural growth which had stopped for quite a long time was now back, and she was now growing at a fast pace, making her look a bit mature even in her normal form. Tetsuya who was back to his normal lifestyle, was once again busy with his work was standing in front of his house, with the members of the Gremory group, and his team. Miyuki looked at him and asked, you really not coming with us on Isama? Tetsuya looked at Miyuki and nodded his head, yeah. I already know that they can pass this promotion test without any problems. And there is also a lot of things that I have to deal with here. Who knows what might happen here when all of us are gone. Those cows brigade members are looking for someone you know. Miyuki's face turned grim as she realized what Tetsuya was talking about and asks. Then we should stay here as well if Dara dash. No need for that Miyuki. Tetsuya interrupted her in the middle of what she was saying. You all wanted to go to the stores Venalana san told you about. So why not go with her when you all have a chance? And while you all are there, I would be able to deal with my backlog from my trip. Hearing him mention backlog Ross was sighed and said, There is too much to take care of, it's part up too much. All of them looked at the pair of boss and secretary with a pitiful gaze, and nodded their heads. Tetsuya nodded his head as well and said, Oh, make sure to not cause any trouble, unless someone is asking for it. Serzichis was complaining to me that some of his hair have started to turn grey, since my last stunt against the council. Hearing that Rias Fasipaman gave a tired sigh, while the rest of Tetsuya's team nodded their heads. Tetsuya gave a nod, and then gave a telepathic message. There is a chance that the old Satan faction might aim for the underworld, if you all get dragged in some shit then you all are allowed to go all out, all right. Hearing that all of them turned serious and mentally nodded their heads, Tetsuya then looked towards the ones who would be taking the test and said, best of luck to you all as well. Isami if you fail, then be prepared for some training. Isami groaned in annoyance and said, yeah, I will make sure to get over with this shit quickly. Don't want to train with you. And make sure to remember that I will get a week off from training if I pass the test. Tetsuya shrugged his shoulders and said, fine by me. All of them then gathered in their respective groups, and then a magic circle appeared below them. Well, they are gone now. And then looked towards Roswas and said, let us get going as well. Roswas nodded her head and then started following Tetsuya back. Once they entered the house they all were met with total silence. Since even the Vali group and hero faction members were out for their work, leaving only the two of them here, along with the two dragon gods. Tiamat still hasn't returned from the familiar forest, and Kurumi was still in Kyoto hanging out with Yasaka and sparring with her. Somehow this silence is a bit weird. I have never seen my house this empty. Ross was looked towards Tetsuya and tilted her head and said, Really? Well, I am a but used to this type of silence. Though my home back at Asgard was not this big, and since I was alone I am not that bothered by it. Ha ha ha. Ross was let out a dry laugh once she remembered her days of being alone and single back in Asgard. Tetsuya looked at her and thought, you look like you are really bothered by this. He then patted her back making the silver-haired woman look at him curiously and said, this also means that there is no one else except for us, and the dragon gods. Here, you know. Ross was looked at him for a while, and then as if she realized something. Her eyes blinked for a while, and soon a bright red blush appeared on her face. No we can't Tetsuya we should not do those kind of things before we are married you know that's very indecent and wrong we can't Tetsuya looked at her with a confused look on his face and said, what are you talking about? Indecent. What is indecent about going through a work in silence with getting disturbed by the others? Roswas was once again surprised by this blink her eyes in shock, seeing that Tetsuya smoked and said, Eh, don't tell me you're pure and beautiful, Rose is thinking of doing something indecent with me in the head of yours. And moved his face closer to her making the silver haired lady blush in embarrassment. She then lifted her hands and placed it in front of her face to avoid looking directly at Tetsuya, who had a smoke on his face. No, I am not thinking about something indecent at all, you are mistaken, yeah, totally mistaken. Tetsuya then grabbed the hands that were blocking his view and moved them aside and asked, then what is it that is going through your mind? Won't you tell me Rose? Roswas who was now looking directly at Tetsuya averted her eyes because of shame. Seeing that Tetsuya smiled a little and said, don't worry, and then gave a kiss on her cheek and said, once we are done with our work, I will make sure to have a lot of skinship with you. He then stepped away from the frozen and blushing Roswas and said, on that note, let's hurry up and finish our work, the sooner the better, and started walking away. Roswas touched her cheek with a dumbfounded expression on her face, and a subconsciously decides to finish her work as soon as possible. After the little show of Tetsuya flirting with Roswas was over both of them got into working mode, since seeing the pile of papers in the room was getting too much for their eyes. Office and Raya who was still in the house, went to check on them, but seeing how serious both of them were they left the room without bothering them. Office even left a few of her sweets behind as refreshments, and then left the pair of alone. Tetsuya and his clones were busy going through the papers, and Roswas as well was doing her job diligently, though there were some moments when her mind wandered somewhere, making her blush intense but soon she came returned back to her serious self. While all this was going on at some other place a duo of silver-haired devils were looking at huge crowd of people standing in front of them without making any movements and having lifeless eyes. Among the crowd two people stood out one being a teenager wearing a red cloak and glasses, and other being a young boy with tan skin and white hair. 
The older looking devil nodded his head with a smile on his face and said, This seems good so far. Are the other preparations complete you could? What about that bag of godly bones? He is not planning on going back on his words, right? The younger devil lowered the bundle of papers in his hands and nodded his head and said, No problems notice Rizavam Sama. The hero faction members are currently under our control, and the preparations to use their members to become a medium are done. Regarding Hades' grim reapers and that, it doesn't seem that he is planning to go back on his words. Rizavam nodded his head with a satisfied smile and then asks, And what about a target? Any signs of them knowing about this? You could shook his head and said, no science. From my sources, I can confirm that most of the members of that bastard Ash Asterisk C-O-U-G-H Asterisk Asterisk C-O-U-G-H Asterisk at Sire Shiba's house are currently with the peerage of the Gremory Eris accompanying them for the promotion test of their members. Only Tetsuya Shiba, a Valkyrie, our target and one other women of unknown origin, is left there with the Basta I mean Tetsuya Shiba and the Valkyrie, working in a separate room, going through some documents and our target relaxing in the unknown women's lap while eating some sweets. You could said all that with a plain voice, but Rizavam who heard all that took a few steps back, and looked at his with a weird expression on his face and asked, not wanting to be rude or anything but are you stalking them? You could who heard that widened his eyes in surprise and said, most definitely not. Why would I even want to stalk that fuke dash asterisk c-o-u-g-h asterisk i mean this is just so that we can know where our target currently is yeah it's not like i have anything else in my mind i am just making sure that everything goes perfectly not that i want to know what all he do with big sis there yeah i am not doing it to look at them making out i really want to kill that fucker Rizavam looked at Euclid who had veins popping out on his forehead, and the papers in his hands were getting crushed between them. He gulped his saliva and thought, Euclid is scary. Euclid soon calmed himself a bit and said, anyway, leaving that aside everything is in order. Now we just have to focus on how many of these are to be assigned at various places. Rizavam narrowed his eyes and was about to say something. But Euclid beat him to that and said, I am thinking of sending Atlas 90% of these, and the Grim Reapers, along with that to that fuke dash asterisk O-U-R asterisk Kugat's place. It will give us the high chances of killing the bastard dash I mean capturing the target, though I would suggest that 99% of our forces could do a better job in dealing with him, and showed small smile on his face. Rizavam blinked in surprise and thought to himself, is it only me on Euclid Kun is getting dumber day by day? Rizavam gave a cough and said, that indeed sounds like a good plan, but don't forget that Underworld is our target as well, and we cannot risk any chances of him getting support from there, so we need to do things keeping that in mind as well. Euclid who heard that became a bit disappointed, but still nodded his head and started discussing with Rizavam waiting for Hades to send them the message. Back in Kuo Town Tetsaya who was busy in his work, felt that someone was looking at him for a past few days, but was unable to find anything wrong with his surroundings, since a certain silver haired devil was using the best Starkey Dash spying. Magic there is in the world, not even entities like Great Red and other could find Thegic's signature behind the technique. Tetsaya looked around the room since he felt a bit uneasy, but was still unable to figure anything out. He called Raya through his telepathy, and asked her if she could detect something, since she was much better at it compared to him, but she too was not able to find anything wrong. Thinking that it was a bit weird he called both of them to the same room they were before, so that someone would not try anything funny with those two. He then stood up from his seat and dispelled all his clones and said, take a break for a while Rose. Can't have you short circuiting because of overwork. Ross was dropped her pen on the table and stretched her body while sitting on the chair, and looked around the room. Her nearly half of them are still left, huh? I will get us some coffee. Anne was about to stand up from her seat. But just as she said that the door of the room opened with Raya and office, bringing in some snacks and drinks for them and said, no need for that, just relax, and place the things on the table. Tetsaya nodded his head and said, thanks Raya and office thank you for the sweets earlier. Raya and office nodded their heads with Raya having a wide grin on her face, and office with a small smile. Roswes gave them her gratitude as well, and decided to rest along with the others. All of them then sat down and started to chat with each other, without knowing what was about to happen soon. Titsaya and Roswes once again started doing their work, while office and Raya just sat down in the room with Raya reading some books she got from Titsaya, and office sleeping, using with the god killer pups. Though she don't need to sleep, Tetsaya who was going through some papers, suddenly saw a familiar red circle appear on his desk, and stopped what he was doing along looked at it along with. The others with Ross was preparing for a possible attack. Soon a projection of a familiar red-headed Siskon appeared, seeing which Tetsaya raised his hand and said, Yo, Serzichis how is it going? Did they pass the test? Serzichis stared silent at Tetsaya and asked, Please tell me you are here, in Underworld. Tetsaya blinked for a while and said, Um no. I am not, I still hard dash why the hell can you not be here for the one that you are required Serzichis clutched his head, and looked at him with a frustrated expression on his face. The whole room fell silent, seeing the sudden outburst from the man. Even Office woke up from his shout and was glaring at the projection with the intent to kill. The pups were growling at him as well. Seeing that Office was preparing a magic circle in her hand, Raya immediately stopped her, while Ross was calmed down the god killer pups. Titsaya nodded seeing that the situation was fine now, and then looked back at Serzichis and asked, What happened that you want me to be there so badly? Serzichis sighed, and then a holographic screen appeared in front of Titsaya, showing many huge monsters nearly 100 meters tall, with a human on top of each of them. There were several other monsters who were even 200 meters tall with a human on top of them as well. Titsaya who saw the scene immediately called Kao Kao, and his team and a small projection of the hero faction appeared in front of him. 
What happened Tetsaya? We are busy you know. Tetsaya ignored what Cao Cao said and asked, are these the members of your team? And pointed towards the holographic screen. Cao Cao and his team immediately turned around, and were surprised seeing the monsters in the screen. They then spotted the people attached to the heads of the monsters, and were totally speechless. After they were able to calm down a bit, Cao Cao looked at Tetsaya and simply nodded his head. Tetsaya who saw this side and said, looks like your faction is being used to be the power source for the Annihilation Maker guy. He then turned to Sersiches and said, Miyuki and the others would still be there with Venelana San. Try contacting them and hold on for a bit. Ah, about that they along with my peerage are already at it. But since those giants regenerate and divide at a very fast pace, all of them having a bit of trouble well, except for one person. He then showed another projection with his team fighting off against the giants, but were not very efficient, since by the time they killed one, some more had been produced by the other giants. But amongst them, a certain blonde hair green eyes girl flying on top of a blue dragon's back was firing black energy blasts, which were easily able to destroy the giants. Ah, uh, Asia is using her anti-healing technique to cover their regenerations and destroying them completely wait a minute, he then formed a magic circle near his ear, and called Asia. Hello Asia. Ah, uh, Tetsaya-san, hello. Did you want something? No. But are you alright? Yes, we are totally fine. Just some giant pests hindering us. Sersiches Sam might have already told you about, right? Yes, he did. And I am calling you regarding this same too. You see the people on top of their heads are from Cow Cow's faction. Check whether they are still alive or not, and please keep the bodies intact even if they are dead. Oh, so these people sticking out of their heads were from Hero Faction, huh? Alright, Tetsaya Sam, leave it to me. But there are too many of them to take care of. Regarding that, Sersiches ask your people to force teleport those giants near Asia. And Asia ask Asami to boost up and transfer the power to you. Blast them all in one shot. Oh, mind their bodies though. Sersiches and Asia who heard his plan nodded their heads in approval. Sersiches then looked at Tetsaya and asked, Aren't you going to come here to deal with this situation? Oh, about that? I have some company here as well. Alright, Raya, let them in. Raya who had a mischievous smile on her face, gave a thumbs up. And just as she did, purple fog started surrounding them. Sersiches who saw that wood in his eyes and said, Kuo, is un under attack as well. Tetsaya nodded and said, well, then try to survive on your end, ask some people to head there to help you guys. Cow Cow, call Vali and tell him that he is attacking Underworld, and there might be a chance for him to be there as well. And hurry up to take care of your faction members. See you guys on a bit. And before they could even answer them, their projections disappeared. Tetsaya looked at Roswas and said, secure all the paperwork, we don't want to do this all over again, right? Roswas nodded and started placing barriers over the pile of documents to prevent them from getting destroyed. Tetsaya looked at Raya and said, let them in, they must be quite frustrated by now. Ah, but wouldn't that be funnier to let them wait a bit longer? Hum, alright then, Roswas, let's finish all these papers, and then we will get down to welcoming our guests. Ross was blinked in surprise and asked, W will that he alright? Tetsaya and Raya just showed a charming smile on their faces, which made Ross was totally speechless. She sighed and just nodded in agreement and once again started going through the papers. 20 minutes later, Tetsaya and Ross were finally able to finish their paperwork, and Ross was got ready to battle. Tetsaya stood up from his seat as well and stretched his body, and looked at Ross was and Raya and asked, you guys ready? Ross was who saw the giants on the screen earlier was a bit nervous, but was still eager to know how would she fare against them, and nodded her head, Raya just looked at him with a smile, and gave a thumbs up. Tetsaya nodded his head and said, Well then, I have prepared everyone's favorites today make sure to eat to your fill. And some of his clones started coming in the room with various dishes in their hands, and started arranging their table. Roswas comically fell down on the ground once Tetsaya said that while Raya and Office were shouting, Banzai Banzai with their hands up in the air. Roswas got up from the ground and asked, WW wait a minute isn't there something more important that we have to de dash? But before she could finish Raya looked at her and said, Then are you telling us to leave this appetizing food behind, just to deal with some small fries, Valkyrie Chan. Office nodded her head ask well and said, You are stopping me from eating the sweets that Tetsaya prepared for me just to deal with some bugs. And stared directly in Roswas's eyes. Roswas who soon remembered the identities of the two girls in front of her, gulped her saliva, and immediately shook her head. Both Raya and Office sat down to eat their food, seeing which Roswas just sighed. She then felt a tap on her shoulder and saw Tetsaya smiling at her with a bottle of wine in his hands and asked, Want to drink some with me Rose? Roswas started at him with a deadpan look on her face for a while, but finally sighed and nodded her head with a helpless smile on her face. Tetsaya nodded his head and both of them sat down to have their meal as well. Meanwhile somewhere else a silver-haired devils was gripping a monitor with all his strength and shouted, stop eating that delicious looking fool you fucker how long are you going to let US stay here open the barrier already? Seeing him like that the older silver-haired devil who was peeking at him from from the slightly open door thought you could kind really became a stalker. What's more is that he is stalking his brother-in-law. Once they were done eating their food Tetsaya and the remaining residents of the Shiba residence stretched their bodies to get a bit warmed up. Office looked at Tetsaya and asked, are they here to get me? Tetsaya looked at her and nodded his head and said, well, they are idiots thinking that they could tame you or try to take your power. But anyways don't think much about it. Not that big of a problem for us. Office stared at him for a while and nodded her head and said, 
I will help as well. They are here for me after all. Tetsuya patted her head with a smile on his face and said, that would be very helpful then. He then removed the barrier that was preventing the cow's brigade members to enter his domain. And once again the violet fog started to surround them. This time Tetsuya didn't interfere with the process, and soon all of them were in a separate dimension, which was a totally plain space, devoid of any structures whatsoever. In the space countless devils, grim reapers and the giants made by the Annihilation Maker were present, and all of them immediately took their stance once they saw their targets preset inside the space. Tetsuya looked around for a while, and then gave a whistle filled with admiration and said, You certainly prepared a whole lot to meet me, ain't you? By the way, where is my brother-in-law, Euclid? The leader of the devils which was surprisingly Shoulder, who was killed by Serzichas earlier, came forward and said, You don't need to worry about that human, just give us office, and we promise to kill you without any suffering. Tetsuya looked at office and said, That's what he said, office. Office nodded her head and walked forward, much to the surprise of the Decal's brigade members, who thought that there would be some resistance in the way. But seeing her accepting that so easily made the devils and the Grim Reapers smirk and think that their sheer number put a pressure on them, making the subject to them so easily. Shoba, who was about to laugh and mocked at Saya for being a coward, immediately stopped once he felt a huge amount of black aura surrounding Office, and immediately fell down on his knees. He then looked around and saw that everyone except for the giants, were kneeling on the ground, and then looked at the dark aura, with a terrified look on his face. Tetsuya formed a barrier around Roswas to prevent her from being in a similar condition as the Cow's Brigade members and said, What happened Shoba-san? You wanted office right? Go ahead, take her. Shoba glared at Tetsuya and wanted to say something to him. But the pressure which was coming out of office's body which was getting bigger and bigger, made it impossible for him to speak anything. Soon the aura around office faded away, and now a huge black dragon with razor sharp teeth and golden eyes was standing in her place. Office looked at her body and said, It's been a long time since I changed to my dragon form. Don't worry about destruction. I will make sure that the space don't get destroyed, said Tetsuya assuring Office to not hold back against the enemies. The giants made by the Annihilation Maker started moving towards the huge dragon once they sensed that the space was stable and were ready to attack. Seeing them walking their way, Office's well-charged magic in her mouth and was ready to fire at them. Tetsuya seeing that suddenly realized something and looked towards Raya and said, bring the humans on top of their heads just before her attack destroys them. I am busy maintaining the spatial field. Raya shrugged her shoulders and just focused on Office's attack so as to not miss the moment her attack connects to the giants. Meanwhile Office, who had finally done charging her attack flew up so as to get above the giants, and a huge magic circle appeared in front of her mouth. The devils and the grim reapers who felt the energy inside the magic circle, started sweating and immediately deployed a barrier in hopes of not getting caught in the attack. Seeing the scene in front of him Tetsuya smoked and said hey Rose. The silver-haead Valkyrie who was awestruck seeing the dragon god's magic circle, looked towards Tetsuya with a curious look on her face. Tetsuya pointed his finger towards the devils and grim reapers and said, nullify their barrier. You were practicing barriers lately, right? Hearing which Roswas nodded her head without thinking. But soon she got back to reality and her eyes widened in shock. What? You want me to nullify all of these? Tetsuya nodded his head with an expression which said, obviously. Seeing which Roswas's lips twitched in annoyance. Ah, don't worry. I will provide the magic power to you. You just need to nullify them. That's all. That's all's all my ass and why the hell are you speaking as if this is something normal to do? She then looked at her teammates which consisted of the two dragon gods who are supposedly the strongest beings in the world, and a human who is actually the strongest being of the world, and massage her temples. Strisk S-I-G-H asterisk I will have a drink after all this is over to relieve some of my stress. And various magic circles appeared around Roswas's pattern continuously kept on changing. Stris Ru uh, exclamation point exclamation point exclamation point exclamation point exclamation point asterisk a very loud roar was heard by all the people who were present inside the spatial field, which was followed by a huge pillar of magic energy fired by Office, who was looking started charging another attack in her mouth. Most of the giants which were present on the field immediately got destroyed by the blast without even getting a chance to regenerate and those which were not destroyed completely suffered major damage and were in the process to regenerate. Most of the Grim Reapers and Devils also got caught in their attack but because of the barriers that they deployed earlier they were able to prevent any serious injuries. Nah, this author bastard is lying. All those who got caught in the attack are hardly breathing. Heck, some of them don't even have their bodies left, said Tetsuya staring in space as if looking at someone. What? Ah, nothing, nothing. Don't mind me. Asterisk C-O-U-G-H asterisk asterisk C-O-U-G-H asterisk anyways. The devils and then the Grim Reapers who saw the huge dragon charging another blast started panicking. And Shulba looked at the Grim Reapers and said, there's no time bring that thing out, that's our only chance. The leader of the Grim Reapers who heard that nodded his head and raised his scythe in the sky, and then slammed it on the ground, and immediately a huge magic circle appeared. As soon as the magic circle was formed both Raya and Office stopped for a bit, and widened their eyes in surprise. They certainly did prepare well to catch Office. Gotta admit that they Atlas are good enough to think that far. Tetsuya nodded and said, Well, Big Bro Euclid is really smart you know. Without him the old Satan faction would have collapsed much earlier. Ross was who was busy in nullifying the barriers, didn't ask anything, but was still curious as to to know what that magic circle was. 
Soon enough her question was answered as something started to rise up from the magic circle. A bizarre creature with the features consisting of both a dragon and a fallen angel came into view with its whole body driven into a cross by nails and blood coming out from all over its body. Roswiss was totally speechless seeing the creature and had her mouth open wide. The devils and grim reapers who saw the dragon god stop for a bit smoked and Shulba said, speechless, our office. Well why won't you be? After all this is a your natural enemy the dragon slayer Samuel. Your doom is near you emotionless dragon bit dash. But before he was able to finish Shamal's whole body glowed red and started compressing. Before it turned into a red beam of light and got absorbed in a blue and white ball with M written over it. The ball then started flying towards that sire at a very fast speed and was caught by him. Who looked at the ball and said, a dragon type, huh? Well a good catch. He then looked at Shulber and said, you were saying something earlier, please continue. After a few minutes of mindless carnage caused by a dragon lowly, a pile of human bodies was floating behind Raya, who was successfully able to save most of the humans on top of the giant's heads. But still a few were dead with their bodies totally destroyed, making it impossible for her to recover them. Tetsaya also had a few elite grim reapers and devils from the cow's brigade, in half-dead state restrained by magic, and decided to give them to Serzages, so that he can talk with the skeleton god. Office, who was done with her job was sitting on her throne made of god killer pups who grew their sizes a bit with a lot of sweets in her hand last but not the least roswas was busy studying the dimensional barrier they were in since that sire told her that it was impossible for even satan class beings to get out of here easily which immediately picked up her interest the rest of the corpses there weren't any since officers attack obliterated everyone on the field in a matter of few blasts if not for tatsaya saving the elites in their half dead state they too would have vaporized without any traces left behind as well once both Tetsaya and Raya were done with their jobs, Tetsaya teleported at a distance away from there, but soon returned back with two boys, one teenager and other a child whose bodies were shrunken so much that their skeletons could be outlined by a naked eye. Let's go back then, everything is done here. Rose, you can study the space barrier later. This guy is the one who made it, ask him to help you later. Tetsaya called Roswiss and gestured towards the unconscious George over his shoulder and then destroyed the barrier. Soon all of them were back to their previous location and Tetsaya and Raya immediately started putting the bodies that they brought in the underground training field, while Roswiss brought the two almost dead hero faction members to the medical ward where Tetsaya soon arrived once he was done dealing with the bodies and used healing magic on the two so as to heal their injuries. Now they just had to wait till they gained their consciousness back and have a meal to regain their strength. Once all that was done Tetsaya and the others gathered once again in the room they were previously in. Office who was staring at Tetsaya without saying anything gathered attention from all of them and even Tetsaya and Raya were unable to know why she was doing that since she had no thoughts about it. Tetsaya who was used to her antics a bit patted her head receiving, which Office's lips showed a small unnoticeable smile on her face. He then smiled as well and said, good job Office. I will make sure to make your favorite sweets tonight. Hearing which she nodded her head with a slight glimmer in her eyes. Tetsaya then looked at Raya and Roswas and said, I will go and check the situation in Underworld. Look after the people whom we have brought here. And teleported away without waiting for any response from them. Let's go Retsa keep firing don't stop. Asterisk R O A A A R Asterisk Tetsaya who teleported to Underworld at the location where he felt the presence of his teammates was welcomed by the sight of a beautiful blonde haired girl. Riding on top beautiful 10 meters long blue western dragon. It's just that the beautiful girl was totally covered in blood and the dragon looked more like an evil dragon shooting lightning with a ferocious expression on his face while also being covered in blood. Um, I could somewhat guess as what is happening here, but mind telling me about it. All of them who heard Tetsai's voice immediately turned around with a surprised look on his face. But soon that expression turned into relief as all of them immediately rushed towards him, and some of the devils were rushing at an astonishing speed towards him. Tetsaya who saw them was surprised and thought, what the hell happened here for them to look this relieved on seeing me, and waited for the incoming devils to explain the situation to him. But before any of them could even reach him a magic circle appeared in front of Tetsaya, and a long crimson haired man appeared out of it, and latched onto Tetsaya. Ha! Serzaches! Wah Serzaches who just now appeared in the area, grabbed Tetsaya's shoulders and started shaking him and said, Tetsaya come Tetsaya come please save the underworld. Tetsaya who was being shakes by Serzaches which is with the full force of his Satan class power had some cracks form below him and asked, what the, how much damage did those giants cause to make you lick dash, no save the underworld from that golden head demon riding on that evil dragon, and pointed his finger towards the said figures, Tetsaya looked at where he was pointing, and with a frown on his face said, that's just Asia and her family dash, shut that crap bastard I don't want to hear that do you think, that I am lying cc these grey head strands do your you think, that I am lying, Tetsaya was taken aback, by how Sezich's reacted, and was unable to think how to react to that. What the hell has been happening here? Why is he acting like this? Tetsaya looked at others who too were taken aback by Sezich's, and just before Grafia could explain a very strong earthquake occurred, making all of them fall down on their butts, and a huge pillar made up of black magic energy appeared where the giant whom Asia was attacking earlier was. This see that punk. This happened asterisk boom asterisk asterisk boom asterisk asterisk boom asterisk a huge dome of the same magic energy which was misfired by Asia was seen a few kilometers away. And this two asterisk r-u-m-b-l-e asterisk asterisk r-u-m-b-l-e asterisk asterisk r-u-m-b-l-e asterisk suddenly the whole area got covered by black thunderclouds spreading almost 10 kilometers in all directions. 
Multiple lightning bolts were fired at the ground, causing massive damage all over the place without any discrimination. If not for the evacuation that had already been done, then it would have been hard to tell who the terrorist amongst them really was. This as well. See this with your eyes wide and open you black head human op bastard. Suddenly a very bright green light started to come out of Asia's body which soon died down, and revealed her to be clad in a bright golden armor. Asia looked all over her body, and with an happy expression on her face shouted, Yes, I finally unlocked my balance break and now I can kick the shit of all these bastards in a much better way. Yang on the other hand, Serzich's was clutching his head with both his hands and shouted, Nuuuu Asia, who heard a sudden shout which was not really clear, saw everyone, and showed a refreshing smile on her face, and gave a thumbs up. She then jumped from her familiars back towards the, the last remaining 200 meters giant and punched her with her fist covered in black magic energy, and sent it flying a few kilometers away. A few moments later a huge explosion was seen at the place where the giant was punched, seeing which a certain red-headed mare had his eyes and mouth open wide. After Asia was done with her fight for the cause of saving the underworld, she and her familiar landed on the ground, and she looked at the others with a smile. She then looked at Serzich's, whose mouth was still wide open because of shock, and with a radiant smile on her face said, Don't worry Serzich's San, those giant Fakera are now gone for good. I pummeled each of those giant walking assholes to ground, and made sure that those shitheads don't regenerate again. The underworld is safe now. Serzich's with his mouth still open, looked around and saw black smoke rising in the sky, and the ground looking like life has never existed on the land, for as far as he could see. He then looked at Asia and thought, Save my ass, you adorable angelic demon is riding on an evil dragon. He then turned his head towards Tetsaya, who averted his eyes as soon as their gazes met. Look at me you what bastard. Look me in the eyes and say that the underworld is safe. Phew, that was really tiring. The new balance breaker took a lot since I am not used to it. Said Asia as she deactivated her balance breaker and stretched her body. She then turned towards her familiar which was a sprite dragon, who was now totally grown up because of training in the time chamber, and motioned him to lower his head to which the dragon complied and lowered his head. Good work there Ratso, you really did a good job. There, see everyone is totally speechless by our performance today. And looked towards the others who just showed the girl and dragon duo a wry smile on their faces. How about it Tetsaya-san, we did good, right? And looked towards Tetsaya with a smile on her face, and with a face which seemed to be saying, praise me, praise me. Tetsaya who heard this question stiffened a bit, but instantly expression changed, and he looked at her with a charming smile, and didn't say anything. This is the best choice, no need to say anything. Seeing his choice of response almost all of them wanted to retort, but before they were able to say anything, Tetsaya looked at them and showed a smile to them as well. Asia and her familiar who saw Tetsaya's smile were also smiling as they got praised by him and Asia said, See, Ratsukun even Tetsaya-san agrees. Let's do our best again, when the underworld is in a crisis. Nuo a certain redhead who heard Asia talking to the dragon, immediately shouted without thinking anything making all people to look at him with a slight surprise. I I I mean Asia-kun, there is no need for you to do this much for underworld, since you are not affiliated to a faction, right? It would not look good if every time we were to rely on you if something like this happens, right? Asia furrowed her brows a bit and thought about it for a while and said, That certainly is true. Hum well it can't be helped. But then a charming smile once again appeared on her face, and she said, But don't hesitate to ask my help if my friends were in danger, after all many of my friends live here. I will take care of the matter if something like that were to happen. Hearing those sweet words along with the charming smile and her beautiful voice, Asia looked like an angel at that moment. However to a certain red-headed man, those words were nothing but threat. Those words said by Asia in a setting where almost everything in the surrounding was destroyed, smoke rising from various places. No signs of life anywhere nearby, and an Asia totally covered in blood with an evil dragon behind her, made a perfect scene of dread inside Sezich's mind. To him the smile didn't look charming even one bit, it was like a viscous smoke to Sezich's eyes, and seeing all that a shiver went down the man's spine, making him shiver up a bit. He took a few deep breaths to calm himself down, and looked towards the boss of the demoness. Tetsaya who saw Serzich's looking at him was about to use his telepathy to know what he was thinking. But before he was even able to Serzich's grab Tetsaya's shoulder and threw him high up in the air, shocking everyone near him. He then took out his wings and immediately flew up in the air to catch up to Tetsaya and also transformed into his super form. Tetsaya who was also a bit surprised by Serzich's sudden action used his telepathy on him and sighed. He then noticed the man covered in power of destruction rushing towards him and didn't do anything. Serzich's seeing that didn't even flinch a bit and punched Tetsaya's gut with his full power to which Tetsaya just blocked it with his hand covered in magic so as to not get damaged by the power of destruction. The moment when Serzich's fist connected to Tetsaya's hand a very large shock wave got released from the collision, and an extremely loud noise was heard for over a 100 kilometers. Serzich's then freed his hand and turned back to his normal form, and with a relieved sigh said, Ha ah, now I feel a bit better. He then looked at Tetsaya and with a said, Thanks for being the punching bag. But in the next instant Tetsaya punched Serzich's as well who too was able to block it without much difficulty. Now then take responsibility for Isakun's actions, and turn everything back to normal. I have too many things to deal with right now. Tell me what happened in Kuo later and everything you know about the incident. Bye. But just as he was about to teleport a small magic circle appeared in front of him, and a projection of Milikas appeared from it. Father Father. A one of the bigger giants suddenly came crashing down on council building. Grandfather got caught in the explosion, and is heavily injured hurry up, and come here bring grandma and the others as well. 
Both Tatsaya and Sezichus fell silent at the sudden news, and Sezichus looked at the sky and said, of all places she could have thrown the giant why the hell did IT have to be the council um, your father is injured as well you know, and sorry about her throwing the giant at the council. He then thought, though it is my fault since I changed the trajectory a bit to make him land near Ziotifix. Why the hell were you at council you bastard it's your fault for the destruction of the council building. Sezichus looked at him and said, that is not that big of a problem, father and the other older councilmen have got more serious wounds during the war times, so they are used to it. The problem here are the weaker councilmen. They are going to make a lot of complaints now, since they might think that it's a scheme from someone who don't want them to be on the council. Ah, I can imagine the amount of paperwork that would be coming to me. Not to mention that idiot magical girl will put most of her work in my part too. HH just kill me already stab my heart with a holy sword and just kill me. Tetsaya looked at the mayor with pity and said, don't yet die on me. Here take this, it will Atlas ease your worries a bit. Serzichus looked at Tetsaya and saw him holding his hand out with a pair of spectacles in his hand and a beautiful red colored pen in the other. Serzichus looked at the items with a curious gaze, seeing which Tetsaya said, these glasses will let you read at a speed of 500 words per second. Hearing which Serzichus eyes widened in surprise as he carefully took the specs from Tetsaya's hands and looked at it, as if he was holding the world's largest diamond in his hands. Ah you are telling the truth right? This treasure will really let me read at that speed. To which Tetsaya just gave an assuring nod. Serzichus gulped his saliva and wore kept the glasses in the case which Tetsaya gave him, and then stored them in his box. He then eyes the beautiful red pen and asked, and what about the pen? Don't tell me. It will let me write at the speed of 100 words per second or something. Tetsaya chuckled and said, nah, it's nothing that great. Hearing which Serzich just slumped his shoulders feeling a bit disappointed. It's just let you make 5 more clones of yourself when you put your demonic energy into it. Though your power gets dived equally asv dot dot ll. During the later part of sentence, Serzich's was already hugging Tetsaya very tightly. Tight enough to shatter any mid-ultimate class being without any problem. Thank you Tetsaya Kun you are the best you are I am so happy right now that I couldn't tell you I am a very blessed person to have you as my friend Tetsaya who was being hugged by a crying Sersages, just patted his back and let him be and thought, your dad might be dying right now, you know. A few days after Asia saved the underworld, Tetsaya was walking along with Sersages and Azazel, who were being followed by Ruswas, Tobio and Julio, an exorcist who turned into an angel using Michael's Joker card. He was also the no.1 exorcist possessing the Longinus Zenith Tempest. Once again Tetsaya said thank you for complying with my request. Julio said looking at Tetsaya with a smile on his face. Tetsaya looked back at him and said, for the NTH time, stop that Julio-san. I already said that it was not that big of a deal to begin with. Asia also enjoys interacting with the children at the orphanage, so it's fine. I know that but still I'm glad that you decided to cook for the children at different orphanages on my request. The food you made was really excellent. The others who saw the interaction between the blonde and the black-haired boys were a bit confused as to what they were talking about. It was just Ross was amongst those four who gave a tired sigh and thought, I know that it was a good thing to do for all those children, but the fam letters that have been coming in lately are too much of a hassle to deal with. She then looked at Julia with narrowed eyes and thought, all because of that blonde angel bastard, got too emotional to the point of shedding his tears when he tried his food. As is all who was not knowing what was happening between Tetsaya and Julio, gave a cough and said, B by the way, why are you coming along with us? Do you have some business to deal with at the place where we are going Tetsaya? Tetsaya and Julio looked at Azazel, and soon all the gazers were on Tetsaya, since none of them knew why he was tagging along with them, since he was not even a part of the alliance. Ah, I haven't given you the details about Kuo's invasion yet. Well getting directly to the point dash. He then formed a portal in the air from which a few people dropped on the ground. Seeing the people who just came out of the portal both Serzichas and Azazel widened their eyes in shock, and were left totally speechless. Even Julio and Tobio were surprised by the people whom they just saw and narrowed their eyes. I want to ask him why a god who is part of a faction belonging to the Alliance attacked me along with the Cow's Brigade. Hey haven't I killed Shoulder before? How is he still alive? Tetsaya who heard his question was about to answer. But then he noticed Azazel thinking about something seriously and stopped. Sephiroth growled to think that the Holy Grail would be in the hands of the Devil's Ha. This is very troublesome. They could make foes which are defeated with great effort come back to life. Seems like that the world is really in the mood of fucking all of us. Serzichas looked at Azazel seriously, and then back at the unconscious Shoulder and thought, it's really serious matter. If what all is known about that sacred gear is true, then all of us are in great trouble well, except for him of course and looked at Tetsaya with an expressionless face. Tetsaya just put the bodies back and said, well then let's get going and see what the Bonakai I mean the Bone King has to say. All of them walked towards Hades' palace with a serious expression on their faces, ready to fight any people who might block Thai away. Did they seriously send all the Grim Reapers after office? But the fact that the whole place was totally empty without any sort of noise, the only sound which they were able to hear was the sound of their footsteps. I don't think that it is necessary, but how many Grim Reapers came to Kuo? Tetsaya looked at Azazel, who asked him this question, and then looked at Roswas who took out a sheet of paper from her pocket, and gave it to Azazel. Azazel looked at the paper for a while and nodded his head and said, yup that explains it. No need to worry you all ease up, this place right now is even safer than you can even imagine. And passed on the sheet to Serzages who after seeing it nodded and returned it back to Roswas. Roswas then gave the sheet to Tobio who was looking at the paper with curiosity, 
who when read the number of people that were dealt by Tetsaya, looked at him with a deadpan look and asked, why is there still a plus even after numbers this big? Tetsaya looked at Tobio and said, oh that a few of the bodies were destroyed without any traces left of them, so were not able to add them to the list. Soon all of them came in front of a huge door and stopped in front of it. Azazel turned around and looked at Serzich's and the other members of the alliance and said, now then listen up here, even if we have our suspicions on him, don't act too recklessly there, so as to not hard dash, FBI open up. And the door was locked open by Tetsaya. Rem the alliance why do I even try when this guy is around ah well let's go with the flow. Hands on your back where I can see them get away from the little lady you bastard Azazel, also went in the room, whose door was just kicked open by Tetsaya and followed his lead. The others looked at the two idiots who just went inside and were unsure what to say about this. All of them just sighed and went in the room as well. Once all of them were inside Serzich's and the other three who just came in saw Tetsaya and Azazel having a dissatisfied expression on their faces. What happened is something wrong. Tetsaya and Azazel looked at Serzich's and said, Ah, uh, nothing, we just realized that the bone god does not have a bone dot asterisk s i g h asterisk, my earlier act is now ruined. Yeah, now I just realized this that just like the angels he too has not experienced that since he came into existence. How pitiful. Serzich's just blinked his eyes in surprise hearing what the two idiots standing in front of him just said. He was about to say something to them, but before he was able to say it all of them heard a voice. Pluto hide those magazines immediately. And when the hell did Underworld have a branch of them? Pluto Pluto exclamation point exclamation point exclamation point exclamation point dot 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 ah yeah he is not here right no dash. And soon they saw a skeleton wearing robe carrying a huge pile of magazines in his hand, came out from another room. The skeleton's eyes then met with those of the others who were looking at him with a surprised look on their faces. This one as well. Yeah, this and this too. I can't believe he has such rare things here. There is one about gods as well. What kind of source does one need to get your hands on this epic shit? How the hell do you have these magazines? Forget about race, you have ones about gods from almost all pantheons as well. How the hell is this possible for someone WHO doesn't even have that to have all these treasures? They are of no use to you, so why? Shouted Azazel while looking at Hades. This stuff is too dangerous if it falls into wrong hands, I will make sure to keep it safe with me. Muttered Tetsaya who started to put the research books in his storage. Everyone present there looked at Tetsaya and thought, your hands are looking the most dangerous right now, you know. Azazel looked at Tetsaya who was busy stuffing away the stuff and said, I will help you as well, and immediately used his magic to summon all the remaining books towards himself. Tetsaya looked at the person who suddenly snatched away the treasure and didn't say anything. Azazel who noticed him silently staring at him didn't think much about that and stored the books before anyone could disturb him. Only the boy ex-boy ones were left there. Have fun looking at those muscles in DS. Thought Tetsaya while smoking internally so as to not cause any suspicion to Azazel. While the two men of culture were doing their stuff the rest of the people who came along with those two were looking at the tied up skeleton who was looking down in shame and seemingly wanted to hide himself in a hole. If you two are done with your um stuff shall we deal with the real reason we came here for? Tetsaya and Azazel looked at Serzich's and tilted their heads with a confused look on their faces, seeing which Serzich's had a few veins popping up on his forehead. ECH was all that he said before pointing his finger towards the tied-up skeleton god. Ah, both Azazel and Tetsaya smacked their fists on their palms and nodded their heads. Yeah, now then Hades, do you know why we are here? Asked Azazel while looking at the skeleton who was tied up in a golden chain. Tetsaya snapped his finger and six chairs appeared around Hades, seeing which all of them looked at Tetsaya, who motioned them to sit down. After all were seated on their chairs, they once again focused on the skeleton who looked at Tetsaya with an angry expression on his face skull. Tetsaya smiled at him and said, hello and waved his hand, seeing which the god just turned angrier. Just what are you here for? Said Hades who was immediately met with glares from Tetsaya, Azazel and Serzich's, which immediately silenced him. You really want to ask that Hades? Said Serzich's with a serious look on his face. Jude, it's too late for feigning ignorance you know. Absence of all your grim reapers is already saying it in itself, said Azazel who just sighed looking at the god. Hades narrowed his eyes and glanced at Tetsaya, who noticed it almost immediately. He then smiled and snapped his finger, and several bodies started falling from a portal. Seeing the bodies Hades was shocked seeing his elite grim reapers in half-dead state. I will just be straight with you we didn't come here to know why you did this. Those types of shit can be done on a later date with everyone. What we want to know is whether you are the only one who is involved in it or your whole faction, asked Serzich's. Hades looked at Serzich's and said, does it really matter to you who all were involved in it? Oi oi Hades, you do know that we are in an alliance right, and what is the purpose of that alliance? Asked Azazel. Shut it fallen brat, I know and I ask once again what is it to you or anyone else in the alliance about what I do? Cause as far as I know neither did the alliance that we signed breach the privacy of individual members of the alliance, nor did I do anything that was against what the alliance was for. Azazel looked at him with a bit of surprise and said, how can you say that when your subordinates were working with the cow dash? But Hades interrupted him and said, are you claiming that my subordinates were working with cow's brigade? Looks like you even suspect the members of the alliance as well. Huh? Then you might have some evidence that might prove your claim, right? Because as far as I know, my Grim Reapers just reached there at the same time the members of the brigade arrive. Hearing his answer, everyone except for Tetsaya got angry at him and started to release their auras to the extent that the whole castle started shaking the pressure that was being released by the five of them. But at that moment Tetsaya said, then does that mean you were not working with Cow's Brigade? Hearing Tetsaya's question, all of them looked at him with a confused expression on their faces. Hades also turned towards Tetsaya, who was looking at him with a curious expression on his face. 
though he totally ignored the fact that instead of his usual blue eyes, Tetsuya had a pair of red ones with three tomos inside each of them. What is he planning? Was the thought that came to each of their minds as they looked at Tetsuya curiously. And what will you do if I said yes Tetsuya Shiba? Hum, I wonder about that as I'll give a call to Mount Olympus. Ha, huh, I mean really, you are not going to blow his whole body apart. Or anything that will give us more heat, okay? Just wait a minute and stop with that look. As Azazel looked at Tetsuya with a stupefied look on his face and started saying things that just made Tetsuya seem like he was an unreasonable person. In response, Tetsuya just stared silently at him without saying anything, which for some reason made him stop and did what Tetsuya asked him to do. Soon, a small projection of a man wearing clothes which were barely covering his totally chiseled chest appeared in Azazel's hand. Ah, if it isn't the lonely governor of the fallen angels. So, what made you remember of this famous god today? Hello, Zeus, long time no see. Well, um, you see, a friend of mine had something to discuss with you, so can you spare me some of your time? Hum, why was there a pause before you said friend question mark dot 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 well whatever, fine I can spare some time for your friend. So who is it? Azazel looked towards Tetsuya who was looking curiously at him and asked, why was there a pause I want to know that as well. Anyway, it's nice to meet you Zeus-san. I am Tetsuya Shiba, a man of culture and Azazel's friend. You see there was a complaint that I wanted to register about one of Mount Olympus's employee. After he said that he was met with total silence from not only Zeus, but also the people who came along with him, and were looking at him with a dumbfounded expression on their faces. Currently in a huge hall inside Hades's castle, a few people were sitting around a table having a cup of tea along with some snacks. Though the atmosphere was not looking peaceful at all. Tetsuya Serzichis and Azazel were the ones who were sitting around the table along with three other people who came from Mount Olympus. Roswiss and the other two were standing behind Tetsuya and the other two being totally vigilant, so as to make a move whenever necessary. The other three people who came from Mount Olympus on hearing Tetsuya's complaint were staring at him intently as if trying to perceive what he was. These people were some of the chief gods from their factions, namely Zeus, who was wearing clothes which were openly showing his chiseled body, Apollon, who was wearing a chitin, and Artemis, who for some reasons was wearing an armor, and was glaring a bit at Tetsuya, though she is just annoyed being in a room which have huge male over female ratio. Also the fact that this pervy fallen is not the best to hide his intentions is annoying her, were the thoughts that Tetsuya had. Asterisk C-O-U-G-H asterisk asterisk C-O-U-G-H asterisk suddenly Apollon gave a fake cough, so as to get some attention, and seeing that he was successful, he looked at Tetsuya with a smile and asked, so you told us that you some complaints with one of our, um, employee, more specifically Hades. Huh? Can you please elaborate us on that matter? All of them then looked at the skeleton who was sitting a bit further away from them without saying anything. You see that skeleton god of yours, I will put it bluntly, so don't take it offensively alright? To which Apollon just nodded his head while Azazel and Zeus just sipped on their cup of tea. He sent a few of his subordinates to kidnap a lowly. Asterisk PFFT asterisk and immediately both Azazel and Zeus splurged out the tea that they just drank and started coughing violently, which only got them a disgusting glare from Artemis. Though that didn't affect them much as they soon started to laugh out loud. Apollon had his hand in front of his mouth and was slightly trembling, most likely trying his best to not laugh out loud. Serzichis and Tobio were doing the same as him, while Julio was praying muttering something like he had s heard something unholy. Roswiss was looking at Tetsuya, and was thinking how could he say the truth in such a misleading way. A hey Aaron, what role do you play in this? Kidnapping. Apollon was still trembling a bit, and was doing his best to hold off his laughter, and asked his question to Tetsuya. The place he invaded was my territory. The house he infiltrated was mine. The girl he was aiming to kidnap is currently my responsibility. So I can say that my role is pretty huge in this matter. Apollon who heard him was now back to his calm self and asked, I apologize for this. But could you tell us which territory you are talking about? Kuo, it is in Japan under Shinto faction. So you are affiliated with Shinto faction? Huh? Yes and no. I do have some connections to Shinto faction, but I mostly stay neutral with my own group. I just borrowed the territory where I was living, so as to make it up to my standards. And what relation do you hard dash? Are you here to get my biodata or something just get on with the main subject here? Said Tetsuya with a calm tone, though none of them were able to calm themselves a bit once he said that as his eyes turned a bit dangerous at that instant. A-R, you are correct. Sorry about that, we have heard some rumors about him, but who is he anyways? As I can remember Odin just said that not messing with him was the best option, but what is his background? Who is backing him? No one, I told you, right? I like to stay neutral. Shh, huh? Did you just read my mind? Asked Apollon with a surprised look on his face. Yup, was all Tetsuya said before putting another cookie in his mouth. Isn't it a bit rude? No, it's totally wrong to read someone's thoughts. But what else could be expected of a man asterisk S-I-G-H asterisk? Artemis for the first time opened her mouth and started speaking her mind off openly without giving it a second thought. Leaving feminism aside, let's get to the main topic, shall we? Though she got totally ignored by the one she tried to slander and just got more pissed at Tetsuya. Zeus and Azazel high-five each other under the table with their faces not showing even an ounce of change. Take that you feminist great job brat, were the thoughts that were in the minds of two of the leaders. Sure, why not? So may I ask how big was the scale of kidnapping invasion? Tetsuya nodded and turned his head to look at Roswiss and nodded his head. Roswiss understanding what he wanted her to do took out a sheet of paper and gave it to Apollon, and then came back to stand behind Tetsuya. Zeus and Artemis came a bit closer to see what was written on the sheet, and had their expression turned to that of surprise, which soon turned to that of shock as well. All three of them looked back at Tetsuya, 
who had a smile on his face, seeing which all three of them had the same thoughts. Why is that smile looking scary to me? I do hope that I would get appropriate compensation for such a huge scale invasion in my territory, right? Oh, dot, oh, oh of course BB but dash. Apollon was about to say something, but Zeus interrupted him in the middle by raising his hand and asked. Did you really had an invasion on such a huge scale? Because if something of such scale happened, the information would have spread out like wildfire. It's really hard to believe it can dash. They even kidnapped the users of Annihilation Maker and Dimension Lost, and I am pretty sure that you should know what those sacred gears are capable of. You must have also seen what they used the user of Annihilation Maker for during the recent attack on Underworld. And regarding you not believing my claim about the invasion in my territory, Tetsaya then opened Bar Portal, and soon a bumper of people started dropping down from it, and soon the huge hall was half filled with dead bodies of the Grim Reapers that came to kidnap office earlier. Is this enough? These are all the Grim Reapers that he sent whose bodies were not totally destroyed. Seeing the huge pile of bodies both Zeus and Apollon were pretty surprised. Even though they were both pretty strong gods dealing with such a huge number of Grim Reapers, who even had some high-ranking ones amongst them would be too difficult even for them. They looked back at Tetsaya and admired him a bit, and thought that what Odin might have warned them about was actually correct, to have caused this much bloodshed. And seeing that you don't have any noticeable injuries as well, means that your capabilities are pretty high as well enough to deal with them without causing such a massacre. You are really violent and brutal even for a man. But what else should I expect fr R? All of them were dealt with by the girl whom they were trying to kidnap, said Tetsaya while looking at Artemis with a smile on his face. Artemis immediately stopped with her mouth open and looking dumbfounded at the smiling Tetsaya. But soon she looked down with an angry and embarrassed expression on her face, with her hands trembling a bit because of both anger and embarrassment. Luof Buuen, with the thoughts of both Zeus and Azazel and Azazel even raised his fist up and gave both Zeus and Tetsaya a fist bump. Since he was sitting in between them, Apollon was once again back to prevent himself from laughing out loud and said, WLI it certainly seems like they invaded your territory. Yeah, not to mention that I even had to take care of the things that were wrecking havoc here in the underworld. Yeah, you really helped us out with that one, though the destruction caused by you dash. I heard about that too. The news that I received was that the situation was dealt so carelessly, that the destruction caused by the one who was fending those giant monsters, exceeded that of the giant itself. Well it can't be helped men are known for their carelessness and doing things without thinking through. Both Serzichas and Tetsaya stared at Artemis, who had a slight smirk on her face, with her glaring a bit at Tetsaya. Tetsaya just smiled and looked at Serzichas and said, Don't worry Serzichas. I will try my best to teach a little about holding back to violence to Asia, so as to prevent her doing something like this again needless to say she is a girl. Ah, were you saying something Artemis San? And showed a bright smile on her face, though it only irritated the already pissed off Artemis, who was itching to use her bow on the man smiling at her. Burn 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 burn. With the thoughts of the two pervs who were sitting beside each other showing a thumbs up in Tetsaya's direction from under the table. Seeing that Artemis was not going to say anything Tetsaya took a deep breath and said anyway since I have stated my facts and all the evidence that I had do you have anything to say regarding this matter? Plus I would like to know whether your whole faction was behind this incident or it was just the work of that guy alone. Zeus folded his arms and said our faction was not behind this assault. We can assure you of that and since we are talking about it. Hades, is there anything you would like to say about your innocence regarding this matter? Although the loneliness in your castle is speaking for itself that you had sent all your Grim Reapers somewhere, but still. Hades looked at Zeus and then at Tetsaya and soon sighed and said, I take full responsibility for this. And even though I despise Zeus for forging an alliance with these bats and crows, I am not insane enough to bring threat upon the entire faction, just for my greediness to get my hands on her. Hearing him all of them widened their eyes in surprise, and Azazel said, Aren't you complying a bit too easily? Where is that I am not going to speak even if you kill me? Thing Zeus nodded his head and said, Yeah, and what about greediness to get my hands on her stuff? Did you seriously became a lolican? And what is it about you having a spectacular stash of those magazines that I heard from Azazel? You don't even need it. Hades and the others looked at the two idiots with a deadpan look on their faces, and soon Hades said, It's futile knowing what that human can do, and in a situation where I can't even use my powers, it's best to not retaliate. As for your other questions, no I'm not interested in underage girls and about my collection. Every being is interested in things that they don't have don't you agree? The others who heard that now directed a similar deadpan look at him, while Zeus and Azazel nodded their heads, but then suddenly Tetsaya said, You said you were not interested in underage girls then. Does that mean you are interlegal lolis? Ha, huh, nice observation brat, said Azazel widening his eyes a bit, and then looking towards Hades who was staring at Tetsaya without saying anything. Tetsaya looked back at him and also started staring, but soon Hades averted his eyes and looked towards Apollon and said, Leaving those things aside, what my punishment is going to be. Hey don't change the topic you skeleton king yeah. We want to know we want to know. But everyone else ignored the two people who wanted the answers, and once again started discussing. While they were discussing Tetsaya formed a mental link with Hades and asked him telepathically, Why are you keeping this quiet? And don't react, just think and I will hear you. Once Hades heard a voice in his head he was about to shout, but stopped himself when he heard the latter part. Tetsaya Shiba huh? Well even if I say something right now the chances of them listening to me are close to none. And if I tell them the real identity of that girl that you are protecting, you will find a way to refuse that as well. There is no reason for me to dig my grave any deeper than it already is. Aren't you a really smart person? Why did you not use that brain of yours before even sending your Grim Reapers at my place? When you get to know that there is a thing that could get rid of the something that you despise, plus you have the means to get your hands on that thing as well. 
What do you think would you do? A valid point, but still why go so far to deal with the fallen and devil? That you even joined hands with the cow's brigade. No reason, I just despise them because I despise them, and since that idiot of a leader of my pantheon signed a peace treaty with them, there was not way that could not feel agitated at that. Just think about it. Who the hell is going to willingly work with someone they despise the most? And I will repeat again. I didn't join any hands with Cal's brigade. I was only using them to stall time, and to stop you from doing anything unnecessary. I would have taken that girl away once their job was done. I was even going to return her back once all the devils and fallen would have vanished. But looks like my plan didn't go well at all. Well anyway after all this when I don't have any subordinates and my powers are sealed. Do you really think I am in a mood to do anything stupid? I already learnt my lesson, and I am not going for a revision anytime soon. Um, whatever like you said, I would have found some way to deal with the situation if you would have told her identity or dealt it with some other way. Seems like you are smart enough to not try that. Ha ha ha, I know I may look like one, but I am not an evil god, you know. I just don't like any other races from different factions that's all. Anyway, what punishment you are going to ask for to give me? Hum, aren't you quite sure that I would be the one who will give you the punishment? Stop acting like that, like a person as scummy as you would not know whose side the scale is tilting right now. Act respectfully you bone shit. Don't forget that I still have the chance to give you the punishment. Doesn't matter to me what is going to happen after this. I was prepared to face death after this anyways. After all the one I was trying to kidnap was one of the strongest beings of the world leaving that aside. I saw that you kept my treasure with you earlier huh? Oh, I almost forgot man where the hell did you buy those from? Don't shout in my head you bastard. Anyway leaving that aside, what do you plan on doing now? Hum nothing at the moment. I don't have any subordinates right now. So making plans of wiping the existence of the crows and the bats is out of question. Cossidus is sealed very tightly anyway. So no need to fear about that oh. What happened to Samuel? I release 50% of it, for your information. It is in my care no. Need to worry about that. Say, I have noticed that this place is relatively cold. Is it same throughout the year? Hum, I mean yeah. There are a lot of undead like ghouls and zombies that live here. And you should be knowing that heat is not the best with. So it is always cold here. It's relaxing in a way you know. Once you get used to it that is. Hum, say you want to work for me. Ha, huh, work for you forget it. I may take some steps that might not be in the favor of a faction, but by no means I am gonna betray them. No need to worry it's not that kind of job. Anyway it's not like I'm giving you a choice to begin with. Tetsaya then cut off his mental link with Hades, much to his annoyance as he still wanted to say a few things to Tetsaya. Tetsaya then raised his hand seeing which the discussion that was going on between the others stopped as they looked at Tetsaya curiously. If you don't mind it, would you let me decide his punishment and my compensation while we are at it? Ha! Huh. There is no way we can do that. Not only are you an outsider from a faction but a man as well. There's no way that can be accepted. Rig Dash, sure go ahead. Really? That helps us a lot man before Artemis could ask her fellow gods about it. They were already done with their answers. Which made Artemis stop speaking. And looked at the two other gods with a look which said, You guys are idiots or what? Tetsaya nodded his head and said, Then first about my compensation. I want Hades' territory. As soon as Tetsaya stated his demand not only the four Olympian gods. But the people who came along with him were looking at him with their eyes and mouth open wide, not able to believe what the hell he was saying. WW wait a minute are you saying that you want the whole realm of the dead? Asked Apollon. Yes. Why? Are you planning to take his position of the god of death or something? Asked Zeus with an excited and expectant smile on his face. Huh. No I already have my hands filled with other things. Huh. Then you just want it as a trophy for show off or something like that. Seriously why do all of you men like to show off? Said the man-hater present in the room. Huh. Aren't you the only one amongst us who was showing off her expensive armor and bow? What's the use of those things in a meeting? I, I it's for sell dash. And don't say anything like self-defense or that kind of shit. Like hell could a god know how to summon his weapons from afar. Or store them in a separate dimension. Hum, now that you mention it, isn't it the new armor that you ordered earlier and got it delivered just a few days ago? Said Zeus checking out the armor, her chest. Hum, really it does seem brand new. Huh, said Azazel also checking out the armor. Her chest, Tetsaya who clearly understood what the two idiots were doing, sighed and checked the armor as well, before giving a nod and said, and no, I have no reason to show it off or something. It's for my business which have been quite a bit stable for a while, and can include a new outlet for my funds. We don't have any problems with that right? Roswis. Roswis who was standing behind him, nodded her head affirming him, but soon massaged her temples, thinking that her workload was about to increase very soon. After Tetsaya told his demand there was some negotiation between him and Artemis, who was intent on not letting him have the whole realm of the dead. And in the end, it settled with Tetsaya getting two slash third of the land in the end, though with this two Artemis was not much satisfied. But once Zeus told that this was the final, she stepped down from the argument. Apollon then contacted someone in Mount Olympus, telling them to prepare the necessary documents for the following deal. And once he was done he looked at Tetsaya and said, Well then I hope that you're fine with this. We will contact you in a day or two. So where do you want to finalize the deal? Hum, how about Kuo just give me call before coming I will set up the arrangements according to that. Hum fine, Kuo it is then. Now heading to the second part. What about him? Said Apollon and looked towards Hades. Tetsaya looked at Hades as well and said, Since he has no subordinates right now, all of us can say that his duties are currently not needed alright? Since Cossidus is sealed tightly, and I too, 
would make sure that it remains the same as well. So currently Mount Olympus is not in need of his duties, right? At this all of them look towards Zeus, since it would be his word which will tell whether Hades was needed somewhere or not. Zeus then folded his arms and closed his eyes thinking about something, and once he opened his eyes, he looked back at Hades and said, nope, he is currently free from any work, and since training new Grim Reaper would take a while I don't think that he would be having any duties for quite a while. Tetsaya nodded his head and said, as I thought, then would it be fine for him to work under me, till everything is back to normal. Since he has both the knowledge and experience of living here in the terrain of the region, he would be quite helpful to me. I even allow him to find some new recruits for the Grim Reapers and train them for the job. He will be quite helpful to me in my business here, and you lose nothing in it as well. Of course, since he is a god I would not make him a slave, since it would reflect badly on your pantheon's image. But his powers would be sealed, and he would be working like a normal employee. Of course, that means salary and living facilities as well. Hearing that almost all of them looked at Tetsaya with a surprised look on their faces, but soon a few of them remembered but that even Loki was working under him, and has not been making trouble since then. The three gods then started discussing amongst themselves, and in the end even Hades was asked about this, or he wants some other punishment, if he finds working under Tetsaya disgraceful. But to their surprise Hades nodded his head accepting Tetsaya's offer and said, I am going to be punished anyway. So being in a place that I am already used to is better than being in some prison or getting sealed off somewhere unknown, and since my powers would be getting sealed in either case, it doesn't matter anyway. Hearing his answer the Olympian gods sighed and approved of Hades working under Tetsaya, with his powers being sealed off as his punishment. There were some other conditions added like Hades having no relation with Mount Olympus during the period he was working under Tetsaya, so as to not let sensitive information get out and all. Once they were done the Olympian gods stood up and said their byes to one another. Zeus even invited Azazel to go be him a tour in his region, but because of the work he had to decline the offer. Soon all of them left, and once they were gone, Tetsaya looked at Hades and removed the chains that were binding him, though a small golden chain was wrapped around on of his arms like a bracelet. Well then Hades come let me get you accredited with your new boss. He then looked at Serzages and Azazel who too were now exhausted because of their own deals that they did to get the compensation for the attack in their territory and said, looks like it went well for all of us. Huh? Serzages Fesipum and said, yeah, but we still don't have any links to Cal's brigade, and since you mentioned that they have the Holy Grail, the people who were defeated would be coming back to life soon as well. Sturisk S-I-G-H asterisk, it's really frustrating. Azazel nodded and said, yeah, that it is, but it cannot be helped, all we can do is be prepared, let's. Hold a meet to call some new factions into the treaty. What do you say, Serzages? Serzages gave it a thought, and then glanced at Tetsaya, and made a displeased expression on his face. I think it would be good don't want to have help of his teammates once again. Having more allies no having more safe allies would be better in a situation like what happened recently. If they can do it once, they can do it again as well. Azazel smirked and nodded his head and then said, well then it looks like we are about to get busy. So where should we hold the conference question mark dot 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 you fine with us keeping it in Kuo? And glanced towards Tetsaya. Tetsaya thought about it for a while and said, just tell me when and where, and I will look after the arrangements. Currently I don't know what would happen if there are some spies mixed in your subordinates. Make sure to check them on a regular basis as well. Oh, you agreed rather easily. Huh, well better for us. And yeah, it is quite problematic since a lot of devils who were in support bit old Satan faction, and were hiding, are slowly showing themselves now. Best of luck Serzages. And then teleported away. Seeing him teleport Tobio did the same as well, and was soon followed by Julio, who bowed his head once again to thank Tetsaya, and then went back to heaven. Serzages gave a tired sigh after recalling Azazel saying best of luck to him and slumped his shoulders, imagining how much work it is going to be to check the entire devil territory. I will drag that hold up green head genius out of his lab if he tries to ditch this work on me. And then teleported as well. Tetsaya and Roswis who were the only ones who were left behind along with their new employee, looked at each other and then Tetsaya threw a master ball at Hades, who soon got covered in red light and was then absorbed by the ball. Roswis saw this scene with a deadpan look on his face and asked, was it really necessary? Um nope, but Loki would have been upset if he found out that the one who is going to work under him is not captured by the ball. Oh speaking of capturing, here catch Dash and threw another ball towards Roswis, who caught the ball with a surprised look on her face, thinking that she was about to be sealed in it as well, but nothing like that happened much to her relief. She then glared at Tetsaya, saying why did he scared her to which Tetsaya just laughed and said, there is no way I am going to catch one of my lovers like that. Hearing which Roswas immediately had a deep blush on her face. Anyways, since you didn't have a familiar, like the other take care of that, Samuel is in there after all. H hub by Samuel do you mean the one which you captured a few days ago? Tetsaya just nodded his head in response, making Roswas a bit tense, thinking about the being that was inside the small ball in her hand, but soon snapped out of it once she felt Tetsaya grabbing her hand and saying, anyway, since we are already done with this, how about we take a day off and go on a date? What do you say Rose? Ross was who heard the suggestion was surprised and started to get embarrassed. But before she could say anything, Tetsaya pulled her hand and teleported away, leaving the whole Hades' castle empty. A few days passed by since Tetsaya had his deal with the gods from Mount Olympus, 
which was followed by Ruswas's date, needless to say that it ended with them staying the night at the hotel doing indecent stuff. And no, we are not talking about hand-holding. Ruswas, who had her first time during her first date, felt conflicted since, even though she felt happy about it, the fact that it happened on her first date was still a bit bothering to her. If not for the fact that both of them were enjoying so much and had drunk to the limit they could which led them to that situation. Also the fact that she was being teased by the fellow members of the Shiba residence was not helping her out a bit. Titsaya himself had no problems with it, but still felt that deactivating his alcohol resistance so that he could enjoy was a bad move on his part. He was confident that he had enough self-control but it seemed like a drunk Roswes who had taken off most of her clothes because of feeling hot was too much for his not-so-well sanity. Also taking the fact that she was the one who initiated the kiss which led to all that drove his desires further was also there. Titsaya also got the necessary documents from Mount Olympus about the deal that they made, which were delivered by Apollon and Artemis. Titsaya also invited them for dinner that day, and he to admit seeing Artemis having a fujasm was the best feeling he felt since meeting her. He made sure to record that and send it to her at a later date. Currently Titsaya was on his way to heaven along with Asami and Zenovia. Since the day Roswes got Samuel as her familiar, Asami was made to train against the Dragon Slayer, and during those times her Ascalon got severely damaged by the Dragon Slayer's poison. Zenovia too had his sword damaged very badly when she asked to spar with Hamari who cut the ex Durandal in half, using her flame sword, making her feel guilty about it, and continuously apologizing to Zenovia. Titsaya, who could easily repair the swords, thought that it had been a long time since met Gabriel, and the others decided to let them deal with this, while he would tour around heaven. Since it was his first time going there, Hey Zenovia, have you ever gone to heaven before? Asked a curious Asami looking towards Zenovia. Zenovia, who heard that question looked towards Asami and said, I had a few chances to go there along with my master, when there were some serious missions that we needed to take, but the only places that I've seen there are the reporting rooms where I used to get the job information and other things like that, so my experience is same as yours. Heh, then let's look around once we reach there. I would like to get my extra Randall get repaired as soon as possible, said Zenovia. Hearing her answer Asami snorted and pouted. She then jumped towards Tati and caught his arm and said, Then what about you Tetsaya wanna look around with me? We haven't gone on a date together for quite a while as well. Tetsaya who looked at the excited Asami, smiled a bit and said, Um, fine it's my first time there as well. So sure, let's look around together. Hearing his answer Asami's smile widened as she said, Yeah a date it is then. Zenovia who looked at the couple forming plans about the date remained silent for a while and said, I will just drop my sword by and wait for them to repair it, since I don't think it would be that quick. She too then latched onto Tetsaya's other arm and said, You guys don't mind me accompanying you two, right? Hearing that both of them looked towards her with a slightly surprised look on their faces. Soon Tetsaya thought about what she asked and didn't answer it immediately. He looked towards Asami who stared at Zenovia more, specifically the arm to which she was clinging to. Soon a sly smirk appeared on her face and said, Oh, don't tell me. You want to go on a date with Tetsaya as well. Zenovia hearing that nodded her head and with a slight unnoticeable blush on her cheeks said, Yeah. I want to go on a date. Hearing her answering without the reaction she was hoping for Asami clicked her tongue and said, act a bit shy will you? But soon her smile came back on her face, and she said, but sure, I don't mind at all a double date it is then. Tetsaya who saw both of them having fun smiled and said, don't get overexcited here, or you might get tired there and not enjoy to the fullest. Asami and Zenovia looked at him, and Zenovia nodded her head in approval, but Asami had a teasing smile on her face and said, oh don't worry about me tiring out. You do know how much stamina I have right? which immediately earned her a smack on her head from Tetsaya as he said, also, don't try to corrupt any angel there. I don't want to be the reason for the large increase in fallen angel population. Understood. Isami who rubbed her head because of the pain, nodded her head in approval, and didn't say anything. Tetsaya smiled and stopped walking, once he noticed that he has arrived at the location that they decided to meet at, which was a huge church. Soon three people came there who most likely were their escorts on their way to heaven. Amongst the three of them Tetsaya knew two of them, as they were none other than Julio and Gabriel on the other hand, there was another beautiful woman, who most likely was in her twenties, wearing a nun's outfit. She was someone that Tetsaya have not met earlier, but by direction of her eyes, which was looking towards Zenovia, who in turn was looking away with her face totally covered in sweat, made him aware of who might the new lady be. Once the three of them were close enough to Tetsaya, and the other two Julio immediately greeted the three of them, while Zenovia started to fidget around more on seeing the new woman's gaze. Tetsaya too saw something different as he noticed that there was slight nervousness on Gabriel's face. He was about to use telepathy to know what she was thinking, but she immediately said, don't read my mind, please Tetsaya, with a slight blush on her face. Seeing that the most powerful detection ability, the women's intuition had already perceived his actions, Tetsaya didn't use his telepathy to respect what she asked for, it was not because of the fact that the blushing Gabriel was too adorable to look at which made him stop. Definitely not. Seeing that the atmosphere turned quite awkward between them, Julio took charge, and introduced himself to the two new people whom he met for the first time. Nice to meet you all, and even though Tetsaya Sen already know me, for the two ladies who are meeting me for the first time, let me introduce myself. I am Julio Gesualdo, a reincarnated angel. Nice to meet you. Ah, where are my manners? Let me introduce myself as well. I am Griselda Curta, a reincarnated angel as well. Also you may have noticed it already, but I am Zenovia's guardian as well. She then looked at Zenovia and with a smile on her face said, let's have a talk later, alright? After all, it's been a long time since we met. 
Zenobia, who heard the sweet words coming out of Griselda's mouth, gulped her saliva and reluctantly nodded her head. After all of them introduced themselves to each other, Gabriel opened a portal to heaven and soon all of them were in front of a golden gate. Seeing the majestic golden gate and scenery around it which looked like they were above the clouds, Esami had her mouth open wide and said, It really feels like we are in heaven. It's truly beautiful hearing her say those words, Gabriel giggled making Esami a bit embarrassed. Gabriel then looked at her and said, Thank you for the compliment. Soon Julio who had gone towards the gate came back and said, I have made their arrival registered, so we are allowed to go now. Gabriel nodded and then walked towards the gate which slowly opened causing a dramatic effect. Titsaya looked at the gate for a while and had to admit that the entrance of the heaven was truly something that he had imagined that heaven would be like. He then increased his pace a bit seeing that the others were far ahead of him. Once he reached there Griselda looked at him and said, I will guide these two to the place where they could get their swords repaired. Hearing that both Asami and Zenobia nodded their heads though Zenobia had a frightened expression on her face. Titsaya nodded his head and said, Well then you two let's look around after you are done with giving your swords for the repair, alright? The two of them nodded their heads with a smile on their faces, and then started following Griselda. Titsaya then looked at Gabriel and Julio, but soon realized that Julio had already gone, and now it was only Gabriel and him left behind. Meanwhile behind some building, Julio who was looking at Titsaya and Gabriel from a distance, had a cup of coffee and some snacks to go along with it in front of him and thought, Do forgive me for not accompanying you Titsaya, and that too after all that you did for the children of the orphanage. However Michael Sama has asked me to do this for Gabriel Sama and heaven, though that it is for the appearance's sake now that I think about it. He then formed a small magic circle near his ear and said, Michael Sama, all the preparations are done, those two are now alone. Good job Julio Kun, keep an eye on the surroundings and make sure no obstacle comes in their path. I have worked very hard to make my sister realize her feelings, without getting her fall. Don't worry Michael Sama. I will do my best to prevent anything that could ruin this opportunity for Gabriel Sama. And then stopped putting the magic in Thegic circle, making it disappear. Titsaya who was left alone with Gabriel, looked at her and saw that she was her acting a bit flustered. He wanted to know what was wrong with her. But knowing that she had asked him to not use telepathy on her he stopped and asked, Is everything fine with you Gabriel? Question mark, dot, 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 you are acting a bit flustered. Gabriel jolted a bit when she heard what Titsaya said that and looked towards him, only to find him looking at her with a bit of worry on her face. Titsaya who noticed her blushing a bit had a wild guess about what was happening. But he decided to wait a bit, until he was absolutely sure about it. No don't worry about me I'm fine, said Gabriel waving her hands in denial. Titsaya who saw her acting like that was not the slightest bit convinced, but still decided to go with what she said, since he didn't want to put her in a tight spot. He gave a sigh and with a small smile on his face said, All right, if you say so. Do you mind showing me around here just like how we did when we first met? Gabriel who saw Titsaya's small but reassuring smile, stopped acting flustered and started to calm down a bit. Soon a small smile appeared on her face as well, remembering the first time when she met Titsaya back in Vatican. She chuckled remembering those days, and with her usual innocent look on her face, moved her hand towards Titsaya and said, then let's hurry up, this place is very big to explore, you know. And showed a wide smile. Titsaya seeing her smile smiled as well and held her hand and said, let's go then. Gabriel nodded her head feeling happy that Titsaya was looking happy as well. Though she didn't notice that there was a slight blush that appeared on her cheeks. She then pulled Titsaya's hand lightly and started guiding him around the place with enthusiasm. Titsaya who was being dragged by the enthusiastic Seraph gave a helpless smile remembering time she did the same with him and Asia back in Vatican. He then stopped on his path and gave a slight tug to her unfeeling which she stopped as well, and looked at him with a curious look on her face. Titsaya who was slightly behind her wails and stood beside her, and then interlocked his fingers with her making the seraph a bit surprised by that action. He then squeezed her hand a bit making her get out of her trance and said, There is no need to hurry up let's enjoy all this slowly, we can just do this again at a later date, if we have not explored the whole thing, alright? Gabriel who was a bit embarrassed by Titsaya's sudden move, looked down and nodded her head shyly, seeing which Titsaya forgot to breathe for a moment. He then took a deep breath to calm himself a bit and said, Shall we continue then? To which Gabriel replied with a smile and a blush which seemed to have appeared once again on her face. She too then held Titsaya's hands a bit tightly and started walking around showing him around once again. Thought this time, instead of the enthusiastic atmosphere that was around them earlier was replaced by a sweet one. One which no one among the people who were looking at them wanted to disturb and only wanted to enjoy looking at the two of them. While the Seraph and the human were walking hand in hand, they stopped at various shops that were set up in the heaven as well as at the other facilities built there. Titsaya who noticed that the places that they were visiting were usually empty that it was Michael's scheme, but didn't told about it to Gabriel, who was actually enjoying such an atmosphere. Hum, if she doesn't have any problem with it, then what problems do I have? At a distance Julio who had a burger in his hand was looking at the two of them through a pair of binoculars while also informing the some other people through a walkie-talkie. So you guys are trying to set the two of them up. Suddenly Julio heard a voice and flinched since he didn't notice the person approach him because of being focused on Tetsaya and Gabriel. He turned around and saw Asami standing there with a burger in her hand as well which she bought from a nearby shop. Julio also noticed Griselda and Zenobia talking to each other though it was only Griselda who was talking scolding. While Zenobia was sitting in front of her and apologizing for turning into a devil and not contacting her. He he looked at the two of them with a sweat drop, before turning back to Asami and said, Miss Hayadu, yes what you said is indeed true, so can I ask you to please give them a some alone time for now, we promise to arrange the best experience for you to sightsee once this is done. Asami thought for a while and sat down on the seat in front of Julio's and said, I don't know man, 
I need to ask this with the squad first, wait a minute. She formed a communication magic circle near her ear, and called someone. Um, hello Kurumi-san, Asami here, yeah. You see the people here in heaven are asking me to not interfere in their attempt to set Tetsuya and Gabriel-san up. So what's the decision? Kurumi who was currently bathing along with the others nodded as she heard the info from Asami. Wait a minute dash. She then looked at the others and said, Asami told me that the people in heaven asked her to not interfere in their attempt to set Tetsuya and Gabriel-chan. Anyone have problems with it? Hearing that all of them just relax back in the bath and shake their heads in denial. Even Miyuki and Asia didn't say anything to oppose this as Miyuki had a favorable impression of Gabriel. While to Asia, she was her first female friend. Seeing that Kurumi nodded her head and said, no problems here. Do as you want. I'm fine. Bye. The magic circle then disappeared, and Asami looked towards Julio and said, No problems on a side. I will be expecting VIP treatment all right, Julio-san. Julio nodded with a smile on his face, feeling grateful for her understanding. Asami smiled as well, and then held something in her hand and pointed her finger at it and said, Julio-san, can I get an limited edition extra large deluxe chocolate parfait? With a smile on her face. Immediately the smile on Julio's face disappeared and he thought, Why do I have a feeling that my this month's salary is in a big danger? Julio just nodded his head with a dumbfounded expression on his face, seeing which Asami smiled and called the angel who was working as a waitress, and ordered her parfait plus some extras. Looking at Asami with his lips twitching Julio thought, I will settle this with Michael-sama later. Titsaya and Gabriel were currently in the middle of a forest made up of various types, magical consisting both common and legendary trees. Titsaya looked around and then used his magic to search the area nearby, to know where their destination might be. He then looked at Gabriel and asked, Are we going to the lake? Gabriel looked at him with a smile on her face, and nodded her head and said, Yeah, I always wanted to go there with a friend of mine, comma, dot, 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 or is it that you don't like lakes? Gabriel who was giving him with puppy eyes, made him totally speechless. He wasn't going to deny that in the first place. But her looking at him like that even made accepting it to take long. Instinctively he placed his hand on top of her head and said, It's not like that Gabriel, I would love to go to the lake with you, so please don't make that kind of face. It's bad for my heart, she can easily rival office when she is in the mood of being spoiled and cute to see, and believe me, that is enough to kill all the cultured people in the whole multiverse, because of excessive loss of blood through nosebleeds. Thought Tetsaya. Gabriel's face brightened up once again, and she clenched at Tetsaya's arm in excitement. Thanks Tetsaya you are the best. And then once again started pulling him a bit wanting to reach the lake faster. Soon both of them stood in front of the lake, whose water could be considered as the purest that Tetsaya has ever seen. Tetsaya walked towards the lake and crouched down near the edge, and took a handful of water from it. He then stared the water in his hand and said, this lake is enchanted with purification, right? Gabriel who heard Tetsaya answer, nodded her enthusiastically and said, yes father made that lake here. And just like you said, there is a purification enchantment placed on the lake itself. Not to mention this water has great medicinal properties, as well. It's really effective, since it let us help in healing the injured. When they are a lot of people who got I could jury G the battle though. That sort of situation have not happened since the Great War. Tetsaya nodded his head listening to the info she was giving him. Gabriel then walked to the edge of the lake as well, and sat down on the grass, while immersing her legs in the lake. She then looked at Tetsaya and patted the ground beside her, gesturing him to sit beside her. Tetsaya folded up his pants a bit and then sat beside her. Once he sat down his legs started to feel very comfortable, as the lake started to show its magic, and started to deal with the stress that has been accumulated from all the walking. Gabriel looked at his surprised face and said, It's great, right? Tetsaya looked at her who had a smile on her face, and nodded his head without saying anything. Seeing her having a comfortable expression on her face along with the peaceful surroundings, made him smile and think that Gabriel was looking absolutely beautiful at that moment. Seeing his expression Gabriel blushed a bit not knowing why, but still averted her eyes, and no matter how much she tried, she was not able to look directly into Tetsaya's eyes. Not understanding why that was happening, Gabriel decided to distract her mind a bit and asked, You um yeah Ayano Tetsaya, are you feeling hungry? Tetsaya who got surprised by her suddenly yelling was about to answer. But before he was able to Gabriel, took out a basket out of nowhere and said, Then please have this. And shoved the basket in front of Tetsaya. Tetsaya stared at the basket for a while before taking it from her hands and said, Thank you Gabriel. Did you made this yourself? Gabriel vigorously nodded her head with an expectant look in her eyes and asked, W will you eat it with me? Tetsaya nodded his head with a smile on his face, and placed the basket on his lap, and then opened the lid and asked, Then recommend me something, since you are the one who took the effort in making it. Gabriel who heard that narrowed her eyes and placed her hand on her chin, thinking about what should she give it to Tetsaya first. After doing some very hard mental work, she finally placed her hand inside the basket, making Tetsaya sigh in relief, since he started to wonder how many things has she prepared. Soon she took out a plate which was much larger compared to the basket itself. Here, try these stuffed pockets then and took one of the stuffed pockets from the pile that was on the plate, and gave it to Tetsaya, after wrapping it in a napkin. Tetsaya took it from her hands and saw her taking one for herself as well. But instead of eating it, she was looking intently at Tetsaya. Seeing her acting so passionate, Tetsaya chuckled since this was the first time he has seen such a look on her face. He then took a bite, seeing which Gabriel gulped her saliva, and waited for him to answer. Once Tetsaya was done eating, he looked at the pocket in front of it, checking out the stuffing, inside it and said, Gabriel, you used sugar instead of salt, and looked at her with a helpless smile. After Tetsaya pointed out her mistake, he was busy trying to cheer up the saddened serif, which was not working at all. He then patted her head and said, don't worry Gabriel, it is just a basic mistake that anyone can do. 
I mean if it weren't for the sugar they would have turned to be very good. Gabriel looked at him with a curious look on her face and asked, Really? You are not lying right? Titsaya shook his head and said, No, I am not lying at all, even I had done this mistake sometimes. Hearing that Gabriel would in her eyes and asked, Even you do mistakes Titsaya. Titsaya nodded his head and removed his hand from top of her, making her look towards the hand with a dissatisfied expression on his face. Even if I not look like it, I still am a human, you know. Gabriel then widened her eyes as if realizing something and said, Uh, yeah, Titsaya is a human as well. I just realized it, and looked at him with a smile on her face. But then suddenly Tetsaya grabbed her cheeks and pulled them while asking, What do you mean by that Gabriel? Do you mean to say that I am not a human? Nah, adon mia tha, aaraloi, foiv si aaya. No, I don't mean that. I apologize. Forgive me, Tetsaya. Tetsaya then released Gabriel's cheeks who immediately cupped them and started to massage them while looking at Tetsaya with some tears at the corner of her eyes and said, Tetsaya, you are very mean. It hurts, you know. Tetsaya shrugged his shoulders and said, It's your fault for saying that I am not a human. So just think of it as your punishment. Gabriel looked away with a pout, noticing which Tetsaya chuckled, which made the seraph look at him with an expression which said, What is so funny about it? Tetsaya then flicked her forehead making her groan in pain once again. Hey, why did Joe dash? But she stopped midway once she saw Tetsaya take something else out of the basket she gave him earlier. Soon Tetsaya took out a plate filled with sandwiches. He then took one of them and ate a bit from it and said, Yup, they are good. Looks like you didn't mess up on this one. Gabriel puffed her chest and said, HMPH, after all I'm Seraph you know. I don't mess things up that much. Means that you mess things up on a regular basis. Huh? Thought Tetsaya, but decided to keep it to himself. He then felt Gabriel poking his cheek with her finger and looked towards her, who when noticed that Tetsaya had turned around, pulled her hand back and opened her mouth. Um, Tetsaya looked at the beautiful Seraph who was opening her mouth cutely for a while before he brought the sandwich that was in his hand towards her mouth and thought, she won't fall because of an indirect kiss, right? Gabriel then took a bit from the sandwich Tetsaya was holding, and Tetsaya made sure to look at her intently to stop her, if she started to turn into a fallen. Um, yes, they are good, said Gabriel having a bright smile on her face. She then snatched the sandwich from Tetsaya's hand and said, now my turn open wide Tetsaya. Tetsaya without hesitating a bit took her up on the offer and opened his mouth. Gabriel then fed him the sandwich with a happy smile on her face. Once both of them were done with their lunch which I included with both of them feeding each other except for the coffee jelly, which solely belonged to Tetsaya without baby discussion about the topic both of them decided to see some other places. Tetsaya stretched his body and asked, so, is there somewhere else you want to go? Since there was a place like this which you wanted to go with a friend, there must be other places like this as well, right? Gabriel pondered about what Tetsaya said for a while and then looked at Tetsaya and said, There are a lot of places that I want to go together with you, but not many of them are here in heaven so will you go together with me some other time? Tetsaya stared silently at the embarrassed Seraph and once again confirmed that she had office level of cuteness. He nodded his head and then moved his hand towards her, who immediately held it with a happy smile on her face. From some distance Julio, whose wallet had suffered a major blow Joe and Asami, who was now covered with a lot of accessories made by the locals here in heaven, were looking towards the forest that both Tetsaya and Gabriel entered a while back with a curious expression on their face. Don't you think that they have taken a lot of time there? And why did someone put a barrier at the entrance to block us from going there? Asami remained silent for a while but then looked towards the forest with a serious look on her face and said, they must be having sex. Julia who heard that looked towards the brown head girl with his eyes widened in shock, and then looked towards the forest with the same expression. He then formed a magic circle near his ear and called Michael. Hello Michael Sama, uh, yeah everything is fine on our end though we might have a small problem um. It looks like both of them are indulging in Indec AHHH forget that they are coming out now. He then saw both of them coming out with a smile on their faces, and sighed in relief, seeing that Gabriel had not fallen. Heh, that's exactly the smile one makes after having a wonderful fucking session. Hearing that Julia looked at her with a deadpan look on her face and said, You need some help in your mental department. But Asami didn't say anything, and just showed him a middle finger without even liking towards him, making him twitch his lips. Both of them then looked around a bit more, and then Gabriel suggested to go and meet Michael, since he would be happy to meet Tetsaya Barswell. Tetsaya nodded, and Gabriel formed a magic circle below them, and soon both of them appeared in a huge building. Tetsaya then looked around and noticed that the building that they were in was big enough to house an entire army in there. This way Tetsaya, said Gabriel who started pulling him. Tetsaya Selenki followed the excited Seraph, and soon both of them came in front of a room. Gabriel gave a knock on the door, and then entered inside without waiting for any response. Seeing that Tetsaya wanted for a couple of seconds before he too entered the room. In there he saw Gabriel happily talking to her brother, telling him about how both of them spent the time together. Seeing that Tetsaya has entered the room both of them looked towards him, and Michael bowed his head a bit to which Tetsaya did the same. Long time no see Michael. Yes, long time no see sensei. I hope that you enjoyed your sightseeing here. Tetsaya smiled and said, yeah, my tour around here was very good and pleasant. I really like eat it. Heading the praise both the seraphs puffed their chests proudly. Michael then looked at Gabriel and asked, do you mind brewing us some tea? Gabriel shook her head with a smile on her face and said, not at all brother Michael. Just wait Tetsaya. I will make the tea very very delicious. With a determined look on her face, Tetsaya chuckled seeing that and said, yeah, yeah, best of luck. 
Hearing which Gabriel snorted and walked out of the room while sticking her tongue out towards Tetsaya. Once both him and Michael were there in the room, Michael immediately got in doggies and started to apologize before following them. Needless to say it was very tiring for Tetsaya to calm down his fan, who was berating himself like that Tetsaya was able to calm down Michael, before Gabriel came back with tea and snacks. She then placed them on the table and served the two men who were sitting on the sofas. She too then took her seat beside Tetsaya, and looked at him with an expectant gaze. Tetsaya who noticed her lifted his teacup and took a sip from it, and nodded his head in satisfaction, seeing which Gabriel smiled happily and sipped on her tea as well. You were dot dot hot 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 hot, shouted Gabriel who sipped in the hot tea a bit too hastily because of her excitement. Tetsaya then took out some water from his storage, and made her drink it to calm the serif down. Jeez, you really are too energetic for your own good you know. Gabriel gulped down the water and said, hmm, I am full of energy you know, so it can't be helped. Tetsaya looked at the cheerfully smiling serif and clicked her forehead causing her groan in pain. Meanwhile Michael used his magic to clean up the tea that was spilled by his sister, and was happy to see her acting cheerfully with Tetsaya. Tetsaya then realized something and asked, Ah, what about Asami and Zenovia? Are their swords repaired? Michael immediately paced his cup down, and with a sincere expression on his face said, Don't worry sensei, their swords are still being repaired, and currently both of them are in care of Griselda. You don't have to worry about anything. Tetsaya shook his hand and said, No no, it is you who should be worried and make sure to not let Asami on her own. Or there might be a possibility of sudden rise in the population of fallen angels. The room turned totally silent as Michael stared at Tetsaya. Soon he formed a magic circle near his ear and said in a serious tone, Julio don't. Let the red dragon empress out of your sight and make sure to not fall yourself. Gabriel then looked at Tetsaya and asked, Nini Tetsaya. How will the Red Dragon Empress increase the number of fallen angels? Is it one of her abilities? Tetsaya looked towards the curious seraph and shook his head and said, It's not her ability. It's the principle of her life. Her principles are so strong that the moment she would be turned to an angel using your brave saint cards she would fall. Gabriel nodded still looking a bit curious and asked, But what will she do to make angels fall? Tetsaya thought for a while to explain her in a way so as to not corrupt her, and after thinking of an answer he decided to speak, but still used his magic to prevent her fall just in case she will tell other about her fantasies, and those are way too effective against you angels. Gabriel once again nodded her head, but was still curious as Tetsaya didn't specify it. She just shrugged her shoulders not thinking much about it, since the only thing that she need to know was that to keep the girl away from the angels when she is telling her fantasies. Tetsaya and the Seraphs talked to each other for a while, before the rest of the Seraphs came in as well, and started discussing matters regarding the Cow's Brigade and the Alliance. Alliance. Tetsaya also warned them to be careful as there might be a possibility for heaven to be attacked as well, since Underworld was attacked not too long ago, and such a thing might happen here as well. The other Seraphs just nodded to his warning, except for Michael who listened to him carefully, since the chances of something to happen were higher, if Tetsaya was the one warning them, though it was a bit of his inner fanboy, which made him hear to Tetsaya's words seriously. Soon the other two Seraphs went back to do their work, while Michael and Gabriel were still there, since they completed their work a bit earlier, to not get interrupted when Tetsaya was there in heaven. Tetsaya looked at his watch and saw that a considerable amount of time has passed by, and it was nearly night. Michelle then looked at his own clock, which signifies the time there in heaven and said, it's pretty late, I will ask someone to prepare a meal right away. He then stared at the couple sitting in front of him, and with a smile on his face said, Sensei, why don't you two go and inform your companions about it? Might as well enjoy the night sky here in the heaven, which is a very beautiful sight if I say so myself. Gabriel nodded and stood up from her seat and stretched her body a bit, sitting there for a long time, and discussing about various things that were currently happening, made her a bit tired, and she too was in the mood to get some fresh air. Meanwhile Tetsaya just informed Asami with his telepathy, but still stood up from his seat and nodded his head. Gabriel then led him out of the huge building that there were in, and a sight even more majestic than the one he saw on the first heaven welcomed him. Tetsaya was once again amazed by how beautiful the heaven was made by the god of Bible, and took some points from here in order to maintain his own dimension. WHCH was currently used by Samuel, and the other familiars from time to time. Even even Tiamat used that dimension to keep some of her treasure, since her cave was already full. Gabriel who was beside him, glanced towards Tetsaya and smiled a bit seeing him a bit excited on seeing the surroundings. She then started to think of the things that they did today, and felt happy that Tetsaya spent some time with her, since most of the people here in heaven were quite busy because of their low numbers, and her big status among the angels, kept many of the angels to stay a bit away from her. She then slowly looked down towards Tetsaya's hands. She then looked away trying to act distracted and slowly moved her own hand towards Tetsaya's and slowly held it. Tetsaya who felt his hand being grabbed by Gabriel looked at her her, and with a small smile on his face asked, what happened? Feeling happy, and gave her hands a light squeeze. Gabriel looked at him and nodded her head with a smile on her face and said, hey Tetsaya. Hum. She then inched closer to him and gave a peck on his lips and said, thank you for today. Tetsaya who received a sudden kiss from Gabriel, smiled as well and said, you did the same thing back when we first met Rumiba. Gabriel nodded her head and said, and I remember but this time I know that why the girl kissed the boy. And a slight blush appeared on her cheeks. If you forgot then it is in CH69 near the end, Tetsaya who heard her words chuckled to himself, and after looking at her blushing cheeks for a while thought, 
Looks like I was correct to use preventive measures to ensure that she did not fall to Tsaya, then pulled her towards him, and returned gave a peck on her lips as well. Gabriel who didn't expect that looked away since she was feeling embarrassed by what he did, but still didn't let go of Tetsaya's hands, and held it even tighter. Tetsaya looked at the seraph who was acting like that, and patted her back and thought, really cute Gabriel and Tetsaya stayed together with their hands being held by each other. Gabriel was feeling embarrassed in the blush on her cheeks, and was finding it hard to start the conversation with Tetsaya. Tetsaya on the other hand was just smiling looking at the surroundings and waiting for Gabriel to calm herself a bit, he had already understood what Michael's goal was, and was not that surprised by Gabriel's sudden confession, and just accepted it. He turned his head towards Gabriel who was still embarrassed and asked, if you don't want to, then we can just stay here, instead of going to have dinner with everyone, you know. Gabriel remained silent for a while, but soon gave a slight nod and said in a low voice, you will stay with me, right? And gripped his hand a bit tighter. Tetsaya just chuckled and pulled her in his embrace and said, of course, and then formed a barrier around himself to prevent others from coming near them. He then formed a bench and star down on it along with Gabriel, who was totally red from being suddenly hugged by Tetsaya. She then looked up at Tetsaya, who was looking back at her with a small smile on his face, and then once again buried her head in his chest and said in a muffled tone, Tetsaya, Tetsaya just caressed her back in response to which Gabriel gave a slight nod. She then took a deep breath and said, I, 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 but was not able to finish her sentence. Don't worry, Gabriel, just say it. I will wait for how much long you want to prepare yourself. Gabriel hugged Tetsaya even tighter on hearing his words and said, Thank you. She then remained motionless for a few minutes, with her face buried in Tetsaya's chest, who was busy patting her back, while also storing away the information about the design of the heaven they were in as he wanted to take some ideas from the place, and modify his dimension accordingly. After a while Gabriel suddenly looked up at Tetsaya's face, and grabbed his face with her hands, and made him look at her and said, TT Tetsaya I I L I L O O O Gabriel, who was finally able to speak but her tongue midway, and had a pained and embarrassed look on her face, and immediately hid her face with her hands. Tetsaya who was suddenly pulled by Gabriel chuckled seeing her acting like that hearing which the embarrassed Seraph started headbutting his chest intensely air yeah, intensely, her headbutts were literally making shockwaves cracking the nearby floor. Tetsaya who was chuckling while undergoing the cute headbutting session, hugged her tightly and said, don't be that embarrassed Gabriel lad. Me say it if you are not able to. Gabriel then stopped headbutting Tetsaya and waited in anticipation while still hiding her face with her hands. Tetsaya then pushed her out of his embrace and grabbed her hands which were hiding her face and looked directly at the blushing seraph and said, I love you Gabriel. Gabriel became motionless for a while, but soon her eyes widened in surprise and she started blinking them. After which an embarrassed expression appeared on her face and with a nod she said, I love you too Tetsaya, and then looked at him with her slightly wet eyes. She then leaned in closer towards him, seeing which Tetsaya let go of her hand, and cupped her cheeks, which were totally red from embarrassment. Tetsaya then started to close in as well, seeing which Gabriel closed her eyes and soon felt something touching her lips. Gabriel who for the first time felt being kissed, was a bit surprised and thought that it felt a bit different from the time when she was the one who initiated it. Tetsaya soon let go of her lips and said, you know Gabriel, you are not going to fall right now, since I am making sure of it. She nodded her head with a slightly dazed expression, not fully understanding what Tetsaya meant. A mischievous smoke then appeared on Tetsaya's face as he caressed her lips with his fingers, while using his other hand to support her already powerless body. Gabriel who felt her lips being caressed by Tetsaya's fingers, wasn't sure what he was doing, but it somehow felt both nice and hot to her. Instinctively she opened her mouth a bit and licked Tetsaya's finger, seeing which Tetsaya got slightly surprised, since it somehow looked absolutely hot to him. The gap between Thur innocent and this state is just too much. He then once again placed his lips on top of hers, and once again started kissing her, but this time instead of small and simple kiss. It was a passionate French kiss, which took Gabriel by surprise, making her eyes widen in shock only to melt into a pleasure a few moments later. She got so overwhelmed by the pleasure that at one point she was the one who started to take lead, surprising Tetsaya who thought, the saying that those who are innocent on the outside, are usually wilder in the bed, was true I guess. Soon Gabriel stopped kissing Tetsaya and moved her head back, clearly showing the bridge of saliva connecting their tongues, and the passionate yet confused look on her face. A magic circle then appeared in her hand, and immediately after that both of them got covered by a bright light, and got teleported somewhere else. The next instant both of them appeared in some sort of room, which from the looks of it was loudly saying to perform reproductive activities here. He looked at Gabriel with a questioning gaze which was totally ignored by the pleasure-struck Seraph, who pushed Tetsaya on the nearby bed. I am feeling hot Tetsaya. I don't know what is happening to me. Brother Michael told me that if I felt something like this when you are near me, then just teleport to this room and let Tetsaya treat me, said Gabriel while getting on the bed as well and walking towards Tetsaya on both her hand and knees. Seeing her like that not even taking a moment little Tetsaya woke up in full glory, threatening to rip off the pants that he was wearing, while Tetsaya himself gulped his saliva, and the only thought that came to his mind was, looks like it is time to corrupt her innocence, he then flipped her body, and now was on top of her, and decided to start treating her. Gabriel who was suddenly flipped by Tetsaya was a bit surprised, but as soon as she gazed back at Tetsaya's eyes which were looking back at her, made the feeling hotter than before. She then instinctively moved her hand behind Tetsaya's neck and pulled him towards herself and started kissing him again as this was the only thing that she knew to appease her hotness. Tetsaya too started kissing her back, but also started to massage her chest, which was still covered by the soft cloth. Feeling the obstruction in his way Tetsaya destroyed the clothes she was wearing, which was totally unnoticed by the Seraph, 
who was busy fighting against Tetsaya's tongue. Tetsaya then once again started fondling her chest, making Gabriel widen her eyes in surprise, before she started moaning in pleasure. After the first moan came out, she immediately put her hand on top of her mouth feeling embarrassed. But Tetsaya grabbed her hands and said, Don't worry Gabriel, you can moan as much as you want there is no one here, and no one except for me will hear you. Plus those moans are hella erotic thought Tetsaya. Gabriel then lowered her eyes a bit and said BB but I will be embarrassed if you hear those kind of sounds. Tetsaya was faintly able to catch what she was saying as she was whispering in a very low tone. Tetsaya then caressed her cheek and said but I want to be the only one who will see that side of you but if you don't want to then that's fine as well. It's not like I am gonna force you. Gabriel who heard what Tetsaya said looked back at him and found him looking at her with the usual caring smile that he always had for her. She smiled as well and took the hands which were holding hers and placed them on top of her chest and said, go on I am ready but please be gentle. She said the last parts with a slightly scared and embarrassed tone, which somehow made Tetsaya motionless for a moment. He nodded his head approving to what Gabriel asked him and thought, all right, slightly rough on her, and sat up and placed Gabriel on his lap and started fondling her boobs while also giving her nipples a pinch from time to time. Ahhhh Tetsaya not this rough moan Gabriel. But all Tetsaya focused on was the moan, and totally ignored the words that came along with it. He then saw Gabriel moving her hips a bit while sitting on his lap possible feeling a bit irritated down there. He then moved one of his hand towards her crotch, which immediately shocked Gabriel, who tried to struggle her way out of Tetsaya's grasp. But Tetsaya too was famous for not letting his prey get away from him. Tetsaya I I I S H H don't speak, just go with the flow. After all I'm treating you so you have to do as I say. Eh I have to do as you say. Tetsaya moved her head towards himself and placed his lips on top of hers, and started sucking hers, to which she responded by sticking her tongue out. You have to, or else I will have to be a bit mean and make you follow my lead. Hearing that Gabriel trembled a bit and nodded her head cutely like a good child, Tetsaya smiled and patted her head and said, don't worry. I won't do mean things to you probably. He then started to play with her crotch, much to Gabriel's surprise, who once again wanted to move his hand away, but stopped once she remembered that she had to follow Tetsaya's orders. She looked back at him with embarrassment and said, Tetsaya, don't touch me there ahhh Tetsaya, who pinched her nipples in the middle of her, saying something earned a moan from her and asked, where should I not touch you Gabriel-chan? Tell me is it here, pinching her nipple, or here, pinching her clit? At both the times Gabriel gave out a pleasure-filled moan and looked at Tetsaya with some tears at the corner of her eyes and said, down there at my vagina don't touch me there, and her whole face turned red out of embarrassment. Tetsaya seeing her acting like that started wanting to tease her a bit more. He then placed her back on the bed and got on top of her, and started to use some vibrations to pleasure the seraph even more. Gabriel who received the sudden increase in pleasure, couldn't help but moan and look towards Tetsaya with slight anger and lust to make her feel like that. Tetsaya seeing that smoked and asked, sorry Gabriel-chan, but your request has been denied, and once again started fiddling with her clit while also sucking on her breasts. Gabriel who was now denied of her pussy being left alone, hugged Tetsaya's head tightly while asking him to not suck on her tits. Tetsaya who felt that Gabriel was totally prepared, stopped fingering her and said, shall we start the main treatment Gabriel? Oh, and this time you have choice. Gabriel who was now totally flushed, looked at Tetsaya with her breathing slightly ragged, and nodded her head. Tetsaya nodded his head as well and moved towards her legs, and opened them widely to get a clear view of her pussy. Gabriel immediately tried to close her legs, but Tetsaya already stopped her from doing so using his telekinesis and said, Now now, Gabriel, don't be that hasty, and let me have a good look. And clicked her clitoris making her moan a bit. Once he was done inspecting her body positioned in a totally embarrassed position, Tetsaya took out his member which was already erect, thanks to the erotically innocent erisant seraph. Gabriel who finally saw the huge thing between Tetsaya's legs, instinctively understood that it will enter inside her, and felt a bit worried thinking, whether it will fit inside her or not. Tetsaya then positioned his dick in front of her pussy, and rubbed it a bit covering it in the juices that were coming out of her. He then looked towards Gabriel and asked, ready, who nodded her head back although with some hesitation. Tetsaya just gave a nod and then pissed her in one go without much problem, since he knew that the seraph was strong enough to not feel that the pain from that though pleasure was a different thing as Gabriel's back arched upward in response, seeing which Tetsaya hugged her and mowed her sit in his lap and started moving without asking for her consent. Ahhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhh
who gave a moan and arched back a bit. Me too ah, said Tatsuya who came inside her and laid back on on the bed, and embraced the seraph who was lying beside him. He then poked her cheek a bit wanting to tell her to sleep, but all of a sudden his body was rolled over, and it was now Gabriel on top of him with lust and love evident in her eyes. Oh well looks like it is going to be a long night, thought Tatsuya ready to take on the seraph. Three days later the door of the room they have been in opened, and a happy looking Gabriel came out with Tatsuya, with her hands wrapped around his. Tatsuya who was looking up towards the sky thought innocent girls are way too wild. Tatsuya and Gabriel then decided to go and meet the other two girls who came with him, and was surprised to see Asami and Zenobia being trained by Griselda, who had a smile on her face. He also noticed that both of their swords were repaired and improved, and were sparring against each other, though there was a difference between the expressions of the two girls. While Zenobia had a troubled look on her face and was drenched in sweat, Isami on the other hand, was simply playing with her opponent with a relaxed smile on her face. Drake isn't this peaceful. I couldn't agree more to that statement partner. No overpowered strict trainers. No old grudge bearing hags. No training till dropping dead. This is the life. Yeah, this is the life. The Longinus and its holder were having a pleasant conversation with each other while having their fight against Zenobia. Griselda on the other hand, had an appreciative look, seeing that both the girls were quite capable. Zenobia who had her ex Durandal in one hand and Excalibur Destruction in the other was attacking Asami without any break and feeling frustrated. Since she was not able to land a solid hit on her, and if not for the barrier surrounding them, the shockwaves created by her attacks could have damaged a major part of the heaven they were in. Tetsuya and Gabriel wailed towards Griselda who was looking at the fight, but once she noticed the two of them, she bowed her head and greeted them. Gabriel just waved her hand and was now back to her usual self, thought Tetsuya still decided to create some fail safes, just in case her switch gets flipped and she accidentally falls down. Being cut by Azazel was the last thing Tetsuya wanted after all. So what are the two of them doing for the past three days? Asked Tetsuya looking towards the woman wearing the nun outfit. And the two of them were waiting for you to return, but when the two of you didn't show any signs of coming. I decided to train them in the meantime, since their swords were repaired as well but, I have to say the Red Dragon Empress does have a skill with the sword. Haha, <laughs> well it certainly took a lot of effort to teach her from scratch, but still the results were good. Said Tetsuya remembering the days he T-O-R-T-U-R asterisk C-O-U-G-H asterisk asterisk C-O-U-G-H asterisk trained Asami, who had tears of sorrow happiness, coming out on being trained by him. Hearing that Griselda looked at Tetsuya looked at his body intently, and once she was done checking him out, she nodded her head and said, you must be quite a good swordsman yourself, seeing that your form is very complex to deal with as well. Tetsuya then noticed that Zenobia started to prepare for a big attack, and started charging her energy in her two swords, making the entire field inside the barrier tremble under the pressure of her power. Meanwhile Asami just had a serious look on her face, as she focused on the swords in Zenobia's hands, and started to charge up energy in her sword as well. Want my help partner? No need Drake, I alone would be enough I think so, since that amount of holy energy is indeed sending creeps in my spine. She then raised her sword as well, and her sword started to shine as well, and started to get covered in flames. Outside the barrier the three people who were looking at the fight, were now wearing sunglasses while staring at them, and Tetsuya asked, who do you think will win this clash? Them even. Though the Red Dragon Empress is capable, the fact that both Durandal and Excalibur are better compared to her Ascalon puts her at a disadvantage in this, and seeing how this is going on, I think this is going to be a head-on competition between their powers Zenobia. And then, I will bet on my student. Gabriel just stood silent and looked at the two girls, and thought that it has been a while since she fought someone with her full capabilities, but just shrugged her shoulders not thinking much about it. She didn't like fighting in the first place, and will only fight when it is necessary. Ex Durandal, shouted Zenobia while slashing her ex Durandal M filled with energy towards Asami firing and devastating beam from her sword. We are shouting names huh? Then asterisk I N H A L E asterisk Ascalon, and fired the red energy beam, along with her dragon slayer flames towards the incoming attack. Seeing the intensity of the attacks, Gabriel just raised her hand and formed a stronger barrier along the already existing one, since it would easily break by the attacks. Tetsuya and the other two could hear the shattering sound of the barrier, while the clash of the two attacks made huge shock waves, and the area around them became intensely hot because of the flames. Asterisk BOOM asterisk soon a huge explosion occurred inside the barrier, destroying the entire area without any exception, but the barrier was still able to hold it in. Soon the smoke and dust started to die down, and an Isom came into view with her hand, which was holding the sword slightly trembling and bleeding. On the other hand in place of Zenovia, a circular dome stood there which soon disappeared and transformed into a sword, and was held by Zenovia, who immediately used her other charged sword, and fired another attack towards Asami. Let's see how you take my Excalibur destruction head on. Hold up you use the mimic sword to form a protective dome around you that's hella unfair. Protested Asami with annoyance, but Zenobia ignored her and threw her ex Durandal away, and just took out another Excalibur fragment from it. The instant she took out the new sword she vanished from her spot and appeared behind Asami, who for the first time from the beginning used her gauntlet to block the slash coming towards her. Now the rapid version Zenobia that's unfair. Indeed it is so what take this, and slashed her destruction sword towards Asami, who immediately transformed into her balance breaker and caught the sword. Boost 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 boost. Drake started boosting trying to push back the attack from Excalibur destruction, but before they were able to finish the clash, the barrier around them broke and Tetsuya said, alright, match over, Zenobia, wins the hell with it Asami. 
It was a sword fight, not a brawl. Tetsuya don't stop me she was the one WHO used unfair tactics. Shouted Asami now transformed back to her usual form, while pointing a finger towards Zenobia, who was already lying on the ground taking deep breaths. Huh, just because you were not able to predict an outcome made it unfair looks like you need more training I will make some time in my schedule for you. Isami immediately fell on her knees as tears started to come out of her eyes. She was about to say something before she saw Tetsuya smiling towards her, and just hung her head down, knowing that there was no escape now. She then looked at her gauntlet and said, Looks like happiness does not last forever. Indeed that's how life is my condolences to you partner. Said the dragon inside the sacred gear. You mean to say that you and Gabriel San went on and on for three days straight? Asked to surprise Asami while looking towards Tetsuya. She then looked towards the girl in question and stared at her for a while and said, Damn. Tetsuya looked at Asami from the corner of his eyes and said, Asami we are in a public place, in heaven at that, make sure to mind your tongue, alright? We don't want Azazel to have more fallen angels. Tetsuya who had already made a barrier around them to prevent Asami's knowledge from reaching the angels, sighed as he looked at the girl in question. Asami in turn just nodded her head in approval, and after a while started muttering, I will try to do a four day straight then gotta build up my stamina for that, um, looks like it's time to focus in the Tiamat Sen's class. I will ask Kurumi Sen as well. Tetsuya and Griselda just looked at the red dragon empress with a deadpan look on their faces, while Zenobia seemed to be noting something down in a notepad. Gabriel who was elegantly drinking tea, encouraged Asami to do her best. Both of them then sighed and Griselda looked towards Tetsuya and asked, are both of them always like that? And pointed towards Asami and Zenobia. Tetsuya looked back at her and said, that's not even their final form, you know. Hearing that Griselda widened her eyes in surprise and looked towards the two girls. Tetsuya who was done with his tea, looked towards Asami and Zenobia and said, let's get going then, your swords are repaired, and you don't want to face a pist of Sona for skipping school like this, right? Hearing that both the girls frowned a bit as they knew how strict Sona could be regarding these matters. Aren't you going to be in trouble as well? Not to mention that it is your fault that we are still here, said Asami pointing her finger towards Tetsuya. Um nah, I am not in trouble since my grades are not bad at all, and even if Sona decides to approach me regarding skipping school well, Let's just say we will have a heated discussion to settle things in between us. Both Asami and Zenobia twitched their lips at that, but soon kept that at the back of their mind, and prepared to leave. All of them notified about their departure to Michael, and then Tetsuya made a magic circle leading back to Kuo, and teleported away along with the other two. But just as they teleported Tetsuya felt that something was off, and soon found the reason for that once he noticed that he teleported outside of Kuo. Tetsuya and the girls looked at each other with surprised look on their faces, as Tetsuya immediately searched what was happening. He then took a step forward, and knocked his fist on something that seemed to be like a transparent wall. A barrier surrounding the whole town. Huh. Looks like someone wants to get their ass kicked very badly at that. Tetsuya then made a hole in the barrier and went inside along with the other two and said, Hey Asami, will you do an errand for me? But instead of replying Asami changed to her balance breaker and said, Deal with the mob, that are deploying the barrier, right? No problemo. Zenobia took out her sword as well and said, I will lend her a hand as well. Tetsuya nodded his head and then telepathically sent them the location where the people were, and the two immediately left to do their job. Once they were gone Tetsuya looked in front and took out his guns and started flying towards the school, while also killing any guests he found on his way. Once he reached the school Tetsuya was met with a huge army of mages guarding the building, and immediately Tetsuya said, Ah, uh, this feels nostalgic. There was a similar situation during the peace summit of the three factions. Hearing his voice all of the mages looked towards Tetsuya. But just as they turned their heads, Tetsuya used his telekinesis to crush their skull and said, I did the same back then as well. He then walked inside the school, saw a huge dome inside which many students were lying unconscious, while the devils were busy doing something, most probably brainwashing the children. Tetsuya then got inside the barrier as well, and once all of them noticed his presence, they sighed in relief and Russ was said quote, I will fill you up on the situation. Tetsuya who had already read their minds just shrugged his shoulders and let her do what she wanted. Sure, go ahead but before that. Tetsuya looked towards the children whose bodies were floating in the air because of his telekinesis, and changed their memories accordingly, and sent them back to their classes, while still being unconscious. Tetsuya looked at the others who were still there and said, Check the school grounds to search for more intruders, and some of you go and check the town as well. I cleared the people that came in my path, but there are still quite a few that are left. All of them nodded as the student council members started to check the school grounds, while the Nekishu from Tetsuya's team decided to check the town. So, let's jet this straight, a huge army of magicians suddenly appeared in the town out of nowhere but were instantly destroyed by Miyuki, after which a few moments later, an army of dragons came and you all started to engage with them, while another group of magicians appeared after the dragons, and got in the town, because of the distraction various stuff happened. You all dealt with the dragons somehow, or some of them managed to escape, then you all dealt with magicians that were threatening the students, and during all this commotion, Kaneko, Ravel and Miyuki get kidnapped by them. Hearing his explanation Roswis, Sona and the others who were still there nodded their heads. Tetsuya remained silent for a while, and then sighed and said, Well, I pity that person who kidnapped Kaneko and Ravel kidnapped Miyuki by mistake, as well he must be dead by now. While knowing Miyuki she would not do something dangerous, except for when asked by you. 
or it is something related to you. But still that person's blood must have been frozen by now. Tetsuya looked at his teammates who were talking to each other. But then Tetsuya noticed that the barrier started shattering, and now knew that Asami and Zenobia were done with their job. Just as he thought that Asami and Zenobia came back with some prisoners in tow to interrogate them. But, why did you took so long to come back? You should have been back two days ago, right? Asked a curious Roswiss. But before Tetsuya could say anything Asami said, he was busy fucking Asera for three days straight. Not a fault just so you know. Tetsuya who was now the center of attention decided to change the topic and said, well let's get Miyuki and the other two back. And then opened a portal. Once he stepped inside the portal he found himself in a very big space and started looking around. And just as he was looking MH around his eyes fell on something that made them widen in surprise. Tell me Dragon WHO is a disgrace and a piece of shit and should just persish from the face of Earth. AHH it's me mistress. I Grendel is the one WHO is a disgrace and piece of shit mistress Kurumi. What Tetsuya saw was a huge nine-tailed fox, stepping on top of a black-scaled dragon, with his whole body covered in wounds, and his face being crushed by the fox's fort. What the hell was happening here? Asked Tetsuya. But none was there to answer him. Tetsuya looked at the dragon who was being dominated by Kurumi, and then towards the nine-tailed fox. He then turned his head to the side and asked, was it really necessary to let your clone do that, and show this to everyone? On his side Kurumi in her human form was standing and looked towards Tetsuya and said, I mean, I won't do something like that personally. You know though it's a different thing if you want to do that. Even if I decided to do that which I'm pretty sure that I won't, I would be the dominant one anyway. And couldn't you have just put the dragon under a Jinjutsu? Kurumi blinked her eyes in surprise and then looked towards her fox transform clone who was looking towards them, and nodded her head. The huge fox nodded its head as well as a purplish black ball started to form in its mouth. Seeing that Tetsuya immediately formed a barrier around the huge creatures, and soon the whole barrier got covered in an explosion. Once the explosion died down the fox disappeared in a cloud, and the dragon was left motionless with a serious wound in his chest, and was now put in an illusion by the fox that just disappeared. Tetsuya then bound the dragon up, and then looked towards Kurumi and asked, So what are you doing here? Um, Oriya told me about the invasion, and that some idiot was trying to kidnap some of us. So I just came here to deal with the situation. After all it is my responsibility as their eldest sister to make sure that they are safe. Not to mention that you were exceeded your stay in heaven, so it basically became my job anyway. Kirumi the shrugged her shoulders and asked, By the way, what made you extend your stay? Tetsuya looked at Kirumi and said, Gabriel confessed to me. Things got heated up, Gabriel got even more heated up, went on with her for three days, straight that's the gist of it. Kirumi blinked in surprise for a while and then said, innocent ones are really dangerous, Asia was like that as well but still nowhere close to our record 19 days 7 hours and 23 minutes star right? I am not going to ask how do you know the exact time, but still, yeah, one of the best uses for the time chamber. Said Tetsuya with a satisfied look on his face and nodded his head. He then looked around and asked anyway where are Miyuki and the others? Oh well where there is cold there is Miyuki, and started to look for an area covered in ice. Soon enough he found the place and saw Miyuki and the other two girls who were kidnapped sitting around a table with a cup of tea in front of them, and the whole area covered in ice. Both Kaneko and Ravel were looking awkwardly at the cup and then at each other, not knowing what the hell was happening here. Miyuki then felt the presences coming towards them and said, Oni-sama want to join us for some tea, with a beautiful smile on her face which was even complimented by the beautiful ice around them. I am here too, you know, said Kirumi who was walking beside Tetsuya. Oh, Kirumi, sorry you are not visible since you got outshined by Onisama's radiance. Anyway do join us. And took out two cups of tea from her storage, and placed them on the table for Tetsuya and Kirumi. Tetsuya and Kirumi took their cups and drank their tea quietly while sitting with the rest of them as well. Tetsuya then looked at Ravel and Kaneko and asked, you two are fine, right? Kaneko and Ravel nodded their heads no longer feeling awkward as they decided to not think much about it. Tetsuya nodded and said, it's fine then. It seems like the one they were after was Ravel, since they wanted the Phoenix Tears from an original Phoenix to improve their artificially created ones. Hearing that all of them looked towards Ravel as she felt guilty thinking that it was her fault for getting everyone in danger. Tetsuya who heard her thoughts teleported her in his lap much to her surprise as she immediately became embarrassed bad her cheeks turned red. E.T. Tetsuya Sama, um, is something the matter Ravel? Asked Tetsuya with a smile on his face. Uu you um wwwh dash. Oh, I just remembered, thanks for the cakes that you baked for me that time. They were really delicious. Ch huh? I is that so? I am glad that you like them, said Ravel giving a relieved sigh. But soon her eyes widened and she said, wait that's not the matter here, said Ravel looking towards Tetsuya with a slightly angered expression. But Tetsuya ignored her words as he started patting the head of blonde girl sitting in his lap, making Ravel's face immediately turn beet red out of embarrassment, making her look down in shame. On the side Kaneko who saw all that had already broken the table near her, with just clutching the edge of the table between her hands. Calm down Kaneko, Tetsuya senpai is just doing that to calm down Ravel. Yeah, senpai has no ill intentions. Let the phoenix enjoy right now. Since she might be thinking that she dragged everyone in danger. Kirumi who felt the emotions coming out of Kaneko patted her back, and to calm her down a bit. Kaneko looked towards Kirumi who was patting her back, and just sighed and controlled herself a bit. Ravel on the other hand was totally embarrassed by Tetsuya's actions, who slowly started to whisper some things near her ear, and tried to make her not blame herself for the incident. Tetsuya then looked towards Miyuki and asked, by the way, where is the one that kidnapped you three? Miyuki placed her cup down, and soon the ice beside her started to crack up as a big 
big box made up of ice emerged from the ground. Inside the box was a froze Duke Lucif huge with a panicked look on his face, and his hands covering his crotch. Miyuki looked at Tetsuya with a smile on her face and said, This fu asterisk king piece of shit said something along the lines that he wanted to let Onisama know how he felt by ravaging your sister, Akami well. Let's just say, I made sure to freeze him beyond the borderline of life and death since, not only he is Grafia-san's brother, but also there was a possibility that he might get revived by that sacred gear ride. Tetsuya nodded and patted Miyuki's head and said, Good job Miyuki, I am proud of you. Miyuki nodded with a bright smile on her face on being patted by Tetsuya. By the way isn't this letting him off the hook too easily? Asked Tetsuya with a friendly smile on his face. Miyuki nodded with an equally friendly smile on her face and said, Ah, uh, don't worry. I took all the precautions necessary. His muscles are totally frozen, so he will not even be able to move. I was just waiting to confirm things with you. Since he is Grafia's brother, Tetsuya smiled and said, No need to hold back Miyuki. We can just bring him back to life if he unfortunately dies. So do as you please. Miyuki just nodded her head with a radiant smile, and a similar smile was present on Tetsuya's face as well which made the two siblings even more attractive that they already were. Though the other people who were sitting with the siblings had a deadpan look on their faces as they with their mouths open wide, not knowing how could they talk like that with such a smile on their faces. Later that day Tetsaya's team along with the other devil peerages, were busy fixing the town, and were helped by Azazel. Tetsaya on the other hand decided to deal with his dear brother-in-law, and called Grafia to come to his house, while also explaining the situation to the other Sisk Devil Kings. Though he kept the matter about Yukud up to himself as he wanted to let Grafia have a talk with him first. Tetsaya-sama, it's good to see you again, said Grafia while bowing her head and wearing her usual maid attire. Tetsaya sighed and said, haven't I told you that you can be informal to me when we are alone? I feel comfortable this way though if you really want then I will change it. No need, I am fine, as long as you are comfortable and the maid play in the bed is the absolute best. Said Tetsaya and nodded his head sagely. Hearing that Grafia blushed a bit, but still smiled towards Tetsaya and asked, By the way, what was the thing that you want to discuss with me? Tetsaya didn't say anything and just gestured her to follow him. Both of them then went to the basement and then Tetsaya said, Just a warning, but be prepared for a surprise. Grafia nodded her head and said, Knowing what kind of person you and the others are, I am always prepared for one, whenever I meet you all. And looked back towards him with a resolute expression on her face. Was that a praise or an insult? Anyway, let me show you whom we caught during this attack. He then opened the door of a room, and Grafia saw that the whole room was covered in ice. Both of them then entered the room, and Grafia saw a huge ice block standing in the middle of the room. Tetsaya who saw that the contents inside the block were not clearly visible, used his magic to make the contents clear for him and Grafia. What Grafia saw made her widen her eyes in shock. In front of her a man stood trapped inside a block of ice, having the same hair and eyes as her, and she easily recognized him as her brother, who was thought to be dead during the civil war though for some reason her brother had a panicked look on his face, and his hands were covering his crotch. Tetsaya by the shocked look on Grafia's face, patted her shoulder and said, he is alive and kicking, in fact he was the one who led the attack though he pissed Miyuki off, and the result is in front of you. He is only alive because Miyuki knew that he was your brother, and that you might want to clear some things between you two. Grafia who was totally shocked by what she saw and heard remained silent for a while, and started to arrange her thoughts once she was done, she took a deep breath and looked towards Tetsaya. Tetsaya who saw her looking at him nodded and said, I will stay here as well. Apostrophe this fucker might try to play the emotional blackmail card on her. Tetsaya then melted the ice around the devil and made a barrier around him to prevent him from getting away and started to heat him up a bit so as to increase his body's temperature. Once his temperature returned to normal Tetsaya forceful woke him up using his psychic power and then motioned Grafia to continue. Tetsaya made chairs for both him and Grafia and both of them sat in front of the devil who was trapped inside a barrier. Euclid who was forcefully woken up clutched his head in pain and after a while was able to think normally. He then started looking around to check where he was but stopped once he found her sister sitting in front of her alone with the black haired fucker of his brother-in-law who looked at him with a smile and waved his hand. Hello, good to see you brother-in-law, how have you been? You could glare at Tetsaya for a while, but then looked towards his sister, who was looking at him with some complex emotions, containing feelings of anger, concern, anger, happiness, anger, relief, anger, and a lot more. Seeing the face of his sister who he only saw from the screen which he used to stal asterisk c-o-u-g-h asterisk asterisk c-o-u-g-h asterisk keep watch of intruders, made him feel a bit happy, though his face remained neutral like it originally was. Unfortunately for him Tetsaya could see what the hell that brain of his was thinking, and he made sure that he will put him in a three-way war Jinjutsu for a whole year, and will add a maid cosplay for him as special for him being his brother-in-law. Nice to see you Euclid, said Grafia in an indifferent tone. Well well I would like to say it is nice to see you Nisama, though my situation is not allowing me to say so. Grafia just raised her finger as a magic circle appeared in front of it, and a chair made up of ice appeared behind Euclid. Seeing the chair Euclid smiled and said, as expected of Nisama, she cannot see me suffering and sat down. But just as he sat down his whole body was covered in ice restraints, seeing which Euclid got shocked and looked towards Grafia who was apathetically looking at him. Now, then do you want to start the story yourself? Or you want some convincing? And you better not waste our time Euclid we have a lot to deal with because of your this stupid little act. 
Titsaya who saw the siblings looking back at each other, secretly placed a diarrhea curse on Yukud who was currently restrained, and was sitting in front of the person he liked. Now this is gonna be fun thought Titsaya bars he saw Yukud's complete emotionless face, starting to show some slight and unnoticeable expressions. He then looked towards Grafia who still haven't caught onto Yukud's situation, and just took some distance from them telling to let both of them have a bit of privacy, and took out some popcorn from his storage, and started watching the show. The sight which was in front of Titsaya was something he was never going to forget. Seeing Yukud trying so hard to not let the expressions come out on his face in front of Grafia, was a sight to behold. The thoughts that could only be said a total mess were there in his head and Tetsuya was quite amused by listening to his thoughts. Though the number of times the little brother thought about doing something with his sister, Tetsuya, would improve the effects of the curse a bit, much to Yukud's dismay. Grafia, who was hardly able to get answers out of her brother's mouth, was starting to get pissed at him, and thought it would be better to use other means to get the information out of him. Yukud, I am asking for the final time will you tell us where your so-called master is, and what is he planning? I told you already even if you are my older sister, I am still not going to give any information to a traitor like you. Even though you are looking at me so passionately and I love you so much shit why again is this happening? It's taking all my willpower to let me emotions not appear on my face. You know which asso no. Let's not think about that. Concentrate Euclid, you cannot let sister is in front of you what would she think if she knew what is happening to me right now? Grafia, I think you should use some other means to get the info out of him. You can hit him as hard as you want, you know. Don't worry about killing him. We have Asia. And if that is still not enough I am here as well right? Said Tetsaya as he stood beside Grafia and placed his hands on her shoulders. That stinking human piece of bug shit how dare you get close to my niece armor. Get the hell away from he ugh. Though Euclid as he wanted to clutch his stomach, but was not able to because of his hands being restrained in ice. Grafia looked towards Tetsaya who was looking at her with a soft smile and was about to say something. But Tetsaya interrupted her and asked, or I can do it as well or more like please let me do it. I cannot have you hit your brother. It will not sit well with you right? Don't worry I won't hit him as well. Grafia widened her eyes in surprise and was hesitating a bit. She knew that it was important to get the information out of Euclid's mouth but was still not able to bring herself to ruthlessly hurt her brother. She knew that if Tetsaya said that he will not hurt her brother then there must be a way to do that. But still she felt like she would be asking too much from him. Tetsaya who knew what she was thinking pecked her cheek and said, Don't worry Grafia, I am asking you to let me do it, not the other way around right? And besides it was my territory and sister that were kidnapped by him, so I have the right to interrogate him as well, you know. Grafia who was kissed by Tetsaya, would usually not think much about it, and just enjoy that, but right now being in front of her brother, she felt a bit embarrassed, and had a slight blush on her cheeks. Tetsaya sama don't do that here Euclid is watching us. It's embarrassing. Hearing that Tetsaya smoked and whispered in her ears, then you mean that you don't have a problem with me doing whatever I want with you, when no one is watching us, right? And slightly bit her earlobe. The grey-haired maid felt a shiver run down her spine, and felt both excited and embarrassed hearing that, and with a slight blush on her cheeks, looked away, and just gave a slight nod. Seeing her acting like that Tetsaya chuckled and started teasing her once again, as he felt that his maid acting all shy and embarrassed was quite cute, and wanted to see more of that. Meanwhile the other person except for the couple that were currently flirting, has his eyes wide open, with anger evident in them, and once could also see that there was some blood dripping near his fists which were clenched tightly. You could Lucifuge was looking at his sister flirting with the despicable piece of human shit, and had bloodshot eyes, and was seething with rage. He wanted to just separate those two and tear apart the human, who was so close to his sister by was being restrained. Get the hell away from my grey fear Nisama UFU asterisk her, and how dare you kiss her beautiful cheeks with that filthy mouth of yours let me tell you. Nisama used to kiss me as well, you know, when we were kids, she even used to bath along with me, when we were kids. Heck she even promised me that she will become my bride and that's the reason she still haven't married yet. This didn't happen at all, I will kill you I will kill you. Tetsaya who had currently stopped listening to his thoughts because he already expected that it would just be something useless, continued to flirt with Grafia for a while, who was so embarrassed and excited, that she was willing to get pushed down then and there, if her brother wasn't present. Tetsaya too was willing to abide by her thoughts, and looked at his watch and thought the others will still take some time to come back ok. He then looked towards Euclid and said, you stay here and don't make a ruckus, and secretly increase the effectiveness of the curse for all the bullshit he may have thought, when Tetsaya wasn't listening to his thoughts. He then carried Grafia in a princess carry and teleported from the room, leaving the silver head Lucifuge, whose thoughts were in a total chaos alone there. A whole week passed by with Tetsaya and the other four girls being holed up in his room doing unspeakable deeds. Though in real world it was only a few hours since Tetsaya left with Grafia. Tetsaya who got up from his bed, looked at the four girls who lasted for the whole week straight inside, seeing that except for Grafia the other three girls who theoretically had infinite stamina, were still awake, though were satisfied with their session. Office who was back into his lowly form, was sitting in Tetsaya's lap and eating a chocolate that Tetsaya gave her, while being hugged by Tetsaya as well, who too was being fed sometimes by the little girl in his lap. Kermui who saw that just lie back on the bed, the city of the exhausted Lucifuge, and covered the maid with a sheet, and let her sleep peacefully. The maid really tried her best to compete with literal monsters, but was unfortunately defeated by the others. Kirumi and Raya dressed back into their clothes after cleaning themselves with their make, and Raya asked Office, Hey Office, give me some as well. 
and tried to reach for her chocolate only to get her hand smacked by Office who without any change in her expression said, nothing for Baka Red. Anne moved the chocolate towards Tetsaya's mouth who took a small bite out of it, then smirked while looking towards Raya. Raya looked at Office with a deadpan expression on her face, and used her magic to create an even bigger chocolate than the one Office had, and looked at the little dragon girl with a victorious smirk. Office who saw that tilted her head slightly and asked, you don't get any sweets from Tetsaya. So you are now making them by your own, since you feel lonely Baka Red. Hearing her innocent tone while asking that question Raya felt a dragon god slayer arrow piercing her heart, not knowing how to respond to that. Seeing that both Tetsaya and Kirumi looked at her and said, oof burn, and immediately looked away from the dragon god who was glaring at them. Tetsaya then gave both of them some chocolates as well, while not forgetting to give a bigger one to Office, who felt proud on re-signing the bigger one, and left the room. After he got reminded by Raya about his brother-in-law, who was totally forgotten by both him and Grafia a few days ago, Tetsaya came out of his room and checked the situation of the town through his magic and said, they will still take some time, well it's better if they don't see that anyway. Tetsaya then entered the room where he kept the younger Lucifuge, and just as he entered the room, he was attacked by a foul smell. Immediately using his magic to clear the smell in the room, he looked at the man who had no will to live sitting on his shit. Tetsaya looked at him for a second, and then nodded his head and took out some unsee eye drops from his, his pocket and dropped a sum in each of his eyes. He then took out some bite glasses which will totally obstruct his vision and said, you brother-in-law, seems like you got some shit to take care of. Should I come later if you are busy? Or do you want some help? Euclid with his lifeless eyes, looked at his arch nemesis and said, fuck off you stinky no no not stink, you ass no 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 asshole either why yo you piece of shy aahh not shit as well what the fuck do you want human just go and cuck somewhere else. Tetsaya just scratched the back of his head and said, ah, uh, sorry I was just fucking some time ago. So currently I am not in the mood, not to mention Grave here is tired as well after all that. Immediately Vance popped up on the always calm and collected Euclid as he looked at Tetsaya with an angry expression on his face and said, I swear I will kill you Tetsaya Shiba. But just as he said that his stomach started to grumble once again, and his face scrunched up in displeasure, Tetsaya who felt what was happening smiled and asked, should I call for Grave here? She might help you if you are in trouble after all she is your sister, right? Hearing that immediately the restraints that were holding back the Lucifuge broke, and he stood up with an outstretched hand towards Tetsaya and said, wait stop, stop. Tetsaya just stood at his place and asked, why? Aren't you in quite a shitty situation? Your sister might help you if you need something, so I can just call her, or do you want my help instead brother-in-law? Hearing those words you could gritted his teeth not knowing what to do. One one hand there was an option of asking help from the fucker in front of him, and on the other hand, there was an option which made him show all this disappointment to his sister who he loved dearly. Pondering about what to do for quite a while, Euclid looked at Tetsaya with an enraged expression and said, help me. Tetsaya smiled and said, what is the word that you use to ask for help and do ask politely? Hearing that Euclid got even more enraged as his body started trembling in anger, and he said, will you please help me Tetsaya Shiba? Hum that was rude as well, but whatever, I will help you. So what do you need no don't tell me. I already know what kind of shit you are in so here take this. And moved his hand towards Euclid. Euclid looked at what Tetsaya was holding, and blinked his eyes in surprise, and looked back towards Tetsaya, then towards the thing, and then back at Tetsaya. What is this for? To wipe that off? A double-sided extra sandy sandpaper, covered with the highest quality holy water as well. I see like hell I will use that. My asshole will fucking bleed Tetsaya, showed a bright smile and said, but don't you need this after all in the current situation, it is comparable to the highest quality antibacterial wipes. It's a few asterisk king sandpaper, but it still have paper in it, right? But there is sand no extra sand in IT as well not to mention the holy stuff. You can plan a lot, looks like I should call Grave here to deal with you. And pulled his hands back and started walking towards the door. Seeing him walking away after giving a threat a lot of possible scenarios came in Euclid's mind in a matter of seconds. And he immediately stopped him and said, wait you bastard give me that fu asterisk king paper. And immediately Tetsaya appeared in front of him with a sheet of paper, which somehow looked even more sandy and holy, than the one he showed earlier. Tetsaya smiled and said, please take your time. I will be waiting outside, and handed the paper to his brother-in-law and left the room. After a few minutes of screaming and yelling that was coming from the room, Tetsaya decided to go inside when he noticed that the noise stopped. As soon as he opened the room, he saw a silver-haired man lying down on the floor, with his butt perked up and totally uncovered, with some smoke coming out of his butt. Looks like the holy water burned him a bit too much his. Ass is totally charred by it. He then used his telekinesis to fix his posture and clothes, and made him sit back on the ice chair which immediately caused a lot of pain to the younger Lucifuge, as his butt is still not recovered. Ah, uh, fuck you Tetsaya Shiba, and jumped up from the chair only to slip on his shit and fall down on his butt, which caused another series of screams to come out of the poor guy. Tetsaya cleaned the mess around Euclid, and let him do whatever he wanted and said, anyway, leaving all that are you going to tell us what we want to know? Euclid glared at him and said, you can try your worst, but still I won't tell you anything. Tetsaya nodded his head and said, well there was no harm in trying to let you fess up on your own but oh well. It's not like I don't know that the old Lucifer is in Rome, or that you are trying to free Trahixa. Hearing what he said Euclid's eyes widened in surprise as he was about to ask something, but then immediately the surrounding around him changed as he found himself in a dimly lit room with a huge bed. Huh, where am I? Tetsaya Shiba what are you planning? But soon he felt some trouble in his stomach once again and crouched down a bit. Shit not again. 
What the fu asterisk k did I eat that made me like this? What happened Euclid? Are you troubled by something? Hearing a distant but familiar voice, Euclid looked up with slight shock on his face, and saw his sister or rather sisters looking at him with the usual cold look, seeing that a look of fear appeared around Euclid's face as he started to get pale. Currently in the room where Euclid and Tetsaya were, Tetsaya was looking at Euclid with a slight smirk on his face and said, well you did say to try my best brother in law. He then gave once last glance to him and then left the room. Once he got out he called Azazel to ask if everything was back in order to which Azazel just told him how much work was done and the other matters that occurred in the town during his absence. Mainly, some vampires from Rome asking for Gaspar and Rhea's denying and going to Rome herself to deal with the situation. Listening to all that Tetsaya nodded and made a clone of himself and said, I will be going then. The clone nodded and said, I will take care of things here. Tetsaya nodded and then teleported away. A few moments later Tetsaya arrived inside a huge room and heard some noise coming from behind him. He turned around and saw Rias totally naked with some soap covering her spotless and beautiful body, with a surprised look on her face. Um, hello there, said Tetsaya making the situation even more awkward than it already was. Back in Kuo the devils from the Gremory and Citri peerages along with Tetsaya's team, were finally done with their jobs, and were now inside Tetsaya's home, wanting to discuss the situation and rest for a bit. Tetsaya's clone who was present there explained the situation to all of them, about the Cow's Brigade's plan to get their hands on the real Phoenix Tears and Euclid, wanting to mess with Tetsaya as he was a very dangerous person for their plants. He also told them about the fact that the big boss was in Rome, and that the dragons were actually the vampires, shocking all of them especially Gasper who was angry, knowing that her childhood friend was being used. He immediately wanted to rush there and help her and Rias, but was stopped by the clone, who told that the real Tetsaya was already there to deal with all this. Wait a minute. Do you mean that Tetsaya is already present where my grandfather is? Asked Vali's projection, who was specially called by Tetsaya. The clone nodded and said, Yup, so I am here to remind you you get as strong as you get till tomorrow. Or the original Bis going to deal with the old devil himself. Damn that bastard Tetsaya. Hey Cow Cow, come meet me in the time chamber at Gat Guy's house in 10 minutes. I need a punchy I mean a training partner to get stronger. Bye, said Vali as he called Cow Cow, and teleported to Shiba residence the next instant, with his team in tow, and pulled them with him to the time chamber. Hey hey hey, what the hell are you doing Vali? I would like to know about the same as well. Release me this instant Vali Naya. Shirin Naya, save your Wani Chan. But all their efforts were in vain as Arthur, Biku and Kuroka were pulled in the time chamber by Vali. Well there he goes as for you guys, rest while you can the original will inform you if there is some need for you all. Said the clone as he dissipated in a cloud of smoke, and in his place appeared a huge table with a lot of dishes present on it. Meanwhile inside Euclid's mind, Euclid was surrounded by a huge army of grey fear all around him, looking away from him with a disgusted look on their faces, as he was not in control of his body, and continued shit on the place where he was with a lifeless expression on his face, and kept on muttering, just let me die, just let me die. He also had a familiar extra holy extra sandy sand paper in his hand, which had used me written on it with a different colored sand. Tetsaya was currently sitting in a bathtub totally naked with Rias leaning on him. So you are saying that a descendant of the original Lucifer is currently controlling the Teeps faction and is also the member of Cal's brigade? Asked Rias. Tetsaya looked at Rias who was looking back at him and said, he could technically be said to be the leader of Cal's brigade, you know. And he attacked Huo while I was not there. Asked Rias with a slight frown. Tetsaya held her head in his hands and made her look in front and closed her eyes by placing his hand on top of them and said, well, it doesn't matter that much, since you would not have contributed much, since there were a lot of dragons that were to be dealt with. The small fries were easily taken care of by Miyuki, and the rest the moment they came in range. Rias whose vision was blocked by Tetsaya's hands remained silent for a while and then asked, are you insulting me? Tetsaya just shrugged his shoulders and said, just stating facts so as to not make you feel guilty, my dear. Rias removed the hands blocking her vision and turned towards Tetsaya and said, that was not a good way to reassure someone. Tetsaya hugged her waist and said, But this method did work on you, right? Rias who got hugged by Tetsaya, smacked her forehead on his chest and said, Strangely enough, I am now used to your crude way of treating this little Ormi. What can I say, I am also used to treating you like this. Because of how you used to act before the Three Factions Alliance. Hearing that Rias looked up at Tetsaya's face with a pout, Seeing which Tetsaya smoked and said, You were a real piece of work back then and a way too spoiled bitchy princess. Hearing that Rhea's brows twitched as she asked, Really now that was totally uncalled for. Um well just think of this of us remembering the old days. But still I try my best to change right? What do you think of me now? Asked Rhea's with an expectant look on her face. Hum, well you are comparatively less bitchy and spoiled and not that big of a piece of work your attitude is a bit better though. Rhea's looked at Tetsaya with a deadpan expression and said, I will just take that as a compliment. You should because that was one. Said Tetsaya, which earned him a light punch on the chest from Rhea's. Tetsaya Tetsaya just laughed a bit and then leaned comfortably in the tub, which was filled with water that Tetsaya got from the lake in heaven. This situation after weeks of night activities with beings which had nearly infinite stamina, did wore him out a bit and the water was really relaxing for him. Rias too felt relaxed, but for some reason felt so a bit uncomfortable, most probably because the water was from heaven, but Tetsaya made sure that it would not harm her. She just leaned on Tetsaya and said, thank you for slapping me back then. Tetsaya whose eyes were closed, heard what Rias said and imagined the time when he slapped Rias during the Kakabiel incident and thought, that slap left a mark for a whole, weak Tetsaya, then moved moved his hand towards her butt, and gave it a squeeze, earning a yelp from the redhead and said, I can slap your cheeks again, you know. Rias then turned around with a playful angry expression on her face, and pushed her chest against Tetsaya's and said, Do you really want to? 
After all, we are not in a safe place right now. Titsaya looked at Riaz and said, Do you really think that I will not make sure of that? You seem to be forgetting who I am, my dear redhead. Here, yeah, but... Aren't you tired from all that you did before coming here? Asked Riaz with a provoking smirk. Wanna find that out? Why no dash? But before she could say anything, both of them noticed a magic circle appear in the bathroom, making Riaz shocked, since she truly didn't think that someone would be able to come there in Titsai's presence. Relax, no need to worry. The only person who can come in without my permission is Dash suddenly Sona, Tsubaki, Ekeno, Asami and Zenovia and Arena appeared with Titsai's clone. Is me. Finished Tetsuya and looked at his clone, who just gave him a casual salute and teleported back to Kuo. Ara Ara, looks like we really interrupted Ria's, said Akeno with a playful smile on her face, and started unbuttoning her shirt. Tetsuya, don't forget you promised we would be FU Astra's king like rabbits, once we were done with taking care of the town, said Asami. The two started to strip. WW wait Asami, you should and not do something like T that, said Arena with a huge blush on her cheeks, and covering her eyes with her hands, and peeking at Tetsuya's naked body from in between her fingers. No need to worry Arena, Tetsuya did the baby making with Gabriel Sama back in heaven without having he fall, and the angels supported that you know. So it's fine to do that, it's not bad, said Zenovia who was already taking off her underwear. Ah, uh, really? Asked Arena with a surprised tone. See this is what happens when you don't take aggressive approach with someone like him who is always surrounded by girls. We are already too late, Sonasama said Tsubaki who was now sitting beside Tetsuya in the tub, and immediately had a blissful expression on her face because of the water. Shh, hey, it's not my fault exclamation point exclamation point dot 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 it's too embarrassing, you know, said Sona who was totally red from embarrassment, and was the only one besides Arena, who had still not taken off her clothes. Seeing and guessing what all of them were here for Tetsuya sighed and thought, this week is really busy, for some reason, and then used his magic to strip Sona off her clothes, and pulled her to sit beside him, much to her shock and embarrassment. Riaz who was on Tetsuya's chest looked at Sona with a smirk and then said, Hello Sona, feeling embarrassed. And jiggled her breasts in front of her face, making the Citrieris annoyed by their size. She then looked at her chest and sighed. The other girls who were still not dot I. The tub were convincing Arena and getting her prepared, seeing which Tetsuya made the room similar to the one he was in with Gabriel, and placed the same magic on Arena that he did on Gabriel. Tetsuya then looked towards Sona and grabbed her boobs, which easily fit in his hand and said, Don't worry. I will try my best to get them big. And started fondling her chest before she could even reply which earned moans filled with pleasure from Sona. Titsaya made sure to record that, and would use it to tease her later. Akeno was also present in the tub, and was instructing Riaz on how to service the little brother as both of them sat beside his legs, and enveloped his cock in between their breasts. Subaki, who was on Titsaya's other side was also getting fondled by Titsaya, and was also giving similar reactions as Sona. Isami and Zenvia who were successful in stripping Arena, looked at the scene and thought, let's wait for a bit. And got in the huge tub as well. Titsaya who was now surrounded, looked towards the author and said, well see you later, and snapped his fingers. Tetsuya then transferred all of them to his dimension, and now suddenly in his bedroom. The confused girls looked around for a while, seeing which Tetsuya reassured them. Tsubaki then held Tetsuya's face, and gave him a deep kiss, making Sona blush at her queen's act. The others too got slightly excited seeing Tsubaki acting aggressively, and soon all of them got prepared to spend a long night. After spending a whole day inside Tetsuya's dimension, the girls were lying down unconsciously on the bed with their body totally naked and covered with a sheet. Tetsuya was being hugged by Riaz and Sona on either side and Asami on top of his chest, sleeping peacefully. After he successfully got out of the pile of bodies lying on and around him, Tetsuya went back to Rome after leaving a message for the girls. There he reheated the bath he was at yesterday and cleaned himself and made sure to deal with the remaining water from heaven as it was quite deadly for the vampires who owned this place. After taking his bath, Tetsuya made a magic circle in near his ear and said, Yo, good morning you see there are a few important stuff to deal with so come straight to Ria's room. The magic circle then disappeared and a few minutes later someone knocked on the door hearing which Tetsuya said come in. And the door opened and Kiba came in. He got slightly surprised seeing Tetsuya there, but soon smiled and said, seems like something serious is going to happen today. Seeing that you are here, Tetsuya smiled as well and said, you don't know. Kiba nodded and asked, so, care to fill me up on the info? Wait a minute I will do that soon. Now then let's call the others as well. Tetsuya said that and several small magic circles appeared in the air, and projections of various people appeared, on top of it. Tetsuya, don't tell me that you already dealt with that old bastard, asked Vali with a serious tone. Oh, if it isn't the White Dragon Emperor, um, Ria's knight, and someone new here. Anyway, what happened Tetsuya? said Sereg with his usual confident tone. Seeing that you have called me as well along with the white shit emperor means that it is for the thing that I asked you for, said Cal Cal with his sacred gear in his hand and looking towards Vali. Though there was no need for it since I am here with this bastard at your place anyway. Tetsaya nodded and said, yup, it's for that purpose, and I hope that you are prepared Vali. Vali snorted and said, don't worry, I had taken some help from some dragon gods to get myself prepared for this, so we are about to begin. There's still some people left to respond, so wait a bit. Soon another magic circle lit up and another projection appeared. I am done with the preparations boss, said Loki who now had his powers back and had a confident expression on his face. Tetsaya nodded and said, then let's begin, and told them about his plans. Soon all the people whom Tetsaya contacted were present in the room where Tetsaya and Kiba were, along with some of their teammates. Vali was there with Bikyu and Arthur, Kao Kao was with George and Siegfried, Sereg was standing along with Regula 
Nicholas, Loki, along with the three god killer pups. Kiba with Saji who immediately agreed when Tetsuya asked him. And Tetsuya with Roswas and Tiamat who also decided to take part in this invasion, since she had already placed all the baby dragons and dragon eggs in Tetsuya's dimension, and was sure that they were safe. Roswas looked at Tetsuya and asked, Are you sure that it will be fine? Tetsuya nodded and said totally. Why? Is there some problem? Um, just 15 people are deciding to deal with a terrorist group whom all the factions around the world are on an edge against isn't that something that I should worry about? Said Roswas with a panicked look on your face. Not to mention that strategy of yours. Said Roswas pointing her finger at Tetsuya. Tetsuya looked at her innocently and said, What's wrong with that? Isn't that strategy just fine? We will just be budging straight through. Yup, no problems. Said Vali. I will take anything head on. Said Sarayag. I am a god. And even though I am a god of trickery, I have enough pride in myself to not use some worthless moves against those small fries. Not to mention, I have some debt to pay back those fuckers from Cow's Brigade that tried to trick me. Said Loki clutching his fists. I will show them that humans are not scared of those supernatural bastards, and they still have a lot to pay back for trying to take advantage of the hero faction. Said Cow Cow. Well, Aniki said it so I am sure it will be fine. Said Saji with full confidence and Tetsuya. Hearing their answers Roswas was at a loss and was then comforted by Tiamat, who hugged her and patted her back. Don't worry it will be fine, I will be there, not to mention you have your secret weapon as well, right? Said Tetsuya patting Roswas' shoulder who looked at him with twitching lips, but still nodded her head. Now just one more person. Said Tetsuya and opened a portal and pulled Asami out of it. Asami looked at Tetsuya and the others, and with a sigh said, why me? And looked at Tetsuya, who left a special message for her to be prepared back at the mansion. Don't worry I won't let my servants go out there alone. Said Rias who jumped out of the portal as well and was dressed too. She then looked at Tetsuya, and with a smile on her face said, heal me please. Tetsuya stared at her for a while and just shrugged his shoulders. I will tell the Siskin later about this along with the fact that he is now my brother-in-law. Thought Tetsuya and said, well then be prepared for the a huge fight. Asami looked at Tetsuya and asked, where are the others? Only this much. We cannot call all of them here, since the other places require protection as well. Not to mention that we still have their second in command captured in Kuo. There is a high chance of an attack to take place there, said Tetsuya. What about Asia? We need a healer too, right? Asked Asami. Don't worry. I will make sure to revive you later if you died. Said Tetsuya hearing which Asami frowned and thought, Drake make sure that I in no way want to experience dying. Noted partner. Once they made sure that all their preparations were complete, Tetsuya made a magic circle on the ground big enough for all of them to fit in and teleported away. Tetsuya and the others then appeared in front of the Teeps faction area, and Tetsuya looked around and nodded his head. It seems like normal teleportation inside there is being blocked. Well I can teleport us, but no need. They must have already noticed us. It's better to just push through from here, rather than getting surrounded from the beginning, said Cow Cow. Tetsuya nodded and asked, so, who is willing to do the honors as I can feel a lot of people moving from their places? Vali immediately took a step forward and said, what about you Haidu? Want to find out who the better amongst the heavenly dragons is? And gave Asami a side glance. Asami who saw him looking towards her took a step forward and said, sure, I don't mind some warm up. Both of them then manifested their sacred gears and yelled at the same time. Balance Breaker, Welsh Dragon. Balance Breaker, Vanishing Dragon. Balance Breaker, both the heavenly dragon emperors then got ready, and Tetsuya said, on your marks. But before he could even finish both Asami and Vali took off at great speeds. Tetsuya looked towards the two reckless dragons, and just shrugged his shoulders and asked, so shall we go now? To which the others nodded as well and started running towards the castle. Regulus and the pups changed to their true forms, and Loki was riding on top of Fenra. The three kings, Kiba, Atha, and Siegfried, were also standing close by, and it seemed like they were trying to compete as well. Biku, Sereg, Saji and Kao Kao were also prepared as both Kao Kao and Saji had taken out their sacred gears, and Biku was on his cloud with his bow staff in his hand. Sereg was covered in Tauki, ready to attack. Back. Ross was who was now focused was flying the air along with Rias, while Tetsuya was sitting on top of a transformed Tiamat, who too was flying in the air. Just as all of them passed through a second barrier, the surroundings completely changed as they saw a huge army of vampires, devils and dragons prepared to attack, while the two heavenly dragons were focused on breaking through the huge wall of people. Tetsuya looked at the scene and said, he will get exhausted even before he could reach his grandpa. He then looked towards Roswas and said, Roswas rears, the dogs. All those who were called out looked towards Tetsuya waiting for his order, and in response he smiled and said, open fire, and snapped his fingers to make the barrier around the whole territory stronger, so that everyone can go all out. All of them nodded as a huge number of magic circles appeared behind Roswas. Rias looked at the circles and then said, Roswas Sam, pass your spells through that, and a huge magic circle with Gremory symbol appeared in front of those circles. Seeing that Roswas understood what she was planning, and the circles tilted a bit to end towards Rias' magic circle. Huh! Shouted Roswas as a number of beams made up of different elements were launched towards the Gremory Circle. All the spell that were passed through Rhea's magic circle got buffed with her destruction element, and immediately huge explosions started happening on the battlefield. H H H H! Shit run barriers we need barriers, attack them together everyone. Save your lives first idiots the attacks are not stopping. Seeing that the vampires and the devils were panicking, and were making openings in their formation, Roswas and Rias high-fived. A god cannot stay behind mere mortals. Come on my child and grandchildren show them the might of Loki. Said Loki as he flew up in the air, and the god killer wolves stood side by side and opened their mouths. Three huge magic circles appeared in front of their mouth, while six magic circles appeared above Loki. The three wolves fired wind fire and ice magic towards the enemies, while Loki summoned a few dragons. 
who started attacking the dragons from the enemy side. Oh, another dragon king, said Tiamat with an amused tone. You wanna join? Asked Titsaya who was sitting on top of her head. Nope, there are just small fries here. Titsaya nodded as he tapped Tiamat's head telling her to move faster, and told everyone else to follow them. Titsaya looked towards Kao Kao and said, there are a lot of enemies who are weak against holy element here, you know. Hearing that Kao Kao nodded as the blade of his spear started shining. Titsaya looked at the swordsman and said, the same goes for you three. The three of them nodded and Siegfried said, Gremory's knight, Arthur, let's see who the best swordsman is, and summoned his third hand and held three swords in them. Kibber and Arthur did the same as Kibber formed two whole devil swords in each hand, and Arthur took out his Kali Burn and Excalibur ruler. Ready go. Just as Tetsaya signaled them the four holy weapon wielders vanished from their spots, and immediately large beams and orbs made of light, and by elements started appearing on the battlefield, charring the devils and vampires without any mercy. Tetsaya then looked towards the sky, and saw that the heavenly dragon wielder had somehow started their own brawl though the enemies were still being dealt with by the attacks that were missing their targets. Biku extend your staff and pierce it in the butt dragon emperor's ass. Biku looked towards Tetsaya for a while, but soon a smirk appeared on his face and said, sure, hoi hoi, and the staff started extending and successfully hit his mark. Wah dash, who the hell did that, and looked towards the staff poking and immediately glared at Biku. Biku who saw Vali looking at him, waved his hand and pointed towards Tetsaya who was pointing towards the open path. Vali saw that Fasabum, since he totally forgot his goal because of excitement. Let's go Red Dragon, just one more push through this crowd, and rush towards the devils and vampires. Sure, said Asami following him and both of them started blasting through the crowd in front of them. Titsaya, who was the only one who hasn't done anything from the beginning, was just blocking the attacks coming towards them, and let the others attack without any disturbance. Soon all of them saw the castle which was now very close to them, and Titsaya immediately jumped off from Tiamat's head. The others followed him and started descending. Once all of them in front of the entrance Titsaya came forward and said, now let's do this my usual way. Everyone who heard him say that were confused as to what Tetsaya was referring to, but just shrugged it off. They looked back at the huge battlefield in front of them and saw Roswes Rears, the god killer wolves and swordsmen confronting all of them along with Loki's dragons. Isami too stood behind to deal with the dragons since she had Ascalon. Vali and Kao Kao who just came looked towards Tetsaya and asked, what the hell are you doing? Hurry up Tetsaya. Tetsaya nodded and gave cleared his throat. He then took a deep breath and knocked on the huge castle door and yelled, FBI open up, and punched the door with full force, sending it flying and making a very strong shockwave and ran inside the castle. The others just stared at the huge dust cloud in front of them, not sure how to react to their captain's antic. The others waited for a bit not sure what to do. Cal Cal the looked towards George and said, surround the area make sure no one enters, deal with them however you want. George nodded his head and then purple mist started to come out of his hands and started surrounding the entrance. Varley who was in his armor immediately rushed in and said, hurry up BQ. If we are too late the old bastard would already be dead. Biku immediately followed Vali on his cloud, after which the others started following him as well. Soon they saw Tetsaya walking in the hallway of the castle with his guns in his hands and singing something. Demo son and jar dame, mu son and jar horror dot asterisk devils. Disappearing in white mist asterisk kokoro wa shinkasuri yo material burst asterisk a small group of evil dragons, getting vaporized by a small scale material, eurst asterisk Tetsaya then just continued walking through the hallway without caring much, and singing to himself. His companions who were behind him just stayed there taking down anyone who would come from the top. Soon the group came in front of a path that split into four different ones. Tetsaya stopped singing and said, I am taking this one. Choose one and go forward, if any one of you are about to die, just call. And walk towards the path that he selected. Seeing that every one of them looked at each other and discussed where they would go, in the end Tiamat decided to go behind Tetsaya. Sereyag, Saji and Regulus made a team. Biku and Vali made a team. Loki and Kao Kao made a team. Vali looked at all of them and said, if you find my grandfather make sure to call me. And then left with Biku. The others nodded and went to their selected paths as well. Titsaya who heard someone coming towards him looked behind and saw Tiamat coming and asked, Hm, you chose to come with me. Tiamat hummed in response and said, Yup. I thought that you would feel quite lonely on your own. There's no need to worry about that lizard hag. Said a voice as orange chakra started leaking out of Tetsaya and materialized in the form of Kirumi beside him. So you were here as well, huh, Vixen? Said Tiamat as she narrowed her eyes. Kirumi just smirked and said, Yup, after all I am the one closest to Tetsaya. So it is a matter of fact that I would be with him during battles as well. Alright, talk while walking. We are not going to wait for both of you to finish your bickering, said Tetsaya, who was already quite a bit away from the two ladies who just gave each other a last look before they followed him. After walking for a while they soon came in front of four beings that were blocking their paths. Kirumi looked at the four and said, Oh, look Tiamat, your kin. Tiamat nodded her head and said, Hm, indeed they are dragons. But I didn't think that they were alive as well. Seems like they were brought back to life as well and I didn't expect to see that unsocial person here. Long time no see Krom. Krom Kruich who was in his human form I Tiamat and said Tiamat. Didn't expect to meet a stuck up person like you well not that it matters, actually it's better since you are here. Seems like you two have surpassed your limit. Tetsaya then raised his hand and asked, so Krom Kruich and the mob character Will you let us go peacefully? Huh? Who did you call a mob you human bastard? I am the great evil dragon Azi Dahaka. I dash. So the answer is no ha. Huh? Tiamat Kurumi, deal with them. Said Tetsaya not letting the mob Azi Dahaka finish his speech. Tetsaya then looked at Krom and asked, You interested in working for Cow's Brigade? I am only interested in fighting someone strong and... 
Right now my orders are to hold you back and, it seems like you are quite strong. Tetsuya nodded his head and said, okay here catch. And threw a ball towards the evil dragon. Krom caught the weird looking ball in his hand, looked at it with a curious expression on his face. What is this thing are you mocking me? Asked Krom in a cold voice. Tetsuya smirked and said, just press the button on the ball. And you will know whether I am mocking you or not if you are not scared that is. Ayarachuha, I didn't knew even gods can catch cold. Shut it mortal, if you want to live. Said Loki looking towards Kao Kao with a glare on his face. Why do I feel like someone is going to be messed around by boss chest? Like what happened to me? You are challenging me. Nope, you think that I will be scared of these petty tricks of yours. Who knows, there is only one way that you can prove it to everyone, you know. Said Tetsuya shrugging his shoulders. Krom clicked his tongue and pressed the button present in the middle of the weird looking ball. And immediately a red light covered him before he got pulled inside the ball. Tetsuya went forward ignoring the surprise looks from the remaining three evil dragons. And the laughing Tiamat and Kurumi behind him. And picked up the ball. Well I got a dragon type ball. A dark dragon type in this case I guess. He then looked back at the girls and said. Oh, I will be going ahead, come after you are done. Said Tetsuya before he activated Kemui and just walked straight through the hallway passing through the dragon's body. Once Tetsuya left the three remaining dragons blinked in surprise for a while, and then one of them shouted. What the hell happened just now where is Krom forget that after him laid and hey. Aren't you forgetting something? Said someone making the other dragons turn around. Once they turned around they saw Tiamat and her dragon from looking at them with a smirk and said, We still have an unfinished business here you know. Tiamat you might be a dragon king. But don't underestimate the three of us there is a reason why even dragons fear us. Kirumi looked at them and said, Hey Tiamat, let's just finish this soon and go after Tetsuya. Said Kirumi as she placed her hand on Tiamat's body. Soon Tiamat's skin started to emit orange glow as Kirumi covered her body and various markings started appearing in her. I am lending you my power so just one shot them. Said Kirumi. No need to say it twice. Said Tiamat and opened her mouth as energy started to gather in there. A tailed beast ball started to form in front of the mouth as well whose size continued to get bigger and bigger. The three dragon who saw that shivered from the sheer power that the two combined beasts were emitting and decided to attack them while they are giving them an opening. But just as they started preparing an attack, huge chakra arms came out of Tiamat's body and held the dragons and prevented them from forming an attack. And though the dragons broke through those arms, many different arms continued to attack them, making it impossible for them to prepare an attack, since they were busy dodging and blocking the incoming hands. Once Tiamat's and Kirumi's attacks were prepared a give number of hands launched towards the dragons and held them up in the air. Tiamat pointed her head towards the three dragons up in Tierra and said, I hope this doesn't destroy the whole area. Don't worry I have already locked the space, attack will not spread that much, said Kirumi. Tiamat then fired her attack comprising of a highly concentrated energy and an oversized tails beast bomb, which mixed up in the mid air and blasted through the roof. But soon the beam stopped ascending as it crashed to the edge of locked space. Looks like those mobs got vaporized even before they were able to reach the top, said Kirumi, as she turned back to her human form. Tiamat too turned back to her human form and said, well they would have lost even against me taking you into the equation was just an overkill. Both of them stared at the beam which they fired before they shrugged their shoulders and started walking in the direction where Tetsuya went. After walking for around 20 minutes both of them reached in front of a huge door. You think this is the place? Should be there was no turns on the way though there no smell, nor any signs of him coming here. Well he was in his intangible form. No way he would leave behind any scent or break through the door to go inside. Anyway there is only one way to find out. Said Tiamat as she knocked on the door and asked Tetsuya in there. And a few seconds after that the door started opening. And once it opened, it revealed Tetsuya standing in front of huge glass cylinder looking at something intently while some girl was standing near Tetsuya. Oh Kirumi Tiamat dome already. I heard a loud noise a while back seems like you two work together. Kirumi and Tiamat just nodded their heads in response as they looked towards the girl standing behind Tetsuya. The girl had short blonde hair and red eyes and seemed to be a few years older than Tetsuya's current teenage form. By the way, this here is Valerie Teeps, my hostage and the host of Sephra Crawl. Valerie, these are my teammates and lovers. The one with orange hair, Kirumi and the one with blue hair Tiamat, the Dragon Queen. Said Tetsuya introducing the two parties. Valerie immediately bowed her head greeting the two who introduced them as well. So what is this hostage business asked Kirumi. Well she is more or less the head of the Teeps faction. Though the old Lucifer was controlling her, she is still the head and since we are attacking her faction. I took her in as a hostage, said Tetsuya not thinking much about it. Uh huh, so what's the real story asked Tiamat knowing Tetsuya was just spouting bullshit. You, damn for speak. Valerie nodded her head and then started explaining what really happened. So, Tetsuya came and fought some people, and then rescued you from your brother who was experimenting on you, and then healed you, said Tiamat. Um, well that's the gist of it, said Valerie. Tiamat nodded her head and then looked at the huge glass cylinder and asked, and what is it that you are doing? Hmm, science experiment, said Tetsuya looking towards the cylinder which was filled with water and some bodies were in there. What kind of experiment? I am checking how much time it takes for different bodies, who are weak to holy element to melt in a high quality holy water, said Tetsuya. From the right, we have a Beelzebub and a Smodius, a Leviathan and last, but not the least a vampire. Aren't these the descendants of the original Maas and that vampire must be the brother that the girl just talked about? Well when I entered the room, the vampire said that he wanted to do an experiment with me so, I am doing an experiment with him just as he wished for. Kirumi and Tiamat looked towards Valerie who looked down and said, I don't know they were just like that when I woke up. That's fine and all but why are you looking at him so passionately asked Kirumi. Tetsuya looked towards them and said because of this. 
Aang cut his thumb a bit and immediately Valerie latched onto his thumb sucking the blood out of it. But a second later she said, uh, it closed again. But immediately realized what she just did and blushed in embarrassment and looked away. Apparently my blood is too arrestable for vampires even for dampers but my regeneration doesn't allow them to suck much. Said Titsaya looking towards Valerie who was too embarrassed to say anything. Here, don't shy I don't mind since you are Gasper's friend. He is just like my brother. Said Titsaya. Ah, it seems like the vampire melts first. Said Titsaya as he noticed the vampire vanishing away in the holy water. Aang gave some blood to Valerie who looked like she was in heaven and had a blissful look on her face. Titsaya waited for there for a while sitting on one of the beds there which the vampire used to experiment on their test subjects. He then looked at the bodies of the mad descendants and noted that the Leviathan took the longest to melt because of their affinity to water. Valerie was listening to the tales of Tiamat and Kirumi, who were telling out their tales with the chest buffed up, since the young Danfa was looking at them with glittering eyes. Titsaya looked at the three of them who were sitting a bit away from him having their chat while eating something, since Valerie was very hungry after the experiment. Meanwhile Titsaya was checking the situation with the other, especially the ones that were left outside the castle dealing with the grunts. Though he didn't need to worry that much since the Holy Sword users along with George, were more than enough to deal with the enemies who were quite weak against Holy Element. The God Killers, the Valkyrie and the Heiress of Gremory too, didn't have any problems, as they just brute forced their way through them. But still the most impressive was Asami who somehow unlocked the Crimson Queen mode, and along with her Dragon Slayer magic and her sword was flying all around the field, destroying the enemies without much problems. Saiji and Sereg also faced a lot of evil dragons on their way, though there were more than enough for them as Tetsuya made sure to make Saji unlock his scale mail, and Sereg was acting up as always just punching the dragons away. Regulus did the job of dealing with the vampires and devils, not wanting to interfere with his king's fun. Cow Cow and Loki were as expected, making the things way difficult for their enemies as a fight against a god, and the wielder of the strongest holy element weapon was way too much to deal against for the vampires and devils. Though the thing that Tetsuya was most interested in was the fight against the grandpa and the grandson as Rizavan was like a typical villain was telling his plan to his grandson, and both Vali and Biki were listening to his plan with a serious look on their faces. The fight between the two devils then started once the old man was done with his explanations, and Biki made sure that nobody else interfered in the battle, just as Vali told him to. Rizavim, though had an advantage because of his sacred gear canceller, but Vali came prepared for that as Tetsaya had already warned him about it. Black snake-like projections started to come out of Vali's body as started wrap around him, that compared with his stats that improved a lot by the training he did at Tetsaya's place along with the dragon gods, made him stand just slightly below the superclass devil. Though Tetsaya was surprised that office gave that much of her power to Vali. He also found out that it was just temporary, and the power will fade away after a certain amount of time. So you decided to go with a temporary solution, huh? Pretty unexpected from Vali. But still, a good method nonetheless. Fought Tsutsaya. Vali, then merged with the power as his armor appeared once again, though it was the queen version of his sacred gear. The Imperio Juggernaut Drive, and not the Diabolo's Dragon Lucifer form. Rizavan was shocked seeing Vali able to use his sacred gear, and tried again to use his sacred gear canceller. But the next instant, Vali appeared in front of him, and punched him through multiple walls, and then started dividing his power. Once Rizavim's power started to divide, Vali simply fired shit ton of demonic energy blasts at him without baby care, as he was using his grandfather's power against him. Rizavim too didn't hold back and attacked Vali in return, but Vali was easily able to dodge those attacks, or just simply divided them, and added it to his own power. Once he thought that the old man was weakened enough he came in front of him and said, just suffer till your death now, and released some of Albion's poison on the old devil, and pushed the old man down, and sat on top of him to not let him escape and squirm till death. But still the old devil tried to kill his grandson with his power, but his weakened self could not damage the armor even a bit, and Vali just took out his phone and started recording the old man's death struggle. In the end not being able to deal with his grandson Rizavan pleaded to let him live, but Vali just looked at him after 10 whole minutes of pleading and asked, Huh, were you saying anything? Making the old devil totally speechless at his words. Seeing that the old devil was not saying anything, Vali just shrugged his shoulders and held his phone and searched up some butts to use them later at night. Midway during his search the old devil died, but that went unnoticed by Vali who was busy doing the research. It was until Biku told him that everything was over that Vali realized that his grandfather died. He then deactivated his sacred gear and then made sure to not even leave even a speck of the old devil's corpse. Tetsaya who saw all that felt that everything was a bit anticlimactic, especially how Vali dealt with his grandfather, but just shrugged his shoulders and thought, well, I am awesome, so it's natural that my presence will make some awesome changes as well. Tetsaya then contacted Vali and said, happy now, but dragon, I am happy. But don't use that title you asshole, said Vali walking back towards the entrance. My grandfather is dead, so we can go back now. I will treat you all, so let's party once we go back, said Vali with an excited tone. Tetsaya nodded his head and said, that's fine, but can you fetch the holy grail that Rizavan was in possession with for me? It must be somewhere around the room you just fought. Sure, what does it look like, asked Vali. Hum, you can just feel the holy energy that the grail must be emitting and take it, right? It must be quite a powerful holy signature. Vali and Biku then stood at their spots and started searching for the holy signature of the grail, but were not able to find any signature except for the Cow Cow sacred gear. Titsaya who heard that was confused and called Valerie towards him checked once again, but still found that one of the grail were missing. Not knowing what was happening Titsaya tried to connect the missing grail with the ones inside Valerie, and called Vali again. 
Is there a light glowing anywhere near you? I am trying to connect to the grail, so it must be responding and glowing. But still the answer was the same from Vali's end. Titsaya who was confused by what was happening himself searched for the grail, and found its signature at a dimensional gap. Immediately his eyes widened and he heard a voice. Ah, uh, so you could Kun's theory was correct. Titsaya Shiba does possess a mind reading ability. Huh? Yahoo, am I audible? Well, I really look at my prey very carefully. Titsaya was shocked hearing these voices as he clearly heard and saw Rizavam and Yukud present in the dimensional gap with an army half the size of the ones present here. So as I told Vali earlier, let's start the plan, said Rizavam with a smile as he snapped his finger, and Yukud started to break some seals. Seeing that there was another Rizavam and Yukud in the dimensional gap, Titsaya immediately teleported back to his house in the chamber where Yukud was present, and to his surprise, Yukud was still there currently suffering in the Jinjutsu that he casted on him earlier. Titsaya immediately pulled him out of it and immediately checked his brain, but didn't find anything weird with it. He seemed to have all the memories and knowledge like the Euclid should have. Hey, was there your twin brother or something like that? Asked Tetsaya. The silver-haired devil looked at Tetsaya as if he was an idiot, and then glared at him for making him see that illusion he was earlier in. But Tetsaya ignored that and said, look here then, and then projected a screen which showed the scene of another Euclid and Rizavim along with the army. It's live, added Tetsaya, and then glanced at Euclid, who seemed to be shocked as well seeing that scene. What is this about Tetsaya Shiba? Is this one of your illusions as well? Asked Euclid. Jude, we just killed that old geezer of a Lucifer, and the next moment I knew it. He was alive and kicking there in the dimensional gap, along with that other Euclid in the army did you by chance f u asterisk had someone without protection, and that Euclid looking devil is your said Tetsaya. Stop. Don't say a f u asterisk king word after that. I will tell you this one and only one time. There is no way I will do something that disgraceful with anyone, as I have pledged to give my virginity to Grafia one Isama. Said Euclid with total determination. Tetsaya stared at him for a while and then said, So you're a virgin, and are planning to be one for the rest of your life understood virgin brother-in-law. Euclid who heard that don't know why, but he felt that he took some major damage from what Tetsaya said. On to the important subject, who is that other Euclid, then? Asked Tetsaya. I don't know. Said Euclid truthfully as Tetsaya had already checked his memories. Just as he was about to ask something else the door of the room opened and both Raya and Office came in, with Raya having a serious look on her face. Seeing that Tetsaya sighed and said, so it is about to begin, huh? He then called the heads of all the factions that he knew and said, um have any of you ever traveled in a flight? Hearing this question most of them were confused as to why Tetsaya would be asking such a question, but the more experienced ones out of them felt that the situation was way Tetsaya ish and Azazel immediately asked, how much are we screwed? Screwed enough that having all of your those magazines to be destroyed would be better than this, said Tetsaya in a serious tone. Azazel, Odin and Zeus immediately turned serious, as well as now they felt that the situation was way too grim to be underestimated. Serzichas looked at Tetsaya with a pleading look and asked, Tetsaya it's not connected to Rome where Riaz is, right? Tetsaya looked at the red-haired Siscon and said, yes and no, Riaz along with some of us fought there in Rome against. Tetsaya then told them about what happened back in Rome hearing which Serzich's side that Riaz was safe, and at the same time was surprised knowing about Rizavim. So he is defeated right? What's the problem now? Asked Susano. Well we thought that we killed the old devil which we actually did, but for some reason another one of the old devil and you could were found in the dimensional gap, and are currently unsealing the beast of apocalypse. So I thought to warn you about the same and be prepared for quite a huge battle. Said Tetsaya making all the faction leaders serious. How much time do we have? Asked Michael. Tetsaya looked at Raya who said two minutes. Tetsaya looked back at the faction leader who were looking back at him not saying anything at all. The silence continued for a few seconds which was suddenly broken by Azazel who said, All right, all files deleted from my computer I don't want to leave any regrets behind. Hearing that all of them focused on Azazel who was sitting back comfortably in his chair and said, Ah, uh, I informed all the other factions all around the world about it while Tetsaya was explaining. So they heard about all this as well and the Hindu, Celtic, and the Chinese pantheons agreed to help. I already informed the massacres from my faction to spread the news, so us fallen angels are ready. Azazel then looked at everyone with his chest puffed up, and an expression which was saying, I am way better than you idiots. Hearing that none of the other faction leaders took any more time and went back to prepare before saying, We may be late, but we for sure will come to aid you. Now only Azazel and Tetsaya were there, and Azazel asked, if we came back alive, make sure too to give me some of your files, you still have the hard copies with you. You know me very well. Huh? Said Azazel with a sagely nod. Suddenly Azazel's gaze fell on Euclid and said, yo, how's your life been these days? It was fine until this fucker decided to butt in. Said Euclid while glaring towards Tetsaya. Shut it virgin. Huh? This guy's still a virgin you are the followed of the devil Lucifer, not the angel one what's up with all this shit? Asked Azazel with a surprised tone. None of your business even Michael found a way to let the angels have sex with others. And you are still a virgin pathetic. Said Azazel with a displeased look on his face. But suddenly Azazel's eyes widened as he asked, is there a problem with your thing? Euclid who was getting angrier hearing Azazel's comments, glared at him and said, no it isn't. What will you do? Suck it. Huh, no I don't have thar dash. If not then just keep f you asterisk king quiet you fallen ass ho no not asshole you fallen bastard. Jude, just chill no need to be that angry. Said Azazel looking at a monitor checking out how the preparation is going on. He then looked towards Tetsaya and asked, hasn't two minutes already passed? Yup, I have forced teleported Vali and the other strong ones there. Said Tetsaya. Then why are you not going yet? Asked Azazel. Knowing that old Lucifer, he must be monologuing right now. 
So I will go after 15 minutes or by the time, feel the power rise up considerably, said Tetsaya shrugging his shoulders. Azazel nodded his head thinking that it was fine and then asked, so who will be hosting the victory party? Who knows not me for sure I don't have enough space to accommodate all the factions at the same time, said Tetsaya. Neither do I wait if we merge the land that you got from Hades and my faction land, then it would be fine, proposed Azazel. Hum, fine then I don't mind, so you are the host then. Only if I return back alive if I die make sure to bury my body. If left with all my collection, I will not leave anything behind, said Azazel with a gentle expression on his face. Tetsaya stared at him for a while and said, sure, I will do that, so make sure that you die there. Nah, I will not try that, there are plenty more thing I have to do in my life, said Azazel laughing out loud before standing up from his seat and saying, well, enough chit chat for now. Let's get going. The space has started distorting. Titsaya too stood up from his seat and was about to go. But before he could Euclid said, make a screen for me to project the live show. Titsaya looked at Euclid and just shrugged his shoulders before making a screen for him and saying, wish me luck. Euclid just snorted and said, I hope you die. After which he immediately felt his stomach making a sound. Not again damn IT. Titsaya came out of the room he was in earlier, and soon came where the other members of his team were and nodded seeing that they were prepared in their battle gear. Titsaya looked at them and said, you can go all out but make sure to not get the allies get involved in your attacks. All of them nodded and soon a magic circle appeared under their feet and they teleported to the dimensional gap. As soon as they appeared Raya waved her hand and said, I will get the shell that I left behind, and then teleported away. Titsaya who saw the old Lucifer still monologuing once again tried to read his mind, but immediately felt something blocking it. But this time he didn't stop and instead broke through the mental defense of the Lucifer and said, So that's how you did that you asshole. Feeling that someone just raped his mind Rizavim looked towards the newcomers and said, Ara Ara, Titsai Shiba. It's not good to look into other people's mind like that you know. I feel violated. Hearing him say that both Vali and Titsai frowned and decided to just forget what happened just now. Titsai and the others then came beside people who were involved in the assault at the Teeps faction, and Vali said, I don't know whether am I lucky or unlucky. On one hand I get to kill this asshole twice. But on the other hand, why the hell do I have to kill this asshole twice? Titsaya looked at him for a while before shifting his gaze towards Arthur and asked, please give us the summary of his monologue that he must be giving on for quite some time. Arthur nodded his head and said, and the simplest way to say that is, he had a way to make a clone of office using some of her power, but that failed because of your intervention. And later he used that power of himself and the rest of his subordinates, only this time the energy he used was that of the vampires from the Teeps faction, but still have them the memory to that point, and then hid himself with his army here in the dimensional gap, since somehow that assistant of his hypothesized, that you can read minds and prepared a barrier for that on his and his leaders. Minds after that he gave a brief rundown of his plan, and all about going to other world, and how powerless we all are in front of that um creature thingy he calls it Trihixa or something. Tetsaya nodded his head and looked at Euclid who smoked seeing his gaze, and showed him a middle finger. Seeing that Tetsaya smiled and said, Hey virgin brother-in-law, do you want to know what happened to your body double? Hearing him being called like that Euclid frowned, but all of a sudden his face started to turn pale, as Tetsaya started sending what all happened to the other Euclid from Euclid's own perspective. Once all the info was transferred Euclid had his head in hands, and had a lifeless look in his eyes. Rizavim who was beside you could stared at him for a while and said, you were still a virgin question mark dot 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 damn he then looked at Tetsaya and said, you must have done something way intense to the other you could come, aren't you a not kid? And looked at him with a playful smile and wiggled his eyebrows. Tetsaya looked at Vali and asked, hey Vali, do you mind if I kill him this time? For some reason my hand is really itching. Vali stared at Tetsaya for a while and said, no Tetsaya nodded and said, okay I am not guaranteeing that he will not die because of a misfire. Vali immediately equipped his balance breaker armor and said, a race to see who wins, it is then, and smoked behind his helmet. Rizavim looked towards his grandson and Tetsaya and then asks, I don't mind you both playing something, seeing that you two are very young, and can still play but do you mind telling me why is there a barrier around us we are in dimensional gap, so I don't think there is a need for a barrier to prevent damage to the surroundings. Tetsaya smiled and said, who that's not a protection barrier that's a time dilation barrier. Hearing that all of the looked at him with a confused look on their faces not understanding why he would use a time dilation barrier. But all of a sudden Rizavim's eyes widened and he said, You are one crazy mother f you asterisk king son of a bitch aren't you? Just as he said that Tetsaya fired a blast of magic energy towards him destroying his right arm in an instant and immediately both Arthur and Tetsaya said in unison, language. While both of them covered lay phase is, Rizavim looked at his right side, seeing he had one arm less and said, Oh, that was my favorite arm. But soon a blob started to bubble up near the injured area, and soon his arm came back. He then gave his arms a few practice swings and said, I'm good as new. Good job Euclid Khan, said Rizavim patting a lifeless Euclid. Soon various magic circles started surrounding them, and people from different factions started appearing on there. Seeing that the fight had still not started most of them were surprised. But Azazel looked around and said, So the time dilation idea really worked, huh? Sometimes I think how the hell did I become such a baddest genius? With a smug look on his face. Ah, so it was your plan Uncle Azazel, said Rizavim. Ah, if it ain't my nephew, wanna give your uncle a hug? I have chocolates for you, said Azazel while opening his arms for a hug. Every one of them all together decided to ignore the two idiots, and Sersiches came forward and said Rizavim as a devil in the current Lucifer, I will ask you to kindly surrender. Rizavim looked towards Isaaches and said in mocking tone, 
Ah, uh, if it isn't the fact Ash okay, you will not surrender, I understand, said Saizich's and went back to his spot earning several confused glances towards him. Hey, what the hell was that Saizich Chan? Not cool at all, said Sarah Fall with slight angry expression on her face. Shut up. I don't want to be anywhere near that demon queen, said Saizich's with a straight face trying his best to hide his scared expression. If you forgot reread CH 257 and 258 all of them looked at the spot where Saizich's was earlier and saw Asia, standing there humming a tune. Seeing that everyone was looking at her she smiled and waved her hand. Hi all of them stood at their spots without saying anything, and then looked at Saizich's, not knowing why he was scared of such a sweet girl. Seeing how Saizich's was being looked at, those who already knew the reason of Saizich's dear, were barely able to hold back from laughing. Don't get decent by her outer appearance you will regret it you will surely regret it, said Saizich's making other think that the mayor was being crazy, and decided to leave it at that. Well I didn't get to say what I was going to but... Yes, I am not surrendering so shall we begin. Stress raw exclamation point exclamation point exclamation point asterisk suddenly the beast behind Rizavum roared, and immediately all the people became serious and ready to fight against the cow's brigade. Rizavum just smirked and said, oh, looks like the show is about to begin soon, hey. Eh? The battle suddenly started with all the cannon fodders from both the sides battling it out. Titsaya was standing with his group, and the same was done with the rest of the factions as well. Titsaya who looked around seeing who all the new people were found one of the new factions beside him and said, hello there, I am Titsaya Shiva. The people who were near him looked at him at the people from the other side, nodded their heads and their leader said, I am Shiva from the Hindu faction. It's nice to meet you although the circumstances are not very good. Titsaya looked at the trident holding god who was considered one of the strongest people all around the world and said, indeed, I must say it is quite unfortunate to meet you in a battle like this, and then raised his gun and fired a blast forward destroying a huge section of enemies. He then looked towards his team and said, the dragons are being a nuisance because of their defense, Asami, Asia, Ingvold, Hermari, and the other Nekashi deal with them. Asami and Asia immediately activated their balance breakers, and then launched forwards followed by the others. Titsaya then looked at the other faction heads and said, so shall we start the attack on the big guy? Well pointed towards Trahixa. The faction heads looked at the giant beast attacking the others, and was not damaged a bit by the attacks from the others, and gulped their saliva. Titsaya clapped his hands and said, all right, all right, before taking him down. We need to clear the area near him, as we can see only huge scale attacks are going to work. And we don't want someone from our side getting dragged in those right. So let's do that first. I will engage him during that time along with some of my friends. All of them widened their eyes and said, That is quite a good and safe idea for us, but who might these friends of yours be? Titsaya patted the shoulders of two of the girls beside him and said, These two and the third friend must be here now. Just as he said that a portal appeared above them and from it the official top dog of the world appeared in all his majesty, making all the people from both the sides looked at it with their mouths open wide, except for Euclid and Rizavum who now became serious as their biggest threat appeared just now. I will go with Barkaya as well, said a monotone voice, and Office got up near Raya as well and transformed into her dragon form, making the already shocked audience some more shocked. Do you really need me to go with those two? asked Kirumi looking around with a deadpan look on his face. Hey Tetsaya don't tell me your friends you just mentioned are the world's strongest and the second strongest, asked Azazel while pointing at the two dragons. Second strongest and third strongest I already beat Raya, said Tetsaya earning total silence from all the people in the dimensional gap except for Asia, who just punched a dragon away. By the way, Raya is great red just so you know, informed Tetsaya. He then looked around seeing that the fight was totally stopped, and then noticed the two silver head devils sneaking out of the zone which was restricting teleportation. He immediately got up in the air and fired a blast towards the two devils. But the attack was blocked by the huge beast, who roared back at him pulling people back into the battlefield. Fuck it, I am too old for this shit, said Azazel as he flew forward killing enemies on the way and was followed by the other faction's heads and all. Titsaya looked at Kirumi who looked back at him before he got back in his body and said, call me if I am actually needed. Titsaya just shrugged his shoulders as he saw the dragons, and the beast already started the battle in between themselves, seeing which Titsaya immediately separated the three of them in a barrier since the attacks were too intense for the nearby people. Meanwhile in another part of the battlefield, Asami and the company were dealing with the evil dragons. Ingvold who had taken control over many evil dragons using her sacred gear, was using them to attack their own kind. Suddenly Asia came near her and asked, What are you doing Ingvold San? Hum well I don't use it much, but my sacred gear allows me to manipulate dragons you know, said Ingvold making a barrier to stop an incoming blast. Hearing that Asia's eyes started twinkling and she said, an efficient way to deal with the dragons huh? A magic circle then appeared in front of her, and a huge evil draw dash asterisk c-o-u-g-h asterisk asterisk c-o-u-g-h asterisk. The familiar appeared, and roared loudly, earning the attention of many evil dragons on the field. Ingvold who noticed the twinkling in Asia's eyes thought, it is not going to be something good, and asked Asia just asking, but what are you planning? Asia showed a bright smile on her face, making all those who didn't knew her that much think that she was a saint and said Titsaisen and Fai Chan once told me, that I have dragon taming ability so, I am going to use that. With a cheerful tone, she then looked at her familiar and said, Ratsu it's your turn. The evil draw dash. The sprite dragon showed a malicious dash grin and nodded his head and immediately fired a very powerful lighting blast towards the evil dragons, making them screech in pain. Asia then took a deep breath and with a cheerful tone said, Listen here you low lives WHO should just drop dead I want to form a pact with you winged reptilian shit so WHO wants to cooperate. But none of the dragons showed any intentions to do so. Or more like the power of the lightning was so intense 
that they were unable to do so. The smile never left Asia face as she looked at her familiar and said, do it. And immediately the power of the attack increased and killed all the dragons, without even leaving behind their ashes. Those who saw that scene were all struck not knowing what to say. While this was the scene a certain Siscom suddenly yelled, see that did you finally saw the demon hiding behind that innocent smile you're regretting IT now right? but was totally ignored by others who were busy fighting. Asia pouted and said, Oh, those dragons must be the stubborn ones not even one of them accepted. But suddenly her face brightened and she said, Oh well, there are a lot of these reptile shits here to try. And looked at another group of evil dragons who immediately tried to run away, seeing that they were being looked at by those innocent eyes. Ratsu and once again at the lightning was shot by the familiar. Asia this time got closer to the dragons who were being shocked and asked, Hey, do any of you low lives want to make a pact with me? With an innocent look on her face. But the dragons who could see the black magic energy gathered near her hands, were able to feel the dreadful feeling coming from it, and immediately shook their heads in denial. Asia immediately fired her magic forwards, engulfing all the dragons in her blast, who started screaming in pain and agony, as all their cells in their bodies were being continuously destroyed by the negative healing magic. Shem PH, another group of mean dragons, let's go Ratsu. We will look for another group. And got on top of her familiar, and the demon king, and the evil dragon took off making all the people who just saw the deadlines of Asia's power shiver in fear, making a mental note to stay away from her. As Asia was busy doing a massac dash asterisk c-o-u-g-h asterisk asterisk c-o-u-g-h asterisk taming the dragons, the other people kindly got out of her way, and were busy dealing with the rest of the cow's brigade members. Titsaya who was guarding the area near the dragons and the beast so as to not let anyone get caught in their mess was occasionally dealing with stronger of the evil dragons. He also kept an eye on the two silver head devils and noticed that Rizavan was currently stronger than he originally was. Something that he thought was thanks to Euclid who found a way to modify his and his master's body. Though the said genius was still down and was not able to recover from the damage he received from getting the memories of the other Euclid. While Titsaya was keeping an eye on the surroundings, a trident brushed past him killing the army of dragons in front of it. Titsaya looked at the person who threw the spear and said, you sure are not willing to hold back and flaunt your title as the destroyer. Shiva who summoned his trident back looked at Tetsaya and said, and you seems to have a lot of free time idling around here just like that. Tetsaya who heard that didn't feel offended and said, well, I can surely deal with a lot, and fired another blast from his gun, killing a huge number of opponents at once and then said, I am also called the god of destruction, you know though. I prefer to be called a man of culture, so to refer to me as that Shiva who saw the power of Tetsaya's attack, nodded his head, feeling that the attack was indeed powerful and asked, then why not take action on your own? Tetsaya shrugged his shoulders and said, many reasons, first, that I am here making sure none of you get caught in between the three top powers below. Me of course, but still top powers nonetheless. Second, if I dealt with all this here, the other factions might get over-reliant on me, at least the ones who are allies with me. Third, what do you think will the other faction will think of someone who dealt with a whole terrorist organization, and the a being which is even considered a myth amongst the supernatural factions being on par with the world's strongest creature? Shiva remained silent for a while, and thought about what Tetsaya said, and after a while narrowed his eyes and said, they will admire and fear you, which will lead to them making an alternate alliance to deal with someone way stronger than them, which will ultimately ruin my life on the other hand, if we let them participate, and let them think that we relied on them as well to deal with such a situation, those feelings of fear and administration will not be too extreme you, must be quite knowledgeable about it. Since you are one if not the strongest gods in this world, aren't you? Shiva nodded his head in response, and then with a smile said, I see, it seems like you are a good and admirable personality as well, along with the powers. Tetsaya nodded, but all of a sudden both of them raised their weapons, as they noticed a horde of dragons trying to take advantage of their distracted selves. Both the destroyers then fired their attacks towards the dragons, wiping them out without even leaving a trace of them behind. Both of them then looked up, and Tetsaya raised his hand and curled it into a fist. Hum what's that for? Why are you raising your fist like that? Tetsaya who heard that question widened his eyes in surprise, and then thought, ah, an innocent one after a long time I, so gonna enjoy this. It's a kind of greeting, two people bump their fists against each other's, you know like handshakes we call it fisting. Azazel who was nearby the two destroyers, suddenly started coughing like crazy, and was laughing while doing it as well. He then looked at Tetsaya with a surprised look on his face and thought, he has some guts messing with one of the world's top 10, and the head honcho of one of the strongest factions around the world. Fisting, huh? Said Shiva as he bumped his fist with Tetsaya's. He then looked at his hand and said, what do you know? You get to know new things even in a battlefield I will tell about it to my family as well. Tetsaya nodded with a smile on his face and said, make sure to specially mention about it to your wife. Huh? Asked Shiva with a confused look on his face. Oh nothing. Sorry I was thinking about something else. By the way can you stop your mind reading? It's not going to work on me. Even Raya I mean Great Red was not able to do it. Shiva widened his eyes in surprise and then lowered his head a bit and said, sorry. It's just that we being in battle. Makes me want to know what someone is thinking, especially someone who is new, and had the power comparable if not greater than me. Titsaya just patted the head of the other destroyer who was smaller than him and said, It's fine, no need to worry. Now why don't you go and deal with them while I continue my guarding duty here? And gave him a slight push. Shiva who was surprised at being treated like a child, just followed what Titsaya said, and then left to deal with the enemies. Meanwhile Titsaya who just sent the god of destruction away, 
Mei felt that someone was trying to contact him, and made magic circle near his here and asked, What is it Dai Hor? You finished what I asked you to do? Yes, it's done, and I have that man captured not that it was difficult considering he was already pretty beaten up during the attack on the underworld. So what should I do with him? Hem he is technically my father-in-law would to be wait there I will send a clone. You get back to your post of protecting the underworld just in case, said Tetsuya and made a clone. The clone then saluted the original and then teleported away. Well time for the fuck cut man to become the dead man, muttered Tetsuya while looking at Asia who just passed by him. Hey Asia, you doing good. Asia who was sitting on her dragon in her balance breaker, looked towards Tetsuya with a smile, and so did her dragon and said, yes, we are fine Tetsuya-san. No need to worry. We found an effective way to deal with them we are trying for it to work, so just wait for a bit. And then flew away. Anyone who heard them could feel that an innocent and cheerful girl was trying her best to help them it's just that the blood dripping from her face and fists along with the blood around the dragon's mouth and teeth made the imagination of the people who saw them turn a total 180 degrees. Tetsuya just smiled at her and used his magic to clear off the blood off her. While the battle was going on the mouse were were being taken care of by the horde of evil dragons and devils. Though none of them was affected by them getting surrounded and just kept on blasting Jebway through them. Serzichas was making sure of not leaving any dragons near him as he heard that the demon queen was looking out for dragons to tame them. And in his opinion, having her more dragons was a recipe for disaster for the whole world, and decided to make some effort to ensure world peace. Ijuka, Seraphal and Falbeam looked at the leader of the mass, and just shook their heads. It was the first time they had seen him like that, and weren't sure how to deal with it. Though none of them were going to say anything to him, as they knew how much trouble was caused during the attack on the underworld, and Serzich's being the inchage of the domestic affairs of the underworld, worked his ass off to make sure everything was fine, and none of them were in the mood of switching places. With the red-haired Mao, Ijuka patted his best friend's shoulder and said, just bear with for a while. I will arrange a holiday for you after this is over. Serzichas looked at him with a peaceful smile on his face and said, Ah, don't worry I have already asked Tetsaya to help me regarding that. So you don't need to do anything. In fact I invite all three of you as well, since it would be pretty boring on my own. Hum is that so? Well then I will make sure to make some room in my schedule, said Ajuka, while the other two mass just smiled seeing that Serzichas was fine a bit. Aren't you being optimistic thinking that you would be able to live after this, you fake mass? Suddenly all four of them heard a voice and turned around to see Rizavim looking at them with a smile on his face. You interrupted my speech earlier Mr. Fake Lucifer. So, was there a need for that in the first place? You would be saying something that I have heard a lot of times from the descendants of original mass a lot of times anyway. Aren't you being too out of line being in front of a real Lucifer? Lucifer or not, you and your ways are not something that I can ever respect. So don't think that I would spare you or something, just because you are a devil like me. Ha! Huh. A devil like you? Don't make me laugh you faker. There is no way my magnificent self is comparable to the likes of you. Said Rizavim and brushed his hair. Serzichas, what should we do about him? Asked Falbium. Oh, about that I would like to see what the fake Lucifer is capable of first hand, so if you don't mind shall we dance? Said Rizavim as a grin appeared on his face. Serzich's robe disappeared as he said, keep a bit of distance from me, and then came forward. Rizavim's smile didn't falter as he saw the crimson head man coming forward. The auras around both the Lucifers started getting denser and denser, and in just a blink of an eye, both of them were on the level of high Satan class. So you are holding back against me. Huh, gotta say, not very happy seeing a faker holding back against me, said Rizavim. Shut up, like you yourself are not holding back, said Serzichas as he gathered a dense ball of power of destruction in his hand and fired it towards Rizavim. Rizavim dodged the attack rather easily, but still looked back seeing the ball of destruction, coming in contact with a dragon and destroying it in an instant. Stris w-h-i-s-t-l-e asterisk you sure want to deal quite a bit of damage from the beginning huh, said Rizavim still looking behind, but the raised his hand as he blocked a kick from Serzichas, which made a strong gust of wind. Serzichas expression didn't change as the power of destruction surrounded his hands once again, and he fired a beam towards Rizavim, who covered his hand with demonic energy, and flicked the beam away. Though the demonic energy around his hand immediately got destroyed by the pod, he then pushed Serzich's leg away using his other end and then fired a blast again at Serzich's who easily dodged the beam. But seeing him dodge Rizavim's smoke making Serzich's confused as he turned and saw the beam heading towards Ria's and her peerage. Seeing that Serzich's eyes widened as he immediately rushed towards his sister and her peerage. But the next instant Rizavim appeared above him and said, Oh, don't do that. The night is still young you know. And fired another series of blasts at Serzichas who simply destroyed those attacks using his pod. Serzix then came behind Ria's peerage. And then fired a beam with his own pod to destroy the attack. Ria's are you fine? Get away from here. The intensity of the battle here is going to be at another level from now on. Serzichas said while looking at Ria's from the corner of his eyes. And making sure to keep an eye of Rizavim. Ria's turned around to look at her brother with a surprised look on her face. But after hearing his words, a determined expression appeared on her face. Serzichas didn't say anything and immediately moved his hand and said, What is the meaning of this? Who are you? Asked Serzichas in a demanding tone as he held Rhea's hand which had a dagger aimed at Serzichas. Hey hey here. Hearing that a malicious grin appeared on Rhea's brace, and her peerage turned around as well with a similar grin on their faces. Rhea's body then began changing, and soon a devil appeared in her and her peerage's place, with all of them being at ultimate class level. All of them then threw the dagger towards Serzichas, who immediately released the pod, 
now knowing that it wasn't her sister in her peerage, and killed them in an instant. He then glared at Rizavam as Pod started to gather around him, and the aura started turning denser and said, You are quite daring seeing that you used my sister against me. Hey gotta say, you were quite ruthless there, even though that devil had your sister's appearance just a moment ago. Huh, are you out of your mind that low life tried to take the appearance of the world's most beautiful and cutest little sister? He should be glad that his death was Atlas a painless one. He then fired a big wave of Pod at Rizavam, who made a barrier to block the attack but the barrier only stood for a couple of seconds before it too get destroyed. Rizavam immediately tried to dodge, but was not able to do that in time, and got his legs destroyed completely by the attack. Rizavam looked at his now missing legs, and then looked back at Serzages and said, Huh, you didn't got my balls. Was all that Rizavam said as his legs started to regenerate back making Serzages narrow his eye and thinking, that is not a power that a Lucifer should possess then. That means that he must have modified that body of his somehow. You faker, let's get serious now. I still have a grandson to kill you know. So let's hurry up. And they immediately started powering up. Serzix too started powering up, and the area around them started to get chaotic by sheer demonic energy that the two of them were releasing, with not intention of taking it back in their bodies. Titsaya who saw that made a barrier around them, and then looked back at the other god of destruction fighting destroying the enemies with his trident and said, You? Really are getting serious there, Shiva. Don't get someone jet caught in your attacks. Shiva looked back and said, Don't worry about that, the title of being one of the top 10, is not just for show you know. I can control my power and attacks. Titsaya nodded his head and said, By the way, did you know that there is a new term for those who are in the top 10? Huh, is that so? We don't get up to date with such kind of information back at Kailash. What is the new term? Asked Shiva still fighting the enemies. Those who are in the top 10 are called Lolikans nowadays. Said Tetsaya with a smile on his face. Huh, Lolikan. So that is the new term. Asked Shiva with a curious look on his face. Tetsaya nodded his head with a friendly smile and said, You are now a Lolikan Shiva, so be proud of that. Shiva who saw Tetsaya's friendly and trustworthy smile nodded his head and with a smile on his face said, A Lolikan, the god of distraction, Shiva fine I accept that new title. Tetsaya smiled and made sure to recall the scene for future and said, Yeah, so go forth and show them the power of a Lolikan. Shiva who heard that smiled and thought, He really is a great person, cheering for someone he just met, and helping someone like me, who is not that up to date with the world. He then took a deep breath and said, I will show you the might of a true Lolikan, and gripped his trident tightly and immediately rushed towards the enemies, destroying holes of them in an instant. Titsaya just smiled and said ignorance is such a bliss. Serzich's and Rizavam's power continued to surge higher and higher for, and soon both of them were at super class level, and had changed their appearances. Serzich's looked like a humanoid creature made of power of destruction, while Rizavam also looked demonic instead of being human like he was before. Ham Euclid Kun's enhancements are there? Let's do it faker. But Serzich's didn't say anything, and just casually swung his hand firing a huge amount of pot at Rizavam. Rizavam immediately sidestepped and dodged the attack and fired his own demonic energy in a similar fashion as Serzich's did. Though his energy just kept getting destroyed as it reached towards Serzich's, and in the end only a small amount of it hit Serzich's, which did next to nothing to the pod covered Serzich's. Serzich's then rushed towards Rizavam and punched him. Rizavam who saw the punch coming towards him covered his hand in demonic energy and blocked it and said, don't be too full of yourself, and punched him with his other hand. Serzich's blocked the incoming punch and said, I would like to say the same to you as well, and then started to release his energy thinking of destroying Rizavam in one go. But Rizavam didn't even flinch a bit and release his own demonic energy, which was pushing back Serzich's energy. Let me tell you about one of the enhancements that you could come did to my body I no longer felt pain, and kicked Serzich's abdomen. Serzich's who saw the attack coming towards him didn't even try to dodge, and instead increased his energy output destroying Rizavam's energy, and engulfing Rizavam inside it. After a while the energy dissipated and nothing was left of the Lucifer. Serzich's then turned around and was about to go back. But then he noticed a blob of some kind appearing there, and soon it grew back into Rizavam, eh? Naked Rizavam. Rizavam looked at himself and then looked towards Serzich's and said, Just wait a bit I need to cover my awesomeness. Serzich's who heard that without any hesitation, fired various blasts of pod at the Lucifer totally in the willing to destroy him while he was distracted. In another part of the battlefield, Tetsaya was guarding the big three, while also attacking Trahiksa from time to time to utter it down. Soon a magic circle appeared beside him, and one of Tetsaya's clones appeared with person sitting on a wheelchair, with his hands and legs tied to the chair and a gag on his mouth. The clone then disappeared, and Tetsaya looked at person and said, Good to see you after a long time Zio-san. Tetsaya as he smiled as he looked at the crimson head father in law of his. Zyotafik wanted to say something, but because of the gag was just making some non-understandable noises. Tetsaya removed the gag from his mouth and said, Let's not beat around the bush and get straight to topic. Our working with the cow's brigade and was the one who informed the Shiba family about Miyuki's whereabouts. Hearing his question Zyotafik's eyes widened a bit, but soon turned normal as he said, What is the meaning of this Tetsaya Shiba? You do know that you are treating a member of council who is still recuperating like this, right? Are you declaring a war dash haha how I do that against someone who willingly came to aid all the factions against the cow's brigade even though you are still injured? You will be a role model for the devils of the younger generation, said Tetsaya with a smile on his face.
Hearing that Zildafik narrowed his eyes now knowing what the human in front of him was planning. So were you the one who told the shivers? Asked Titsaya once again. No it was not me. Replied Zildafik with a firm tone. Ah. He is lying the screen turned red. Said a voice from behind Zildafik baking him surprised. Soon a person came forward from behind him. And revealed himself to be the governor general of the fallen angels. Here see it's red. Said Azazel as he showed the screen of the device that he was holding to Titsaya and Zildafik. What the hell is that and how can you blame me governor? Demanded the crimson haired patient. Azazel looked at him and said, This here is a lie detector that I developed which as you can guess detects lies. And before you question its credibility I will say that both its credibility and accuracy are great, and it was even proven by a game of truth and dare that I played with Titsaya, Vali and Odin, in which a lot of my duck secrets were revealed and, you must know that when I am saying that those were my duck secrets you can tell how deep and embracing the shit must have been I am never doing that again. Both Titsaya and Zeodafik looked at Azazel for a while, before Titsaya looked at the redhead and said, Anyway Asia. Just as Tetsaya called her a lot of cries of pain and against were heard, and a few moments later Asia arrived on top of her dragon along with Ingvald, who was sitting on top of the dragon as well. What is it Tetsaya-san? said Asia cutely with blood-stained face. Can you my dear father-in-law he was not able to hold himself back, knowing both his children are fighting here with their lives on the line, said Tetsaya as he cleaned his sweet blonde haired nun who smiled brightly while having her face clean. Of course. Said Asia as a green glow enveloped her hand, and she punched the redhead's face, disfiguring it in an instant. Oof Tetsaya. I'm glad I am not your father-in-law. And patted Tetsaya's shoulder. Hum yeah, you are not my father-in-law, Mr. Brother-in-law. Said Tetsaya making the fallen angel confused when suddenly his eyes widened, and he asked with shock, D don't T tell me why you and G Gabriel. Tetsaya smiled and said, let's get along in future as well, brother-in-law. I won't let my sister marry someone like you, or so I wanted to say to someone. But it looks like I would not be able to do that anymore, said Azazel. Titsaya ignored him and then looked at Asia and Ingvald and said, throw him in front bigger group of dragons. Ingvald control them. I will control him make him fight some of the dragons for a while, and let him die bravely soon after that, by letting him become Dragon Chow, said Titsaya Bars. He cleaned the bloodstained sprite dragon as well. Ingvald banned Asia nodded and then left to fetch a group of dragons, while Titsaya manipulated his body and memories to let the man die courageously, and will let Sersiches and the others know about it later. He then looked at Azazel and said, Now then brother-in-law you will play the main role here. I don't like the sound of that at all change the way you call me back to normal and... What is the role? Complained Azazel. The traitor will injure the governor of fallen angels while there was busy dealing with some dragons, and get hit by a surprise attack. Then chase after the traitor who already was far away, and by the time you reach there he is already Dragon Chow. Explained Titsaya. Nice script. But why not you play the lead role? Asked Azazel. How? Many people do you think will believe that I got injured by a low life like him? Asked Titsaya with a deadpan look on his face. Azazel sighed and said, All right, let me show you how great of an actor I really am. Yes, and to help you I will make sure that the scene look real. Said Titsaya as he teleported away. Wait what? Said Azazel, but soon saw himself surrounded by a group of evil dragons. His brows twitched in annoyance as he yelled, Fuck you Titsaya, sorry brother-in-law I am straight. Replied Titsaya from somewhere else. Continuing their battle the super level Lucifers were firing huge blasts of their demonic energy at each other without thinking about consequences. The huge beams comprised of their demonic energies were clashing against each other trying to push the other back, but to no avail, as they kept on putting more and more energy behind it. You know Faker, I might as well think that you are enjoying seeing my awesomeness taking the fact that you are not letting me dress up or even cover it up, said Rizavim still naked and his hands stretched out firing the attack. Say whatever you want, there is no way I will let someone who tried to use my sister against me let go like that, said Sezik seriously as he once again increased the output of his energy, which started pushing the beam clash in his favor. Ka, this is really straining me a lot, muttered Rizavim as his face facial expression which has been relaxed for the whole time, started to crack up a bit. Ha, said Rizavim as his aura started to get grow even more, and increase the power of his attack, pushing them back to stalemate, making Serzich's in his bud form frown. Serzich's reserves of demonic energy were nearly half depleted because of his clash against the old man. He was pushing himself to the fullest, and had even killed the man for about a dozen of times. But the Lucifer in front of him just kept on reviving making him frustrated by this. He even dared to use Rhea's doppelgangers in the fight for about seven times as well, among which he even go hit once by them, but just shrugged it off. You know for a faker you are doing quiet well though. You swing that way I still can say you earned a tiny bit of respect from me, said Rizavim with a small smile on his face. Oh, as tiny as that wrinkled up joke of dick of yours, asked Serzichus sarcastically making the old Lucifer silent for a while. Rizavim took a deep breath and said, you know what forget it, you even lost that now. Serzik snorted and said, just shut the hell up already. Fine man, as you wish, said Rizavim as he stopped his attack and flew up above. Serzichus seeing that moved his hand to attack the old Lucifer, but Rizavim kept on dodging it. If you are trying to wear me out then that is very low of you, said Serzichus slightly annoyed by the geezer. Oh not at all. I am not waiting for you to wear out I am waiting for him to cheer up, said Rizavim. Ha! Huh, Dash Serzichus wanted to say something, but before he was able to he felt an attack coming towards him and moved from his spot. He then turned his head only to see a recovered Euclid heading towards Rizavim. Euclid then gave a cape to Rizavim who took it and wrapped it around his waist. Ooh windy, said Rizavim while winking towards Serzix. I really want to puke. 
Thought Serzages as his face cringed seeing the old Lucifer's antics. Now then Faker, you will face a true power ready Euclid. Euclid nodded and said, after this we are going to deal with Titsaya Shiva as well, right? Um yes yes and too, though I think Trahixa would probably be done with him by that time, said Rizavim thinking about the possibility. But while he was thinking Serzages had charged a huge amount of concentrated pod in his hand and fired it towards the silver head duo, who just shrugged their shoulder and let themselves get hit by the orb. Serzages who anticipated what they were probably thinking, stood at his place ready for the attack, but soon felt two presents approaching him. Where the hell is is that damn geezer? Asked Vali clad in his Imperio Juggernaut armor. Are you alright Serzix's San? Asked Tasami in her own Crimson Queen armor. You two what are you both doing here? Asked Serzix. That's bright Vali. Wait for a bit before it's your turn to get killed. Said a familiar silver head geezer again revive after death. Serzix and the two heavenly dragons turned their heads to see the silver head duo alive. And this time had their clothes on courtesy to Euclid. Damn geezer. How dare you make me kill you twice? Yell Vali. Asami Kun, go back, or you will get caught in our clash, said Serzichas without even looking at her. That won't be possible, Serzik San. Tetsaya made this barrier in a way that you can only enter, not exit until he wants, said Asami, ready to fight. Ask him to send you out, said Serzix. No time for that, said Asami, as she and the other two felt the energy increase in the silver head duo. Let me show you the true power of the body enhancements that Euclid Kun made, said Rizavim as both Euclid and Rizavim took a pose, and a light surrounded them with a few magic circles appearing around them. Just as the light died down, the magic circles revolved around the two of them for a while before it broke and revealed a different creature with four arms, an ash-colored body, silver hair and four eyes. Now let us see who kills who, grandson Faker, said a voice which seemed to be a mixture of the two silver heads. They, fu asterisk confused, said Asami as she looked at the new demon-like creature. But none of them responded as Rizid, the fusion name, appeared directly in front of the trio and punched the super devil away. The two heavenly dragons didn't took much time to register what happened and punched the demon simultaneously sending him flying. Divide boost both the heavenly dragon looked at each of them and said at the same time, together, and then nodded simultaneously as well. Sir Zix who was punched away soon balanced himself and followed the heavenly dragons, who were already battling the fused silver heads. Get out of the way, said Sir Zix seriously as multiple beams of pod came out from all over his body, and rushed towards Rizid surrounding him from all directions. Isami and Vali who saw that immediately flew away from him. Divide, 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 divide. Boost, 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 boost. Transfer. The fuse guy felt the energy inside him deplete at a rapid pace, while the attack fired by the man just got stronger and faster. Soon Rizid got impaled by all the beams that were fired at him, and his body started to corrode. Ha! Huh, you think that it will defeat me? Don't forget that I can regenerate, and now two times at that. Poa, what the hell is the Dragon Ball shit happening here? First fusion, now Bu level regeneration. Said a new voice making all of them turn their heads to see the person. Soon they noticed Tetsai coming towards them, but he just went past them and then took out a katana, and impaled it in Rizid's stomach. The weapon's name is Murasum, it will give a cure to anyone who even receives the slightest of cuts from it, and will start killing your cells. Let's see how you regenerate just in case here another sword. It's an anti-regeneration and immortal sword by one of my favorite heroes of all time, Deadpool. Oh, how sweet of you. Thanks, Jude. Said a distant voice while reading this. Tetsaya who heard some kind of voice looked around, but shrugged his shoulders once he found nothing. He then walked away from them and said, let's go he is done for. Vali and the other two looked at him without saying anything when Serzix said, no matter how grateful I am for his death that was still anticlimactic, way too anticlimactic. I mean why the hell did fight him for that long? He then looked at the two heavenly dragons who just shrugged their shoulders, and Vali said, who cares? What's done is done. She, I only get to kill him once and then flew away. I will be going as well, Serzik San, said Asami and flew towards Titsaya's direction. Meanwhile, in another part of the battlefield, Titsaya, this is getting way out of hand. Where the hell is that traitor? Said Azazel as he kept on attacking the evil dragons. Stay away from me. Said Azazel as he dodged a tail coming towards him, and then cut it using his light spear. Azazel at starting action. Said Titsaya as suddenly Zyodicus came towards him and slashed his back, making Azazel groan in pain. That F you asterisk king asshole. He really did hit me, thought Azazel as he struggled to fly for a bit. Zyodicus on the other hand tried to run away, but just as he was about to go away, a dragon appeared in front of him, and ate him in an instant, and cut Asia. Heal him, Ingvil take them away. Both the girls nodded and did what Tetsaya told them, and then looked towards the giants and said, now only the beast is left and the cannon fodder. Tetsaya who was now alone with Azazel, patted his shoulder and said, good acting. Good acting my ass, said Azazel as he shrugged Tetsaya's hand off his shoulder. Whatever, it's done now and the silver haired duo are dead, do you know that they fused? Huh, for real gross I am not into exhibitionism, not to mention Yai looks. Like that virgin devil took my words to heart and decided to lose his by sacrificing his ass. Said Azazel. You do know that the one whom you told that is still trapped at my home, right? Oh so, he willingly gave it to him damn. Such loyalty. He then looked towards Barakiel and the other fallen angels and said, I am so glad that my boys are not that loyal to me. Forget boys even the girls that were once in your harem. Were not loyal to you. Said Tetsaya. Azazel held his chest as if something pierced him. And he looked at Tetsaya and said, I should have known that it was bad to use my lie detector to play truth and dare with you freaks. Tetsaya shrugged his shoulders and said, So you find now. 
Azazel moved his arms and body a bit and then said, and mostly recovered. What about others? How's the situation? Well, I made Sezich's busy fighting with the man, so as to not let him see us shoot. Once it was done my clone went and dealt with them. I let go of my capture Krom, and let it deal with the main evil dragons, saying that if he dealt with all the dragons here I will fight him. As for the cannon fodder well the others are dealing with them, but it won't take much time, said Tetsaya. Azazel nodded and then gave a tired sigh before his glance went towards the three giant beasts fighting against each other and said, so I guess only that one is left. Tetsaya nodded his head as he silently weakened the barrier which started cracking up, making all the people in the gap look at it with shock. Soon the barrier broke making a cracking sound and the aura and the power of the beasts spread across the whole field, making every one of them tense. Azazel looked at the site for a while before he fast and said, I will go and command my subordinates I really miss the good old days when the strongest person I had to fight against was my father. It wasn't that bad. And then flew towards his subordinates. Tetsaya telepathically called his team which soon assembled near him, and all of them took some distance from the fight between the beast. So what are we gonna do now? Asked Hamari. Hit him with everything you all have got no holding back join with the other factions. Cannot let them feel that useless now, can we? Said Tetsaya half-heartedly as he informed Raya and Office about what he was planning to do. All of them nodded as Tetsaya slowly got up and tear, gathering attention from all the factions. And while not beating around the bush, the leaders of the Cow's Brigade are taken care of, and now the only thing that needs to be dealt with is that thing. So all of you can stop holding back and thinking about preserving energy, and let it all out on him. And just let me tell you that it can regenerate, so don't be a cheap sake at attacking. That would be a problem, said Tetsaya. He then gave a fake cough and took in a deep breath and yelled, so give that WHO no what IT is everything you have got fire in the hole. On his command everyone from his team, Ria's and Vali's group and the faction leaders started firing their strongest attacks. Seeing that their leaders started the subordinates started attacking as well. Yeah, that's the spirit don't hold back use violence use the fu asterisk king violence if IT is not working IT just means that you are not using enough of IT. Said Tetsaya as the attacks phased through his body. After that he came back to his team who were busy attacking. Seeing that Tetsaya smiled as he fired some magic attacks as well. Raya and Office immediately got out of the way as the attacks connected with the beast making it roar in anger. After a while once the attacks slowed down a bit because of a lot of people getting out of magic, they saw that the wounds on the beast's body healing up in no time. Seeing that their attacks were not doing much, they became shocked as the attacks started to slow down even more, as hopelessness started to appear at the faces of the people. Well it's time then. Thought Tetsaya Bars he glanced towards Ezazel who nodded his head and said, Hey Tetsaya. Can you do something about it? It's getting annoying and dangerous. Tetsaya nodded his head and said, Pull everyone back. You might not be willing to get caught in this one. Hearing him every one of them even Azazel frowned a bit thinking about what kind of attack was Tetsaya planning to do. All the faction leaders started to pull back along with their subordinates, and looked towards Tetsaya with curiosity. Seeing that the attacks have stopped the beast started to charge its attacks as well. Seeing which Tetsaya used his telekinesis to hold the beast in its place. He then took out a huge blaster, and pointed it towards Trihiksa. Sorry big guy, just sleep for eternity now, okay? Said Tetsaya as his aura started to get dense, and the space around them started to shake, making all the factions tremble. A slight greenish glow came out of Tetsaya's body, as he charged the magic in his blaster and thought, should I call out the name Kirumi? Sure, go for it. It is first time for a lot of them to see your attack, replied Kirumi who was inside of him. Tetsaya gave a slight nod, and then multiple magic circles started to appear in front of Tetsaya, which got absorbed by the blaster. He then pulled the trigger, and released all the energy, that he stored in one go, and said in a monotone, but audible enough voice material, burst. Just as he said that, Trihiksa got engulfed in a huge glowing orb of energy, which started to expand more and more, and finally stopped just in front of Tetsaya. The beast that was caught inside the blast roared in anger and pain, but was unable to move because of being held by telekinesis. It tried to split apart, but that too also failed, and in the end only relied on it regeneration, which was not quick enough to cover for the damage that was being done to him. After 10 minutes of continuous damage the ball of energy started to shrink down, showing no signs of Trihiksa's existence. Tetsaya then turned around and said, it's over I guess. I why yeah. And immediately the whole crowd started yelling in happiness. Tetsaya smiled and walked back towards his group, and was commended by a lot of people from different factions. Tetsaya just thanked them and let them go and express their gratitude to their own faction members who participated in the battle. Tetsaya waited for a bit for the dragon gods to return, and once they returned Office immediately came and stood in front of Tetsaya, who just patted her head with a smile on his face. Office just stood there with her eyes closed feeling blissful and totally ignoring everyone. Everyone looked at them for a while seeing for the first time that someone interacting with whom they supposed to be the top of the power levels like that, tough that attention from themselves suddenly disappeared when one of them said, Hey Odin, you are still a lolican just like me, right? Hearing that everyone turned their heads to see a young god of destruction, looking at the head of the Norse mythology, with with a prideful smile on his face. I I I um, no need to be humble. I can see that you are the same as before. Well, let's meet again soon. Said Shiver as he waved his hand and teleported back to Kailash, leaving behind a crowd who was looking at Odin with a deadpan look on their faces. Seeing that both Tetsaya and Azazel started laughing not knowing what to say, but still made sure to record the whole ordeal for future. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.